ATM Hotep. <laughs> that was definitely um, a little glitch there. So ATM Hotep, welcome to the Seshu Mani Metanetri YouTube channel. There was a very long delay in the um, pretty big lag, but uh, ETM Hotel, welcome in peace. And for those who don't know, um, ETM Hotel, you all always hear me um, say ETM, ETM Hotel. And um, just the other day, the brother Sarim Hotel, and check out his channel for the video, but he, uh, just the other day, he did a video giving a um, brief. A lesson on the etymology of the word hotep and so you should check it out but in that video uh, he had discussed or he had brought up you know the the fuller phrase etm e hotep and it's usually pronounced e e t m hotep so you kind of double up on that first e so e or ye t m hotep ye t m hotep and so that's the more fuller phrase um, of the greeting and so you know some quite some years ago i believe it's six years ago now uh, i did an article on on the word hotep whether it was a foul word that was the i believe that's the title of the video maybe we'll post a link to the uh article but i had did an article a while back and i was addressing the accusations that were made by um, a group of people that are um, hebrew israelites and they had made the accusation that hotep was a negative derogatory word and that people were using that negative word as a greeting. So I did the article breaking down the word hotep, the different um, meanings of hotep and how they're used and gave examples of the fuller greeting, which was etm hotep or yetim hotep, which means welcome in peace. And so Sar Motep uh, took it further and and did uh, comparative work, linguistic comparative, historical comparative work for the word hotep in other languages so that we could see the more fuller um, semantic dynamic of that word and even how we still use these concepts to this very day. You know, and I, and I always explain it that when you go and visit someone, um, when you go and visit someone, especially your parents or your grandparents, if you're fortunate enough to have your grandparents or even great-grandparents still alive, when you go over their house and you've already moved out, that is, you know, you go over their house, you are not leaving their house without a plate of food or without some type of gift, something. You're, you're, you're not going to leave empty-handed and you're not going to go there and not be offered something. And so that's actually acting out the concept of etm hotep or hotep which is an offering of um, food that brings about a state of peace um, tranquility satisfaction you know all of that good stuff all of these things are in the same semantic um, scope and so you know i always explain those things so anyway you hear me say etm hotep but people just shorten it up and say hotep you know, Hotep, you say Hotep. All right, so there you have it, ETM Hotep. Now, the opposite, e, ETM Hotep is welcome in peace. That's what you say when you greet someone um, coming in or coming in contact uh, with them, an intro greeting. An outro greeting or a parting greeting is Shem Em Hotep. Okay, so you only change the first word, Shem. So you say Shem Em Hotep, and Shem means to go, to exit, to leave, all right? And so that's those are the two greetings, ETM Hotep, Shem Em Hotep. So there you have it. So if you didn't know, now you know, all right? And knowing is half the battle. <laughs> all right, today's uh, live stream, um, I am earlier than normal. You know, it's uh, 4.30 on the East Coast, uh, my time. And so I just want to kind of uh, do a uh, live with with anyone who is uh, tuned in and talk about the ancient Egyptian language. So I want to limit our conversation to anything surrounding the ancient Egyptian language. Why? Because this month, all of this month, 
and next month, I am forming beginners class groups. Okay, so for those who may not be familiar with me or familiar with um, the language at all or anything, um, I've been teaching the ancient Egyptian language for over 10 years, and I've been doing so online for roughly seven years, uh, seven or so, give or take, uh, years. And so I've created a um, curriculum of learning, so it's not random or, you know, all over the place or willy-nilly uh, lessons or anything like that. These are, these are um, structured, specific uh, curriculum procedural lessons that walk you through the proper steps in, in learning the language. And so we start off at a beginner's level where, you're, where the main focus is the orthography of the language. And orthography deals with the writing system and its rules of punctuations and things like that in a normal sense. But we know with Seshmetu Netcher, which is the, um, what most people will call the hieroglyphs, there's no punctuation. So in that sense, orthography would be the aesthetics. And so the main focus of any beginner's uh, class or lessons when it comes to ancient Egyptian language is going to be a focus on the writing system because you need to have the writing system under your belt, how it works, what are the glyphs, how do they function, uh, and, and how are they mapped, and things like that. You're going to need to know all of that stuff before you can move forward to actually learn the nuts and bolts of the language. Okay, so... Um, so... This is what I, I will be doing for all of September, the rest of September and October, forming these new groups. Now, the way that I've designed the classes is um, it's self-paced, so you can learn at your own pace. And you can actually learn on your own if you choose to do so. I don't recommend that, but it's perfectly uh, fine. And, and if you're capable, then you're more than welcome to do that. Uh, it's just advantages when you have the benefit of a class group, other fellow students, and access to a teacher, okay? So to be able to explain things answer, and answer questions. So the way I've designed the, the course is that uh, you get the textbook, which is a beginner's introduction to Metanature. You get the textbook, and you um, are also quizzed after each chapter, there's eight, cha eight chapters dealing with um, different subject matters that walk you from chapter one to, to eight. And you go from learning um, what the glyphs are, how they function, all the way to chapter eight where you got to tie everything that you learned in previous chapters all together and you actually do transliterations and translations of um, items. And you'll be tested all along the way. And then you'll have a final exam of 100 questions and then you have to do an essay and the essay is to actually transliterate and translate an image that will be given to you and once you complete and show proficiency in all of that then you receive a certificate of completion and for those who know me they know that i'm very stingy with the certificates i i don't play mr nice guy i don't play favoritism or anything like that with me it's all about competency and proficiency in the information so if you can show that then you deserve a certificate of completion uh, from me all right and so that's pretty much how it's designed but you can go at your own pace like I said and um, but the way that it's been going uh, so far is once a week I'll have live interactive sessions live two-hour interactive sessions for any student that is currently within the study currently enrolled so any enrolled student can attend the two-hour live sessions that I have weekly now there's been um, times in the past where I would um, depending on you know the students the availability and things we would double up where we'll have um, live sessions twice a week so the way that it works out as far as timing is that if you attend a two-hour live session each week uh, it takes 12 sessions to to actually walk through the entire beginner's textbook 12 two-hour sessions 
So that's a total of 24 hours, but broken up to two hour sessions each once a week. That's 12 weeks. All right. Now, when there was a time where we doubled up, then six weeks. So at the most, this beginner's class will last you 12 weeks at the most. All right. So in 12 weeks at the most, you will be able to transliterate and translate basic inscriptions. All right. That's, of course, if you pass all the quizzes and you, you know, you do a good job at understanding the material. And me as a teacher, I make sure that you understand. All right. I will I will explain things upwards, downwards, left, right, up, down, diagonal, longitude, latitude, in, out, y axis, x axis, z axis, <laughs> fifth dimension, third dimension. I will explain it until until it's hammered into your head. OK. Um, because, you know, I want to see everybody win. Yeah, all right and that, that's that's my aim that's my goal and i want people who are interested to really get uh this information because um usually people who are interested in the ancient egyptian language are also interested in the culture for whatever reason but they're interested in the culture and you can only really be intimate with any culture not just ancient egyptian but any culture um the only way you can become intimate with it would be through its language okay language is the dna of culture it records the psychology of the people of said culture and like i said it goes for any culture even if you were a a glorified newly um uh baptized christian and that's what you are all about then your job is to really engage the christian culture through the language of christianity all of the text and things like that is available in Greek or Latin or whatever the case is. Same thing with being a Hebrew Israelite. Every single Hebrew Israelite, if, if they take that serious, they should learn Hebrew. Every Muslim, every Muslim, if they want to be great Muslims, then they should learn Arabic. Why? Because those belief systems are permeated within those languages and it's best to learn those languages to fully engage in those systems so this is no different when it comes to ancient egypt all right so if you want to learn about it then you have to do it by way of language so i'm all for that and that's what i advocate i push for that i want to see people win so it feels good when I, when people are interested and they sign up for the class now in addition to that the classes, I made the classes where there's no excuse. The classes are affordable because it's not a, with me. It's not about, um, you know, making a lifestyle um, out of this. I don't, you know, I don't think that you can unless you unless you go a whole different route with it and, and dive into the whole what, what people call pseudo information. Pseudoism pays. I'm going to tell you all and I know you all know this. Pseudoism pays. Pseudoism is you know that's where the money is if you if you create a cult you you stay say some pseudo stuff you start talking about outer space you talk about aliens you talk about um the fifth dimension the etheric wet realm and and crystals and 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 things like that um no offense to people who study and do things correctly but just in general is what i'm speaking um, there's a lot of money in that, and I've seen it. I've, 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 I've seen it over the years, you know, directly. And so, um, that's not my forte. That's not my my thing at all, whatsoever. So for me, it's about making it available and accessible to everybody who's interested. So the classes are only one hundred dollars, and and over the years I've I've done my you know I've done comparisons I've seen classes even from college, uh, course, in language, to just online courses by by other people in different countries and different areas and so on and so forth, and they can get very very expensive. For example, there was one course I'm not sure if it's still 
available, but there was one course I saw that cost $3,200. The person is charging $3,200 for a course. Um, now, what's included in their, what was included in their course was, uh, I think, yoga lessons. You get a free uh, leopard skin, leopard print leotard, uh, unisex leotard. So if you're male or female, you you know you 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 <laughs> you wearing the um, the the onesie uh, leotard, um, and I believe it's like a retreat. So you know they so so some people will throw extra things in there to justify the cost of charging people. Um, those kinds of funds, those kinds of money, those those th that that amount of money, but um, with me, like I said, uh, it's not about that. So, hundred dollars for the course, twenty nine or thirty dollars. I might say thirty dollars for the textbook. So together, it's one hundred thirty dollars. If you already had a textbook, it's only a hundred dollars. Twelve weeks. All right. So, where do you sign up? You sign up on Sabre University. Uh, dot com. And I'm sure Emmy Cat will be posting the link inside of the chat. So if you're listening now, I appreciate you tuning in. But I'm just trying to give a little intro about the beginners class. But I want to spend some time today while I'm live. I have the time and it's early. And make sure you share this video with anybody you think is interested right now. If they have the time, tell them to come check out. Tell them to come on YouTube right now. And I want to have... Um, any discussions about the language so I'm looking at the chat now about to get go through my roll call shout outs and anybody that has any questions about the language uh, feel free uh, to ask anything that you've heard anything that you've been studying on your own or anything that you may feel is intimidating because this language uh, from my experience it tends to intimidate some people you know because they think it's hard and it's 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 different but it's not hard i wouldn't i wouldn't say it's hard i would i would say that it takes a, uh, some discipline and some focus to learn it but it's not hard it's not difficult okay and it's and it is different from english you know the way the way the the language is mapped to the writing system and how the writing system operates it is different so i will not lie to you or uh, mislead you on that it is different but it's not hard so no one needs to be intimidated um, by this at all and if I could learn it anybody could learn it and 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 like I said I've been teaching for over 10 years and I've been teaching people in other countries um, in person online and everything and um, and so I've seen a full spectrum you know I've seen you know I rub elbows with professors who teach it teach it in college to their students to other students, autodidacts, you name it. I rubbed elbows with, with a wide range of um, people involved in the language. So I had a taste of, of, you know, each kind of demographic to see what's good and, and, and how things are done. Uh, and so, you know, I, I make my judgments on that. So let me give some shout outs. And again, make sure you spread the word and also find something on the ch on on this live stream to thumb up the video. All right. So I think we had 15 viewers. It's fluctuating. Um, make sure you thumb up the video. All right. So let me see. Let me go back up here. OK, I see we got brother MC Kevin Chill heard in the building. Hotep. Of course, co-host Emmy Cat Aku Kenshaya Kenyi. Donnie C, Hotep, uh, everything is everything, and Philitantis, that's who I see so far. So if you so if you tuned in, don't hide in the cut. Make sure you typed up, uh, give give a greeting. I give you a shout out. Just want to make sure who's in the building, who's not in the building. And as a matter of fact, um, I'm gonna post the link up because if you have a question and it may be a little lengthy, you may want to pop up. And come on and uh, ask your question verbally. And you are more than welcome to. So there is the link. It is now posted in the chat. And it is also pinned to the top. It's pinned to the top. All right. So I want to just open it up. Now, let me just explain. So the book that you see on the screen. Let me make this big. 
got to make this big. So the book that you see on the screen is um, a new upcoming book that I'm working on. And um, it's long, 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 long overdue. And I really, really, you know, kind of kick myself by not um, having it published already. You know, I, I, I really wish I had already um, published the book because a lot of things that I'm hearing online and from other people and things, this book would have really, really kind of um, eliminated the need for a lot of the back and forth and, and misinformation people are spreading online, even to this very day, especially, you know, when it comes to the ancient Egyptian language. All right. So because you have people who don't study the language, they, they learn glyphs, they, they get familiar with dictionaries and things like that, and they, and they will utilize it. And uh, on the surface, they'll do what they do, but they, but they don't dive in to get to the nuts and bolts of the language to really, really um, expound and really, really uh, be proficient in it. And so a lot of times I find myself correcting people, correcting things. People ask me questions and I always ask, I say, well, where you get that from? And they'll say, well, I've seen it online. I say, well, send me a link. You know, I see the link or see some article, see a blog post, see some kind of Facebook post or whatever the case is. And a lot of times it'll be Facebook posts, you know, that people will say. And, I'm, and, and you know, people will ask me, well, is this right? Can you translate this? Or does this really mean that? And and I don't mind doing it because I do it, but I'd rather equip people with the tools so they could do this stuff themselves. You know, I'm 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 not an advocate for dependency. I don't want people like if I know how to do something and, and, and this is something that we all should should uh, be be mindful of. We all have our, have our strengths and weaknesses. And so. If if I'm strong in an area, I don't mind people leaning on leaning on me, but at the same time, I would like to strengthen strengthen that same area in you, so that you don't ha you don't have to depend on leaning on me, you know, because um, there's so much weight that a person could take, <laughs> you know, and vice versa. If I'm weak in some area, I I want to be able to lean on somebody who's strong in that area, but I but. The way I am, I, I wouldn't want to lean on them all the time. So I'm like, all right, I got to lean on them out of, ne out of necessity. But eventually, I'm going to have to step it up so I don't have to keep leaning. You know, and so that's my thing is to really, really educate and teach people, give them resources and the wherewithal so they can do this stuff themselves. You know, and it, it's not even about people uh, having a degree because that's another excuse. People like, ah. Oh, you know, or they think that that's what's meant, that you have to have a degree in linguistics or a degree in um, Egyptology or whatever the case is and things like that. No, you just have to be competent and proficient. And you can do that pursuing another degree in, in a totally different area. You know, you don't have to, you know, become an Egyptologist to be proficient in the ancient Egyptian language, although they go hand in hand. But you could uh, be a cosmetologist, do hair, and and be proficient and competent in the ancient Egyptian language. So, you know, that doesn't matter. Like I said, it's not hard. It's different. But anyway, this book that you see on the screen is the upcoming book. And it's entitled Ancient Egyptian Orthography and Grammar. So it covers the 360 of the language. Which it's going to be the first edition of its kind of, um, of the publication. And it's a synchronic descriptive grammar of the older speech of Kemet. Okay. And it, it will include both a focus on Seshmet or which is the hieroglyphic writing system, and Rani Kemet, which is the language, which is going to deal with its morphology and syntax, a.k.a. grammar. So orthography is the writing system. Grammar is the morpho syntax or morphology and syntax of the language. So you'll be able to. So that book is going to have it all. Now, my, my previous book was a textbook on a beginner's level um, that I did to synchronize my classes. 
And so, you know, a lot of some people have asked me in the past, you know, what inspired me to do the book? Well, it was easy because I was teaching the language face to face in in um, class groups face to face. But I didn't have um, one single, you know, one consolidated piece of material. So I had to Xerox stuff, pass things out, go to this resource, go to that resource, go here, go here, go here, go here. And it was um, laborious to do that. It didn't make sense. So I took time out to consolidate information, put it in one single textbook in a procedural way with a curriculum, and then voila, beginners classes on steroids. And that's, that's what it's about. So anyway. So click the link if you have a question. So I'm, I'm paying attention to the chat. And I gave some shout outs. I see Donnie C is in the building. And so I'm expecting somebody to have some questions. There's no way that people, are, that anybody's watching. And there is, there's no questions about the Egyptian language. As much as people run their mouth about ancient Egypt and some language and linguistic stuff, there's no way that um, that nobody has uh, any questions. So I'm... Um, I'm going down the list, and I'm not going to miss anybody. I'm not going to skip a beat this time. Well, I'm going to try not to. So let's see. I see everybody's greeting each other, so that's good. You know, we should all be one big happy family. You know what I mean? One big happy family. And that's, and that's what it's about. We all need to get along. Too much fighting in the zombie community. And y'all know that's my that's my new thing now. You know, uh, I think... I think I'm going to retire my uh, label of circus community and I'm going to change it to zombie community. All right. And, you know, if, if you if you need me to explain why or anything like that, hey, ask me. Ask me if you wish. OK, so the first question I see, I'm going down a list. Shout out to everybody is American Dream. Oh, it's not a question. He said you got some splaining to do. All right, American Dream. Let's have it. I'm gonna call you AD. All right, AD. Uh, what what do I have to explain? Break it down. Break it down. Break it down. All right, I'm gonna keep on going. Everything is everything. I'm gonna be peeking at your answers. Just warning you. <laughs> oh oh, on the in the in the classes. All right, cool. Make sure you enroll. Listen, people have enrolled already. Like I said, all of September. Now here's the thing. Like I said, you could learn at your own pace. And you could jump into the live sessions uh, that I have once a week at any given point because I, I'll answer whatever questions you have. You, you could be on Chapter 5 and then somebody else could be on Chapter 2 and you have a question out of Chapter 5, that's, that's fine, okay? The class, the live sessions are that fluid, okay? So, so again, remember what I'm saying. I make sure there's no excuses. I don't want to hear no excuses about this stuff. I don't allow any excuses. That's just some weak stuff. Don't get, don't come with any excuses. Oh, well, you know, I'm on chapter five and you were dealing with somebody on chapter two. So, you know, I didn't ask my question or whatever. Nope. Or vice versa. I'm on chapter two and you were, you were dealing with somebody that was, had a question about chapter five or whatever. Nope. I don't want, I don't care. Ask your question and we go over it because, because the thing is anybody who's on the chapter ahead of you, um, and you ask your question from a previous chapter, it'll become a review for them. And then if you're listening in on a, on a question of a, of, a, of a future chapter that you haven't come to yet, it'll be a reminder when you get there. So it's all good. It's all good in the hood, as they say. No excuse. All right. Failure is not an option. Kevin, uh, is it discounted for, the third t <laughs> for a third time in class? Yeah, Kevin, uh, inbox me. And so I'm glad you asked that. So listen, anybody who has taken a class before and you and you want to take it again out of a review, you know, you could have taken it and passed. You could you could already have your certificate because I, I get that. Um, because what happens is this language is not spoken. There's no speech community speaking the language. And then we go about our day. We go about our lives. You know, COVID happened and, and, and everything like that. So you may need a refresher. All right. And like I said, for me, it's not about uh, breaking the bank on something like this. All right. Uh, so for me, it's about it's about 
giving people those resources to be able to move forward when it comes to ancient Egyptian uh, issues, culture, and, and, and otherwise. All right. So, yeah. So, Kevin, um, definitely hit me up. Uh, inbox me, Kevin. Oh, shout out to Sari Motep is in the building. Will we be required to draw the higher uh, glyphs for class? <laughs> now, I'm glad you asked that, Asar. Uh, now, Emiket is uh, it, it, basically Emiket is the personification of, uh, of Shashat, <laughs> you know. But uh, Emiket ha Emiket has taken that, um, taken the lead on that, and so she has a simplified um, penmanship book and course. So what it is, it's a it's a sibling course to the beginner's course. All right. So the beginner's course, the focus is on the orthography, which is the aesthetics, how the glyphs function and some very, very basic grammar. And it gets you up to speed to be able to transliterate and translate basic inscriptions. And then Emikets as a as a uh, parallel um, course is she teaches how to actually write and draw the glyphs starting with the what's called the monoliterals all right which is um book one and, and there's a book she has a book for it. it's all laid out and i'm sure amy cat's gonna post it in the in the link in the chat if she hadn't already done so and if she hadn't shame on her uh because i just spent the last three three minutes plugging 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 her book but anyway so yeah so sorry um the answer is yes, but it's but it's a uh, compliment. It's a not complimentary, but a um, what do you call it? We call it supplementary uh, class that you could take at the same time. All right. Now, but because of that question, though, what I get asked a lot as well, uh, pretty much recently, is what about hieratic? You know, do you do you you know do you deal with hieratic and stuff like that? So that that's going to be in the future. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna start incorporating incorporating that, and Emicat's gonna be spearheading that. So Emicat has a lot a lot a lot in store for everybody, uh, as far as that goes. Okay, so just wanna make sure everybody is aware of that. And then also, I'm gonna start pushing a basic level of historical comparative linguistics, and hopefully. I'm gonna put a SAR on the spot right now. Y'all heard it. Y'all heard it from me right here, right now. What's today? September 12th, 2022. It's 5 06 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. This is Brother Wujao Minib Erdi Ma'at speaking to you live. And a SAR Imhotep should still be in the chat. But no, I'm gonna start advocating and pushing um, a basic level of historical comparative linguistics. Because I already have it in in my um, pyramidal curriculum as, you know, part of the stepping ladder, you know, in this whole system, this uh, pedagogical, andragogical system. But we haven't uh, actually implemented it. You know, I haven't implemented that. So, you know, I'm going to be getting with Asar. Hopefully, uh, if he has time to permit, and we can work out something where, where, um, a beginner's a beginner's level of historical comparative linguistics can be uh, set up because I know Osar had some crash courses um, done before and everything like that. So hey, let's get it on. Let's get it. Let's get it going. Let's continue with that. Uh, let's see. Keep going. Uh, peace to Cafre Ahmos. Yes, indeed. Cafre. What else we got going on? We, uh, Philitis. All right. So I'm going down the list, y'all. Listen, I'm not going to sit here and believe nobody has questions about the language. I refuse to believe that. So I'm going to keep going down the list. So, if I, um, and I, Emmy Cat, if, if I miss anything, uh, definitely let me know. So I says, no habla inglés. <laughs> he said, he'll speak English. Okay. SSU, last night on SARS Live, you said that Tep Hesop would be top method. Where could I see an example of top method, uh, the remedies use, or even evidence of using a failed method? Okay, now there's a video that we've done, and Emmy Cat is fast on the trigger, so she's going to give you the link to the video that we've done, and we talked about Tep Hesip. We talked about the correct method, and we went into what's uh, it's the Ahmos Papyrus, but it's 
famously called the Rhine Rhine's Mathematical Papyrus, where you will see the word Tephesa being used when it comes to um, methodology on obtaining information. All right, discernment. Okay, dissecting information, discerning information, judging information to know when you know. All right, so we went over that. Now, in terms of um, evidence of using a uh, failed uh, method, in that video, I go over the details of the steps that are used. And it's not so much of a failed uh, method that's highlighted because obviously nobody's going to highlight a failure and brag about a failure. What's highlighted is the um, method to come to the correct uh, knowledge, to the reality. And so there are steps, and it's very, very similar to, the, to our modern scientific method and, and logic, uh, methods of logic um, in math. All right. And so uh, now I'm around back. So if I lighten to this, I'm around back because because we, we went over this before in a video and I don't want to just, you know, seem like I'm blowing you off and just say, hey, just watch the video. But I want to um, just make sure I keep up with any questions. So if, so if there's no more questions, then, hey, I, I, I can round back and we can we can deal with it. And as a matter of fact, let me see if I can while I'm talking. I'm going to see if I can pull something up from our presentation on it. That way I have I have some slides ready and I have I have everything loaded, ready to pull the trigger. All right, so give me give me a moment um on that. Let me see, let me see. So yeah, give me a second to find something because I don't see anything else in the chat. Or a discussion on the difference uh da 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 Thank you. Yeah. So listen, the panel link is in there. Y'all probably scrambling, thinking of some questions, and I don't mind that, but I'm going to tell you, usually when that happens, when people think of questions last minute, boy, questions will go all over the place. All over because you, you're trying to scramble and trying to think of something. Like, all right, what what I want to ask? And then you reach. You mess around, start asking me, you know, what is the square root of nothing? <laughs> how come water is wet people start asking questions like that what makes water wet what are the properties of wetness why does wet start with a w <laughs> people start asking stuff like that um okay one second let me just see uh i am trying to find the slides on on that and it's very interesting. You know, I did a whole Facebook post on that. If I like to, uh, are you on Facebook? Let me know. Let me know if you're on Facebook. What's your What's your Facebook name? If you are, because I can I can actually tag you in a in a post I did some years back on that same subject. All right, so make sure make sure you post your uh, Facebook name if you're on Facebook. Okay, so I am going to find something because I don't see any other questions at least just yet again so shout out to everybody so listen all this month next month I'm, I'm trying to get these these uh, groups going um, and it's, it's really ongoing it's, it's really ongoing it's just that you know right now we're in the back to school spirit all the children are going back to school here it is Ryan mathematical oh Ryan's mathematical problem number 26 we did that um hmm hmm nope 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 yeah we're gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna try to dig this up for you dig this up for you because i had a very good whole thing so i have to find that for you uh for lightness And I see that somebody came popped in. Cat, so peace. Hi, peace. What y'all here? How are you? All right, I'm doing good. How you doing? I'm, I'm good. I just want to apologize to you. 
Oh, for Thursday. what? Because I was acting a fool. I think the last time I came on your um, on your chat, and I just went out. Oh, I re- okay. I re- that's that's a shame that now I remember you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, but okay, I was, yeah. I, I was I a little bit tipsy. I think your audience recognized that, and I I came on because maybe I ha- I didn't have too much to do, and um, that's what happened. So I just want to say I respect you so much you you talk a lot of amazing facts everybody respects the devils you see what i'm saying this is oh who's that i heard somebody in the background too but yeah i i I remember yeah and i I, well i appreciate it and you know you're more than welcome um to come on anytime i I remember our exchange last time (laughs) last time it wasn't bad though it wasn't bad so you know i mean i mean it it wasn't bad, you know, but I, I appreciate it. Um, I do remember talking though, and I and I in my mind I did say, hey, you know, you may have I don't know what your drink of choice was, but whatever it was, I was saying that it must be something really nice. <laughs> it must have been something real nice because um you know, you came on. Uh Kevin Kevy Kev. I don't know if they, they call you Kevy Kev. <laughs> you know, MC Chill, MC Chill is definitely in the building. What's yeah, going I, on? I can't say it. I can't say it. Well, I guess they have called me Kevy Kev, not often. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> you know that's the that's the tempting thing when you see somebody named Kevin. You know, especially somebody named Kevin, and and they be so cool. You gonna be like Kevy Kev? What's up, Kev? You know. <laughs> what's what's going what's going on, bro? Uh, nothing much, man. It's good to see you. See, you got, man, you got your, you got, you, you definitely booked up behind you. You definitely got the books all behind you. Let me, let me put you, let me, let me put you on the, um, Jumbotron. I got to put you on the Jumbotron right there. There you go. Got all those books. So they know those uh, real books. You. That's not the, that's not the green screen. Yes. Yeah, all. you know, you know, I was going to say, I said, man, you probably got that all green screened up and everything. <laughs> grab one, grab one to prove it to people. Grab hey, one. hey, okay. Hold on. I'll say we, we got, okay, hold on. Let me see. So here, how about this one? <laughs> all right. So it's real y'all. It's, it's real. It's not, it's not Photoshop. It's not, <laughs> it's not green screen. Cause you know, that's what people be doing. <laughs> yeah. They, they definitely had a green screen. But no, these these real joints. But yo, nah. I just I just wanted to tell everybody I, I've taken the class before, and I'm a, I'm a, I'm go, my intent is to take it again. And this super super cool class, Ujjal, you're an excellent excellent teacher, very patient, uh, super patient. Uh, so yeah, in, anybody, uh, and I, I'm gonna try my best to, uh, cause man, I want my I want my certificate. Yeah, yeah. Well, hey, you you gonna you gonna get it. I'm gonna make sure <laughs> that you that you get it. I'm gonna make sure, make sure. Like I said, people know I am stingy. Like I, you know, I, I you gotta fight tooth and nail to 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 get a certificate out of me, because my thing is, cause you know, I I want I I strive for excellence and I want to see excellence in everybody else. And I know sometimes you know uh, people don't like to get pushed. You know, but that's the nature of, of this. It's like sports, because I'm sure, I'm sure, like somebody like Serena Williams and Venus Williams, they got, I'm sure they got pissed off at their coaches, their parents, and everything like that. But at the end of the day, they have to the respect because they become champions. They become uh, the best at what they do, and so that's that's how I see things. Is push push people, make sure that everything checks out. So. That's it, man. So, but I'm, I'm gonna make sure you, you, you straight, cause you did, you there, you there, cause it's just, I think, I think with you, it's, it was, it was an issue of time, right? It was time, and and we do have a small problem this time, because I'm, and I don't know when the class starts, uh-huh. but I, I am going to be in Egypt. Uh, oh, I, I leave October fifth, and I'll be there for eleven days. Okay, okay. Well, nah, no worries because, like I said, you know, the way I set it up, you could jump in when, 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 when you can. Like, get in where you fit in, jump in when you can. It's just that um, now, when you do that, obviously you have to have some the discipline to to uh, read on your own, and then whatever questions you have, make sure you write them down. But I definitely make sure you, you're straight. And this goes for anybody, you know. So just jump in. Uh, because it's not really a starting point. I'm I'm only trying to group people 
to to have a starting block of of a series of you know a series of people starting at the same time so people could feel like they're on the same level you know that type of thing so that's that's pretty much it but yeah okay. we we all we all we're all a family, so it's, it's all good. And has anything changed in the book? Is 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 the books you you still nothing? I know at first it was a couple of a term terminologies that got changed. I don't know from the first book, from the very oh, yeah. first time. Yeah, I had a uh, second edition, but no. Well, the book I'm working on now that you see on the screen. Um, matter of fact, I had you on jumbotron. Me. So the book that you see right there now, that book is gonna is different. But that, but that, I haven't published that yet. That's going to contain everything. That's going to be the beginner's level and the advanced level all in one because it's dealing with the writing system, the grammar is breaking down everything, all the, you know, um, everything about the grammar from okay. all the different parts of speech or word classes to the verbal system to the nonverbal system, all the different types of sentences, different types of phrases, everything. Okay, you but know? that one's not out yet. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But... Okay. People who take the class, people who take the class, they get, they get, uh, they get, you know, first dibs and sneak peeks and stuff. I, I share, you know, I share information out of there, you know, and stuff like that. So you can ask around. I've been sharing, sharing information and things, and it helps out. You know, it's 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 proven to help out a lot, especially you know. So last night, I know you were tuned in last night when I was talking about the uh, uh, portmanteau morph and things like that. So all that stuff is in is in the book. Okay. All right. Well, I'm, yeah. I'm definitely at that one. Looks slick. I'm trying to get the get the new one too. Cause my old book looked like it had been jumped into a gang. But uh, <laughs> so, all right. So, all right. But hey, and I'm gonna have some questions for you. I'm a, I'm also shoot you my itinerary. Uh, okay. And I have some questions for a couple of places that um. Now make I'm sure you. I I know I know you got a good camera, but man, make sure you got good batteries, good camera, enough uh little jump drives and stuff take with you take plenty of pictures man plenty of pictures all the pictures you can when you take go. a zillion all right and i'm gonna go but last question yeah did we did we find out who stole the shoes <laughs> ah, man you funny for that <laughs> i don't even know that's like the running that's like the big mystery like what what, what are we on season nine of who stole the shoes <laughs> who stole the shoes was they what was that on the? Why was that on the set shoe? Was they Champollion shoes? Would anyway? Man, okay, I don't know. King Tut I don't, shoes. Listen, what, what, how did that get into the game? It evidently it was it was a, it was a queen. She might have been Queen Nefertari because because from what I'm hearing, it was a female shoes. You know, <laughs> it, 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 you know that was stolen by. I don't I don't know. I don't know. It just came up. It surprised me. I got I got blindsided with that one. But but I tried to moderate. Uh, as best I could. I think it was. I think it went well. I knew it was going to go left though the, for a minute. I, I I knew that. But anyhow, <laughs> all right, bro. I appreciate you. Uh, and right. I'll and I'll I'll shoot you some information. And I still have to talk to you uh, about the um, the logo. Oh yeah 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 yeah. You got to finish that out. Okay. Yeah 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 yeah. Yeah. Hit me up, man. Hit me up. Hit me up. And I okay. appreciate 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 all you do too, man. Yeah, right, everybody check it. out uh, MC Chill. What's your um, what's your outlet? What, what's your what's your um? Uh, I'm on I'm on YouTube. I'm really gonna start cranking every. I've been down for a minute. I just got a new computer. This is my first time going going on with this new computer. So oh okay. I'm, I'm assuming it looks. Cool. Wait 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 hold, wait 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 wait. It smells it it smells like apple. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's it smells like an apple. Is that apple? See, there, yeah, see, yeah, welcome, yeah, yeah. welcome. Listen, welcome to the 21st century. Finally, man, you did. You made the right move, man. Welcome, <laughs> welcome, welcome, man. Welcome to the Apple family. So yeah, I got the I got the new <laughs> Mac MacBook Air. So I'm testing it out and. All right, all all right. you like it? Uh, so far, like this is my first time being being on uh, online with it. So on it, okay, all right. Yeah. So all okay. Right. All right, okay. but yeah, but yeah, but yeah, you can find me on YouTube. I'll be cranking Chill Talk back up on Facebook and YouTube, and uh, okay. and some other things that I have going on. All right, all right, appreciate it. All right, I'll okay. Then. All, right to, all right, so we got um, Car on the panel. Uh, uh, greetings. You got the mic. I will. Uh, was y'all here? Oh, okay. Hey, how you doing? You back. Hi, it's me. 
Let's go. Okay. You're back. How you doing? All right. What's going on? Okay, okay. No, no, no. I think I think you you were here and you got you got disconnected or something before. No, I was I was I was trying to talk about Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, well, the thing is, I want to um yeah, if you had any questions about the um the language or anything like that because that's you know that's that's what the focus is uh me coming live early people complain i go live late at night and and you know they're getting ready yeah. for bed so now i think that, yeah <laughs> you do like i catch you usually when you know early that's right because you're you're in the uk right <clears throat> yeah mm -hmm. okay so what time it's like seven hours ahead so it's about what 12 it's, it's like, midnight it's like, it's, it's like 10 almost like 10 oh okay about 10 30 over there okay okay so, well yeah so how's everything um in the uk with um now i don't want to have this whole conversation about it but i know i know that like the sentiments in the uk with the queen and mm -hmm. and and the transfer of power with uh king charles the third and stuff like that so is that i know that's like that's everywhere yeah. right now isn't it yeah we're just kind of kind of absorbing it today i think we we're just kind of absorbing the fact um, oh okay 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 i know i know everybody i, I bet yeah. it's like flooding all the news outlets over there right i don't know i feel like in the u.s it's probably being a, a bit more of a, a big <laughs> no, sorry i i'm surprised that it's been actually uh something of interest to a lot of people but mm. um oh, okay. i think the royal family, the British royal family, actually does hold some kind of um, like a memento or something when it mm. comes to a lot of people, whether they're in America or Canada or wherever they are in the world. It's it's just something. Even though we have many royal families in Europe and in yeah, Africa, yeah. but for some reason the British royal family has. Uh, resonates and that that's nice it's actually nice like i'm i think of it like in a nice way that people actually can look on the royal family i think this is probably the last i'll say this is probably the end of the, the end <laughs> so okay. i don't you know i appreciate that now, people will, you know appreciate that she reigned for so many plus years and she did she did a good job I can't, I can't lie, you know, and she, she did what well. she, you know, other than that, um, you know, I have, I have many things to say <laughs> about the royal family, but I don't want to be disrespectful because it's probably too early to oh, okay. uh, say what I really want to say about it. Well, I bet, I bet it's a lot because I've seen it. I've seen it online. I've seen people yeah, say what they I said know, on Twitter. I and, and, I've um, seen it too. And I've and seen people so, yeah. really express yeah, their, their feelings when it comes to the Queen. Yeah. Or they say the Queen because actually, I think when people say the Queen, I think people think that she's like the Queen of the world. <laughs> I feel like people really feel like that. Like she's like the Queen of the globe everyone should like have some kind of nope. opinion to her i think a lot of people feel like that it's like hang on why are you um mourning for her it's like well she doesn't mean anything to me why would i even right. do that and why would i care about king charles the third and what's going on and la di da why would i yes. even care the fact that if she hadn't or edward the third or whatever his name was didn't abdicate I would even have you as a queen. You know, there's a lot oh, of yeah. things. See now you yeah. now, now you get into the now into the history. I'm getting, yeah, I was get into the about history. It. But hey, I, I wanna um I wanna kind of shift it because remember, remember last time you were here, I was supposed to send you some information, but I don't even I remember know, like, listen, what that was. I actually would love, and I did get your email, but I think I was scared because I I think I was a bit drunk <laughs> when I got here and I was just like. What the hell did I say to him? I think I was out of my mind. Oh. But <laughs> actually, 
when you emailed me, I was like, hang on. So you want me to talk about Sudanese people as being, um, I guess, related to the Egyptians, right? No, yeah. Well, I, I wanted like, your. Well, I, I can I can talk about that right now. Like, well, I would love to talk about it more so to present it to your people because I think a lot of your audience was like, "Oh God, who is this drunk, stupid hoe?" Because... Okay, so let's do this. All right, so since yeah. since you're here, since you're here, mm -hmm. let's. Well, if you still have my email, um, mm -hmm. reply reply to it. Let's set it up. Let's, I let's did, set up where... but I was like, I felt like you were just gonna perceive me as a joke that's why i didn't reply to you because i was like i came with okay. your channel very you know disrespectful right but see but but you're here now and and you're not and you're not well i don't I, it don't sound like you you uh, no, uh had, had anything. okay <laughs> so 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 now everything is, is straight so and i think that because of I your would heritage know. Do you know what was when i was listening to your other couple of streams that you did about Sudan and Egypt. Like, I think you probably addressed a, a lot of what I was probably going to touch on. Because for me, right? And uh -huh. this is very, this is something that I I found as a Sudanese woman, okay? I was born in Khartoum. I'm, I'm a Sudanese woman, right? Mm -hmm. um, when it comes to talking about Kemet, Misery, Egypt, whatever you want to call it. And the only problem I, I had with you or anyone else that talks about Kemet is that I feel like um, you're not of my people, you're not of my ilk, and I feel like those people shouldn't be talking about Kemet, right? Mm-hmm. And now you said to, to me that you are of West African or Central African descent and stuff like that. And that's fine. And I don't have any problem, okay, with people that want to explore Kemetic religions. But when I hear people, like, example, I think that's why I got triggered, I think, on the last stream that you did, that I felt like you were trying to tell me as a as a Sunnese cartoon born woman that this language was according to you this is how we want to perceive it this is how we perceive this and that and I I would really love on these kind of channels if you could actually talk to real Africans mm -hmm. like me and have this conversation because it almost sounds it's, it sounds very disingenuous. You just want to be you just want to be right, mm -hmm. um, in accordance with like the other people. You're like you, and I I know the the likes of Reggies and the Sonnets and the Judas and I, I I know all these characters. But hold up! But wait 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 wait. See that? And I said this last time. If you remember, I was saying, do not put me in that same uh bucket <laughs> do not put me in that bucket because one i do talk to um africans on the continent i actually have people in my in my class from um uganda tanzania kenya um tanzania, not tanzania, tanzania. Whatever but you know yes. what that's because but no, I no thought, but i'm saying but i'm saying but they but, but they, saying to you when what irritated me about uh -huh. you for example, even though I know that you're very knowledgeable, I'm asking mm -hmm. you, when are you going to involve Africans that may be a part of that, that whole, you know? No, that's what, that's what I'm trying to tell like, you. I, I, that's that's I what know. I'm telling you right I feel now. like I, a lot I, of African-Americans want to exclude us. They want to portray <laughs> this ideal, you know? But, but when, saying, did you hear? Did you just hear like, me though? I I I, I no, do. I, I hear I have... you, but I'm saying not you. I'm I'm not talking about you specifically. I'm saying. Oh, okay, okay. I've had these conversations, and that's why I was, I was a bit like, uh Yeah, but see, that's the thing. Don't like, don't uh, include because I've yeah, had but so don't include many... me. Don't don't include don't include me. Don't include this channel in the in that in that 
container that you know don't don't I'm that's what i'm saying when i came on i asked you about the whole the language thing yeah and you were you were like cat what the fuck are you talking about and everyone was like clowning me in the chat they were like they really went in on oh she drunk is she this and that because i simply asked a question about the origins of where you thought the you know kemetic language or the metanatural mm -hmm. like i i didn't get that because i'm asking you okay so and i've i've listened well, you at, you at, are you asking me now or you or you mean you no, asked no, me no, before? i'm saying no not now we can have this conversation later i'm just i was just asking you i was like oh Jahu, where did you get that idea from that um that the Kemetic language was called XYZ. I think that's oh, how Oh yeah, we... Ra Rodney Kemet, yeah. Yeah. Rodney Kemet, yeah. Right? So right. I was like, hang on, um, what are you talking about? Like, it just sounded a bit weird to me that when people who are not part of the culture, i.e. me, I, if I say to you, oh, it, okay, it depends. So if I say to you right now, I'm a Sudanese woman, I was born in Khartoum. I'm Nubian. I classify myself as Mahas. Okay? That's my tribe, right? Mm -hmm. Now, for you, what would you say to me as an African American? Do you think you have the right to tell me anything? Number one. But if you did, could you just give me a little breakdown of what you perceive me to be? Do you know what I mean? I don't know. I, well, I don't okay. Know so let me, let me say this. I feel, I feel kind of stupid even asking you that, but I would, I actually but, want to know what you, what you think. Okay. Yeah. But here's, here's, okay. Here's the thing. Like, mm -hmm. and I, and I said this, I think I said this last time when you asked me that. <laughs> you asked me something. You asked me something similar. I must and have I was, drunk every day because I'm not drunk. But yeah, go on. Yeah. So I what I what I told you then, and I'll and I'll repeat now is mm. that um, there's a sense. So like I don't have to be um, from a European community to study the history of of the of the throne of of England or Sweden or Norway and stuff like that. I don't have to be Norwegian to study and understand um, you know, whatever it is that that okay, goes on. Okay, you're going like that, right? all around. Okay. Do you Wait, wait, no, to... no, 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 wait, wait, wait. No, 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 no listen, listen, listen what I'm what saying. you're trying to do, you're trying to convolute the the discussion. No, 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 no. You you, you, you asked ask me as an African American about no I asked you about African Americans. So you're going to Europeans and Asians. Because and... I'm making I'm making a point. So just just allow me to make my point. I'm gonna be very, very fast. So I okay. go to Europe because you're in Europe right now. You're not in Sudan, okay? Right now. You're in yeah. Europe and you ha and you have a, an English accent right now. Mm -hmm. You sound English to me. And 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 if I didn't see you, I have to take your word for it that you're from Car uh, Khartoum. I don't know that to be true, and I don't uh, have well, any. Who, I already know you know what I look like, and you've no, seen me. No, yes, I actually you don't. Yes, yes, you have. But I actually, the fact I actually is, have I it. I have, you, I've never seen you, you before have, in my life, yes, unless, you unless, have. unless you have a different name uh, that, I, that I'm, uh, I'm not matching. I think everyone in this chat who, who who's looked up my name knows what I look like, and I'm sure that you have too. But that doesn't. That no, no, okay, okay, that's, that's, that's beside it, that's, okay, yeah, that's, that's, the, beside that's beside the point, point. because, because, because a right. look doesn't mean, but, but here, here's my point, though, mm. right now, right now, mm. um, right now, you have a British accent, you sound British to me. Well, you okay? have an American accent. I am, a, I'm American. Right, <laughs> I'm British, so. I know. Well, we have to meet somewhere in the middle, right? So you're right, right. saying, so, so as let, if me, let me finish, my, let me finish accent, my point. No, no, no. You're trying to say as if what, my what, what British am I accent what, but is here's the thing. From, no, 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 you're no, going to no. insinuate <laughs> my, no, you are. Wait, wait, listen, listen, my no, cat. I don't, I don't want to repeat. Okay, listen. My, 
I don't yeah. want to repeat last time. So so instead of instead of projecting what I'm trying to say, allow me to say what I'm saying because I I yeah, I'm more not- I'm more than capable of saying what I'm saying. Like I I'm here. I I'm here and you know, I I can speak and and everything. So I don't need to try. I'm actually going to say what I'm going to say. So here's the thing. There there should be no problem with anybody discussing any other group of people or culture whether they whether they are of that culture or not we we do it all the time everybody around the world does it all the time i'm i'm not from kenya but i can study the luo people i can study the maasai people and stuff like that i can consult with them and and get to know their culture um i'm not from jamaica i got a lot of jamaican friends and i can deal with the history of jamaica how it formed even haiti haitian friends and this that and the third I don't have to be Jamaican deal to, with the- to understand that at all. You see? So so that, that shouldn't be a problem. What do you do? What y'all hear? Can yeah, you hear what, me? Or am I on am I on no, I can hear you? I can hear you. Oh, you can hear me. Yeah. Yes, you do. Yes, I do what? what be- do I I mean being part of someone's culture is more than just hearing about it and saying it. Well, yeah, I, I identify and I might have some things in common with your culture, but you can't say to me just hearing secondhand about someone else's culture that you're going to be able to sit here back, back here and say, well, you know, I can write about those people's culture and I can say X, Y, and Z. It doesn't work like that. No? You're not going to be okay. able to tell me how someone else's culture um you know develops where it came from if you're not part of it and even for you it might sound like a little you know a slither that you're you're being um able to even acknowledge or be part of but for the most part it's not like that Okay, but listen, listen, listen. Here's 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 the problem with what you're saying, because you don't. You're saying I do, and I'm saying you don't. Like right now, you you just now when I when I brought up the queen. Wait, 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 wait. When I brought up the queen, you were able you were able to talk about her father or her father's brother. You know. Uh, um, abrogating the the crown in order for her to become queen. I'm like, well, you don't have the right me, to say me, that. That wasn't me. You don't have the. You know, you, I you did. Just, I I don't. Remember. No, you 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 said that. I'm saying I I can sit here now and say you don't have the right to say that because you're not you're not English. You're you're really Sudanese. So how dare you tell me about the queen? You see what I'm saying? That's stupid. No, no, that's no. silly. But that's this is what's. You have to realize the nuances here. Right? No, but but see, you don't no, no, get no, an excuse. You're gonna tell out of me. No, but me, what what I'm saying is that you woman, are not exempt from that. I'm so don't exempt. so don't so don't put that on any, on other people. No, and I didn't put that Stick on to you. Sudan. Stick to Sudan. What what All language right, do you speak? What what la- what la- what language do you speak from Sudan? Arabic. Okay, so you speak Arabic, Arabic from from Sudan, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so now where at at what point did arabic did the arabic language come into sudan in your history what time period do you want to tell this nigga that you talk to him about damn and all them that- all right there's there's definitely some <laughs> some issues so <laughs> that that person <laughs> it must have been it must have been the boyfriend came and clipped that one. So, uh, look, hey, I think it's a little bit of drink in the night, too. So, Robert Rand. Robert Rand is in the building. So, Cat uh, excused herself. Just so everybody know, I didn't, I didn't kick her off. She must have clicked off. I heard some guy's voice in the background. And, I, you know, I don't get in people's business like that. But he must have regulated something. But uh, and that's that's fine because let, listen, I was I was I was I was great. I was that, that's kind of perfect timing because I was great. To, uh, I was get definitely great to uh, pull the guillotine out on that one because I was because see I'm I'm patient right, but I was I was really just great to start start to get into the whole cartoon Sudan thing because I'm like you know nah you gonna have to start proving that 
I want to speak some speak some Arabic, speak some uh, Sudanese language, speak any any Nilo uh, uh, Nilo Saharan language or Bantu language or whatever case it is. Not some not the Semitic uh, Arabic and whatnot. And this down the third. But go ahead, uh, Robert Ryan. You you got the mic. Yeah, thank you. Give me one second. So keep talking. All right, I'm just finished doing laundry. Robert. You heard me? Yeah. Can you hear All me? All right, so. Oh, oh, okay. All right, so I'm, a, I'm a, yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a mute you. You, you, you can speak when, you, when you're ready to. <laughs> Man, what's going on, everybody? What's going on? So let me, let me start over. You, you have tuned into the correct, uh, channel. This is the Seshu channel. This is your brother Wujao Minib Edi Maat. And uh, yes, you're in the right spot. This is not uh, this is not um, what do you call it? Um, reality TV, uh, basketball wives, or love and hip hop, uh, and all that kind of stuff. This is you, you. You're in the right spot. So let's refocus back to the language. So let me start again and say again. Um, I want to focus on language. I am taking any questions about language. So I got new beginner beginners class groups forming the rest of this month, all of October, and really any time. But I, I like to try to get people who are interested to join around the same time so we can so everybody can walk the same walk at the same time and be in sync with one another. All right. There's a, a huge advantage of learning this kind of stuff among fellow you know others in a group in a group setting and not on your own but you can learn on your own you can be an, become an autodidact and and learn things on your own of course but it's better to learn with a group and have access to a teacher get your questions an, uh, asked and answered elaboration all that kind of good stuff having fun um, having a camaraderie and all that good stuff. So I encourage people who are interested to sign up. And so the rest of September and all of October, I'm trying to get, you know, people to to enroll around the same time so we can walk this walk. All right. So I've been teaching the language for over 10 years. Um, uh, I started face to face classroom settings. Then I moved online in about 2015. So online, I've been doing it for about seven years prior to that. Is it was used to be uh, face to face, and so I, I've I've rubbed elbows with different demographics of of teachers, of different students, people coming from college, people who were learning on their own, the whole nine, you know. Um, so I've used all of my experience and all of my um, engagements with with various different people, and have adopted, adapted, adjusted. And came up with a curriculum and a style, a pedagogical or andragogical in this case, uh, method of teaching the language that has been proved that that's proved itself to be very very effective. All right, and so the book that you see on the screen right now is a book that I intend to publish um, in the first quarter of next year. All right, uh, it's called Ancient Egyptian Orthography and Grammar. It will be its first edition. And it's uh, subtitled, A Synchronic Descriptive Grammar of the Older Speech of Kemet. Now, you see the word synchronic in the subtitle as opposed to diachronic. Diachronic deals more so with historical comparative linguistics where you're, where you're comparing um, um, different peri periods or stages of a language throughout a, a timeline. Whereas synchronic, you're dealing with one particular period. And so this is going to be the period dealing with the older speech of Kemet, which combines Old Egyptian and Middle Egyptian together. All right. So for those who don't know, scholars have divided the Egyptian language into five stages. And that's been the going the going um, claim for a long time. And people just parrot it. But what scholars have also recognized is that out of those five stages you can group two together and then you could group the other three together creating two categories one is considered older speech and the other one is considered newer and so we focus on the older speech which includes old egyptian 
and Middle Egyptian. So those five stages being Old Egyptian, Middle Egyptian, Late Egyptian, Demotic, and Coptic. Those are the, the five stages that scholars divide language in. And so the reason why they, they now see it as two major groups, groupings of, of um, or divisions in the language is because of the nature of the language shifting from Middle Egyptian and what's being called Late Egyptian. There was a, a, a recognizable shift um, that's 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 uh, very overt and plain that you could see, and more so without getting too technical, it shifted from being a synthetically formed language with uh, syntax and things to a more um, uh, what do you call it, analytic, as they call it. So. Just to give you an a, example, a very, very, very basic example of the difference um, um, is, let's see, how, what, what can I think of to show an example? Um, okay, where a word would normally take on a su suffix or an, an affix to change some nuance of the word, but it'll still be one word. Um, that would be a synthetic uh, representation. If you take the same situation and no longer have different um, affixes added to the word, whether it's pre, infix, or suffix, but now you create separate words to accomplish the same semantic meaning or intended meaning, now you have changed the language, the format and structure of the language to a more analytic uh, example. All right, and that's what happened from Middle Egyptian shifting over to Late Egyptian. That's just one example, and that's just me coming off the top of my head to give you an example um, of that. So, so yeah. Uh, so, like for example, instead of me saying um, it was the best, and I just use the word best, I would say it was more gooder, or it was more good. <laughs> that's a bad, that's, that's not a really good example, but it actually uh, uh, demonstrates the use of two words to say the same thing versus one. It's best versus more good, or whatever the case is. I have two words there instead of just one. Like I said, I'm just going off the off the top of my head, thinking of English examples here. But anyway, so so that's the deal. So that that's what the focus is on, and this upcoming book is going to be dealing with the full gambit of the language, from the beginner's level and the advanced level which covers the um, writing system, everything about the writing system, how the glyphs, what the glyphs are, how they function, and so on and so forth. And then uh, the nuts and bolts of the actual language itself, which is morphology and syntax. Okay, so all of that stuff is included. So if you, if you enroll in a beginner's course, you're, you're going to be setting yourself up to lay a good foundation for getting into the grammar. All right. And, a, and, and, and believe me, a lot of people fail to study the grammar of languages, period. Foreign languages, I mean, period. Um, but especially ancient Egyptian. A lot of people that are talking about the ancient Egyptian language that you see on YouTube, that you see on Facebook, and, and, and so on and so forth, um, a lot of those people have not done an adequate study of the grammar of the ancient Egyptian language they just have haven't and you can tell like I can tell who has and who hasn't you know um, you know me having studied it and teaching it I can tell like r immediately right away but even people who don't aren't familiar with it it, it, it I say even but it may be harder you can't really tell because somebody can can be very impressive with memorizing glyphs. You know, the 20, especially the what's called the monoliterals, they can call them off. And see, in, in my classes, I, I put people to task. I, I require people to memorize those monoliterals. You have to and the order in which they're in. You know, um, so people can do that. And then it seems impressive to somebody who don't who don't know anything at all. And you're like, you're calling off the glyphs. OK, the vulture, the reed leaf, the double reed leaf, the arm, the quail chick, the foot, the uh, the matted stool, 
the the horn viper etc and go down the whole list that's really an f we translate it as an f we transliterate that as a w or a p and a b and stuff like that see that's very very impressive but then when you go beyond that everything gets very 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 quiet and that's not enough so i'm pushing for excellence i'm pushing i'm pushing people to really really put in the work of course only if you're interested in the Egyptian ancient Egyptian culture and stuff like that and and I would suggest that if you want to talk about it at least know what you're talking about from that perspective you know get into it you know I think it's a beautiful thing so anyway so I'm gonna back up in the in the chat and see who um had any questions and whatnot shout out to everybody who tuned in after I had started I see we got Miss Tiffany in the building, Jehudi Ma'at, Mr. Metro, uh, another brother named Asar in the building. Brother Damo, LA, Oklahoma is in the building. Uh, who else? Who else? Who else? Forex Nugget. Forex Nugget, you had to explain your name because Forex Nugget, I'm 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 thinking that you 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 getting you get down with uh trading and stuff like that. Um who else we got? All right, but let me back up to some comments because I'm sure I'll probably miss some questions. So listen, fire away any questions about the language. Today is language day, okay? I'm, I'm, I'm live. I'm, 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 I'm on early because people complain that I come on too late. So I'm live early. I'm here. Um, if I have answers, you then, then if I got them, you got them, all right? But you can ask anything about the language because I'm trying to, uh, you know, solve or satisfy anybody's curiosity about the language. Because you may be, you know, tiptoeing the borderline of whether you want to learn it or not, or maybe too hard. And it's not. It's different, but it's not hard. So let me um, let me go down this list. So the brother Asar says, um, I'm definitely trying to be like, well, he has monk like pay. <laughs> yeah yeah man you know you have to understand i have i have i have children i have three daughters anybody who's a parent you know you by default you're gonna um you're gonna gain patience or you should uh let's see and i had patience prior to me even having children um all right let's keep it going i'm trying to go down see if any classes see if any classes I say classes. See if any um, questions. Any questions? Any questions? Miss Tiffany said, uh, "I'm looking for. I'm looking for questions." Then we have world. Oh, yeah. See, I don't want to go down that 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 discussion. World history and stuff. Yeah, you would you would think that there would be no such thing as world history classes if if everybody has to be a member of a culture to be able to speak about it to speak about it to be curious about it and stuff like that that is i've never heard that in my life the world doesn't even move that way like what century are we in don't you know we, we're we're like global travel is taking place it's uh i'm going down the line i am coming down so yeah type in your questions i'm, I'm getting down i'm just i'm just making sure i didn't miss anything I'm going down the line. I'm going down the line. We got uh, Majay L. Al Borbabs in the building. Buxy is in the building. Now, Buxy, you from the UK as well, so I know I know the whole talk about the Queen. You probably like not that again, because I'm sure you're bombarded with uh, the news over there. I'm sure that's like the highlight of everybody over there. Uh, let's see. I'm keep on going down. Down, 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 down. Oh, I am way behind. All right, so I think I have a question here. Majai, Majai uh, would y'all, speaking about rubbing elbows, I've just learned today something about an ancient Egyptian custom that I'm pretty sure even you didn't know about, and it literally about rubbing elbows. Okay, well, break it down. Sp explain. Explain, explain, explain. Explain. There's a lot of customs that are that are different though. I'll give you an example of a custom while while I'm looking I'm going down the chat. 
uh, I have I have friends who are from um, uh, communities on the continent, and they don't have a problem with male on male holding hands. Grown grown men and young men holding hands and walking, like. You know that's that's not a taboo or anything, but over here in America, that's not happening. That you don't do that. Like young girls, yes, but you don't expect young boys or or men to hold hands without it being looked at as you know um, homosexual or whatever like that. But then there's some cultures and communities on the continent or elsewhere around the world where that is perfectly fine and it's not and it's not it has nothing to do with homosexuality you know so we have to be able to be flexible we have to understand we have to understand that we don't have um all the same customs and practices we got to be be you know a little lenient i'm I'm still going down a list i'm still going down a list Google Scholar says, why have you refused to address the elephant in the room? What is the elephant in the room? Because anybody that knows me, I definitely be addressing elephants. I'm the elephant guy. So that's definitely not true. So you got you to put me on. Maybe it's something I missed. So Google Scholar, let me know what is the elephant in the room. Tell me. Inquire minds want to know. What is the elephant in the room? So I can address it. Uh, let's see. I wonder is Project still. Okay. So Kofi has a question. I wonder is the project still in process to revise the language? Yes. A good, <clears throat> good question, Kofi. And the answer is yes. But it's not um, going as nearly as fast as I would like it or a lot of people would like it it's a it's a very very um lengthy and tedious um task to even do um because something like that that's a very very major project so Kofi look at it this way look at the Hebrew language remember in 1947-48 when the um United Nations with its um, allies or whatever the case is they created the state of Israel and remember during around during that time there was an a, a a an effort from from the high levels on down to um, revive the Hebrew language as a national language for this newly formed state country whatever the case is and so that took a lot of uh, effort. That took a lot of funding. Look, it took focus. It took an actual um, focus by people with resources to go ahead and make that happen and get that get that in motion. So, when it comes to the ancient Egyptian language, there there's nothing set up uh, in that way to get that done, like how it was done for Hebrew. So. The project is being piecemealed. It's done here, there. It's not well structured. It's not funded, and it's not coming from a a more on a government type level, you know, and things like that. So, it's gonna be a it's gonna be a very very uh, long time unless unless you know somebody is gonna um, invest in stuff like that, and that's just not gonna um, it's not realistic. But it's still being done. So to answer your question, it's still being done. It's just very, 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 very slow. Um, Google Scholar, is the hieratic script prior to or concurrent with Medunetra? Was the Medunetra significantly expanded by the Greeks? All right, good questions, Google Scholar. So the first part of your question, is hieratic script prior to or concurrent with Medunetra? Um, it's concurrent. So Sesh Medunetra and what they're calling hier- hieratic um, emerged roughly at the same time. And so, and that's very easy to understand. All people have to just understand is that what's being called hieratic is, should really be called a simplified version of the, 
of the precise pictorial nature of the glyphs of the graphs so instead of drawing like for example we do this all the time instead of drawing a a face with eyes the um the pupil uh in the eye the eyelashes the eyebrow the nose we put the bridge of the nose we put the the um the nostrils there and and everything the bottom lip top lip and we draw somebody's face that takes time to draw that level of detail but if you had to 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 speed things up you're not going to put as much detail into it so you're going to simplify it but you're going to simplify it in such a way to where you still know it's a face but it's just not precise and so what people are calling hieratic that came later okay the description and name of a script being called hieratic did not come until uh, clement of alexander alexandria excuse me he's the one that's responsible for why we call it call hieratic hieratic and, and he called it that because during his day and time, when he came into Egypt and visited, he saw that the priestly class of people was writing in a certain style. And so he called it priestly writing, which is what hieratic means in his language, Greek language. Okay. And then the sacred writings he called hieroglyphica or hieroglyphic in his language, which means sacred writings. And then the language that was written by the general population who who were literate he called that demoticus where we get demotic from but that was in 200 a.d prior to that the egyptians didn't have these names for for the for the script they did not distinguish seshmedu nature from what what people like to call hieratic they had two distinctions they had seshmedu nature and Seshnishat. And to the and these are indigenous terms for this for this script now. Sesh Medunetcher. And then it has Sesh Nishat. The word Sesh Nishat, the word shot is letter. It means letter. Like writing a letter. So Sesh Nishat means the writing of letters. Letter writing. And Sesh Medunetcher are the divine writings. Those are the two distinctions that the Egyptians gave. Okay, so anyway, I just want to expound on that. So what's being called hieratic, they didn't divide it like that, the Egyptians. So it emerged concurrently. It emerged uh, simultaneously at the same time. All right. And plus, hieratic, it means priestly writing, but guess what? Uh, it was written, it was used to write unpriestly things, <laughs> which which is a misnomer. That's why I don't I don't like misnomers. I don't, I don't uh, deal with that, but I know what people are talking about. Your second question was, was Medunetcher uh, significantly expanded by the Greeks? That answer is yes. But specifically, Ptolemaic, the Ptolemaic period of ancient Egypt is when you see the inventory of glyphs expand very significantly, very significantly. So to be a little bit more precise, all the way from 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 the beginning of the writing system all the way up to the greco-roman or ptolemaic era there was roughly only about a thousand glyphs in the inventory about a thousand from 750 to a thousand so scholars give a margin of error of 250 so they say from 750 to a one to a, to a thousand but when the Ptolemaic, Ptolemaic era hit and you had an influx of, of Greeks and, 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 and Romans and all that other kind of stuff, they expanded it to almost 7,000 glyphs. 7,000. So it went from 1,000 to 7,000. So we would definitely call that significant. All right. So hopefully that answers your question and I'm going to keep it moving. All right. So let's see, let's go on down to the next. Uh, oh, Buxy was saying, yep, socials, WhatsApp, message, all about the queen. Yeah, I can imagine. See you over there in London. 
uh let's keep on going Phalaitis says um matter of fact let me put your put your uh chat back on on the screen so uh it says Seshu, is there a reasoning behind the boom of added hieroglyphs when the greeks invaded kemet what made them add so many and why did the original people of kemet use so little for so long okay so that's a very good question and re remember what i said earlier when i was talking about my upcoming book the um textbook the grammar book so and this is what scholars um come to come to understand and realize it's just that it's not popular so you don't hear you don't hear a lot of people um um talking about this but it's it's not you know it's not rocket science or not something special so there was a shift in the um emergence of the national language so remember the language of ancient egypt was called by them by the ancient egyptians rodney kemet but rodney kemet is more so a name of the national spoken language for the kingdom like the official language like today if you if you if you were to um look up any particular country right now even on the continent they will have the official language and then they will have um some other language as as something else but it'd be prominent you know that they'll separate the official one from the national language and so on and so forth right so like the official language of some African countries may be French. That'd be the official language or the national language or vice versa. Then the national language would be something different. Maybe Kiswahili or something or whatever, or whatever the case is. And so likewise in, in ancient Egypt, Rani Kemet was the designation for the, the national language of the kingdom. That's why they say Ra Ni Kemet. Remember Kemet was the name of the kingdom it became the name of the kingdom from the 11th dynasty on onward and so the official language of that kingdom was called the mouth of kemet literally ra meaning mouth ni is the preposition of or belonging to um as a nisbi adjective and then kemet being the place the kingdom so it's the mouth belonging to Ke to uh, kemet Okay, and so now I say all of that to say that throughout Egypt's or ancient Egypt's history, which is over three thousand years uh, long, the the different um, languages became prominent, and so scholars have been able to identify with um, confidence at least two languages. And so then you get into um, beyond that is when you get into, um, you know, a a um, kind of like a, 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 a scholarly debate on the difference between the languages versus the dialects and things like that. OK, so like even to this very day with Coptic, let's say Coptic, for example, uh, Coptic has many dialects, but there's some scholars that argue that, no, they're not dialects. It's just uh, a group of a family of related languages that we just call Coptic and things like that. I see we got American Dream in, in the building. Uh, so give me one second. Let me answer this question, American Dream, and I'll pass the mic to you. So um, so where was I saying? Oh, so um, now I said all that to say because there, there's a sh there was a shift in, in the prominence of the language what what you would be what we would be familiar with between middle egyptian and late egyptian there was a shift there and so we got the grouping old egyptian and middle egyptian grouped together as one they're coming coming from one uh tight very close source and then you have late egyptian demotic and coptic being grouped as one coming from its tight source and so because of that shift and because uh later uh, the Ptolemaic uh, era kicks in, you have um, other people coming in, speaking other languages and things like that. The writing system and the mapping of the writing system had to grow and expand and shift. And so this is why you see a, a um, the 
the expansion of the inventory of glyphs coincide with the Ptolemaic era, a uh, point in time. All right. So the scribes started to expand and create new mappings of the language to new glyphs. Okay. And it was, and the motivation for that was uh, many fold. One was to keep a the pedagogical or educational initiatory system separate from the secular uh everyday things so they had to create um you know this figurative way of expressing things but but uh graphically as well so you have what's called cryptographic uh introductions of glyphs and stuff like that where you get into cryptography and all this other kind of things and that's and that's a whole nother conversation so all of this during this time and notice that a lot of the later Egyptian texts, a lot of the later Egyptian stories and stuff from the Ptolemaic period uh, forward d are heavily laid with more magical stuff. You got a magical papyrus here, magical this, magical that, um, mythological this, that and the third. A lot of those sources, when you start to look them th those things up, they come from late Egyptian forward. All right, so all of this coincides um, with their era of time. So I'm just giving you a couple of, um, of nuggets to think about on that. All right. Now, why did the original people of Kemet use so little for so long? Because it was sufficient. They created, they were, they, they, in their genius, they, they were able to create a very, very effective and efficient writing system. And it, it was brilliant because they, they created a pictorial, um, writing system they use pictures of the flora fauna and man-made objects in their environment and the way that they mapped them was genius because they use these glyphs to represent sounds which we call phonographs they use the glyphs to represent full words which we call logographs they use the glyphs to you to represent ideas which we call ideographs and they use the glyphs um to represent semantics, aka determinatives aka classifiers OK, then on top of all that stuff, they use glyphs to represent single consonants, two consonants or double, triple consonants, quadruple, quintuple and so on and so forth. So the, it was a it was a genius invention. And so it was so good and so effective, they were able to use 750 to 1000 for a long time. A long time. All right. Anyway, moving on. So, uh, American Dream, you got the mic. What's going on? What's happening, Wujaw? Can, can you hear me? Yep, I sure can. All right. P, uh, a peace to you, bro, and um, and peace to everybody else. Um, yeah, yeah. I had I had a couple of questions. Um, because you know I'm, I'm really trying to get some things straight in my head, and you know what I mean it's just like. I'm, I'm becoming more confused than getting it straight. So, so I want to ask you a question because you know I've I've spoken with you before about um a couple of months ago I called in and you know the idea of of Ramses tomb being the one where where the Egyptians were were painted um darker than everyone else um and I asked if um if that was because Ramses wanted to give the impression that the Egyptians were were black. Um, and you said no. You said, you know, the, the colors that those paintings were in had nothing to do with, with race. Um, right. And Emmy Ked and Emmy Ked said, you know, she she concurred and said, you know, the, the idea that the women were painted yellow, we all know that the women weren't yellow, so the color had nothing to do with color or race, with skin color or or race. Right. Um, and, you know, and, and I accepted that. I understand that. Um, but yeah. then more recently, I'm hearing you now. And, and you've all also said that the Egyptians had no concept of the modern day concept of race that we have it. So they didn't consider themselves to be black or white or, or anything like that in the modern context of what we mean it. Absolutely. And that, too, I also understood. Um but what I'm not understanding now is, you know, when I listen to you now recently, um, you know, it's as if you're saying now the last time I heard you speak, you, you said 
they refer to the people in the South, they refer to the South as the land of the blacks. And I'm like, well, so what did they mean by blacks? Why are they calling those people blacks? And if they had no concept of race. And then what was getting me even more confused is that you were saying that the fact that they painted those people darker kind of showed that they looked at them as blacks right or a different color is them and, and you kind of went through that a few times to make your example so i'm like what is happening man like if they had no concept of race now now i'll give you what i will say is this i've seen other viewers as well right where you say you know when they say black when or when you're black or white or when the Egyptians are talking about black or white they're not talking about color i think you even when you can correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong but i think you went as far as to say that black and white was more talking about like your credit score right so it wasn't about it was more about your you know you can correct if i got if i'm getting what you're saying wrong but i'm pretty sure i got it right like you you said black was when they said someone is black they were talking about you know someone who has like a low credit score and white was like a high credit score so back in white was more like you know they're standing in in oh you were doing good now you now you you break up a little bit wow i don't know what just happened hold, hold it wherever you were you move back to that spot because you, you broke up really really bad can you hear me? Can you hear me? Okay, yeah. Me just I'm driving, so. Oh, okay. Yeah, you must have hit a bad. I'm spot. driving, no, so you gotta, you gotta forgive I... me. Okay, no, no, no. Right. I, so I the, the, the question I'm asking the, the very last bit, the very last bit. Right. The very last bit was just that you know I'm a confused. I was just reiterating that if if they don't have a concept of race, what do they mean by the land of the blacks? And if by black they meant credit score, what did they mean by the land of the blacks? The land of people <laughs> with low credit score? Right. Like I'm, I'm like okay, at so such a loss right I now. You, I got you. <laughs> and I that's got you, what I, got I meant you. when I said, no, "Bro, please I got you explain covered. yourself, because you it's right, right." All right, I'm gonna go you on covered. you. I got you covered. All right, so so, but I want you to listen and pay attention. But I got you covered. Okay, so. And Wajawu, Wajawu, yeah. before you start, right, I was watching wow. the, um, I was watching the pseudo killers this morning. They had a show last night. I was watching it this morning. And, and, you know, I know you're, you're familiar with the pseudo killers, but Corey, yeah. but Corey wow. was so happy that finally you agreed with him that, yeah, the people, the, the black people were, were in the South, not the Egyptians. And he was kind of, you know, because it sounded <laughs> as if you were agreeing with, with, um, with Chief X's argument that Egypt was Mediterranean and that the people there oh, weren't wow. black at all. If you want to see crazy. black people go down South. So I wasn't right, the so only me, one right, confused. So it just, me, it just right, re reiterated in. to me that if I'm confused, other yeah. people are confused as well. So, okay, you know, if you so could just explain in. it so we can all kind of clear yeah. it up, that would be great. I'm, I'm going to make it very plain and I'm going to be short as I can because this is what's happening. People will take sound bites and cherry pick and use use what they want to support any and everything that, that, that they themselves say. So in the same video that that court that Corey must have heard me say about uh land of the blacks and stuff which is which is still, still on his channel people could go see it in the same video i clearly said that nobody in antiquity is black or white or none of that stuff i said it's stupid and it's retarded i said nobody and so now to 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 clear to clear it up things up with you is this is this is what i said and I, I encourage people to actually watch my video about it, but I'm gonna try to make it real short and sweet uh, to clear it up for, for you um, so that people can't take a sound bite. So what I was simply saying and pointing out was that the experts and the pseudo killers and everybody else rely on experts. You hear everybody talk about what do the experts say? PhD this, PhD that, ABC this. You know, the experts in the late 1800s 
and the early 1900s who were experts in Egyptology and Egypt, ancient Egyptian culture, they are the ones who translated the word Nehes um, when it comes to the place as the black land. They are the ones that, that translated the word Nehesiyu when it came to the people as black people. They are the ones that did that. And according to those experts, if people today, African Americans or whoever, wanted to look for black people in, in, in East Africa, they should have went to Sudan because the, the place called Nehes is Sudan today just like Kemet is Egypt today Nehes is Sudan today so if the scholars are telling people that Nehes is the land of blacks and the people living there are black people then if people today in 2022 are looking for black people somewhere over there in East Africa then why not listen to the scholars and go to Sudan and leave Egypt alone because those same scholars didn't say Egypt was the land of the blacks or black people. They said Sudan was. That was my point. According to the experts that people go by. But also in that video, right after I said that, I said, now, my stance is that, number one, the word Nehes does not mean black. It doesn't. Nehesi you does not mean black people. Ta Nahisi does not mean land of blacks, but that's what those experts said it did. And because people are relying on the experts and want to quote dictionaries all the daggone time, how did they miss that? So my stance is that no, those words don't mean black, and that none of those people were black. None of them. They weren't white, they weren't black. They did not have the the social construct that we have today in their conscious back then. They did not organize their society based on our modern social construct of race. To them and everybody back then, and still to this day, for, for, for many parts of the world to today, it's really more so based on cultural, ethno, ethno-cultural categorizations not racial racial race is a class system it doesn't tell you who you are it tells you your position in society it doesn't tell you who you are and i even played dr john henry clark saying those exact same words on the same video jo dr john henry clark who everybody quotes and name drops and want to quote all day every day he's saying Leave that black racial stuff alone. He said that. He said, I wish people I, he, 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 he said, I wish people would hurry up and get and get over that. And I'm paraphrasing, but that's what John Henry Clark said. So there you have it. Right, but let me ask you this, Jim. Because you know, granted okay, there were it. they didn't have am, am I breaking up? Can you hear me clearly? Sounds like we have a uh, we may have a delay. Yeah, I can hear you though. I can hear you though. But let me. I'm. I'm gonna put some okay. things on the screen while you while you talk because I like to demonstrate. Uh, right. While so I talk. Go ahead. you know, Go ahead. Mm -hmm. I just want to speak to the idea that because because they didn't have an idea of black, as in that that we consider you know the the idea of black people, and being one under our blackness, right? That's one question. That's one issue, whether or not they thought that way. Right. But regardless of whether they thought that way or not, they still had a particular skin color outside of what they thought. And, you know, every human has the people skin that color. are asking. So that's right. Every that's right. Sure. Out, they they have. a, And, you know, so when every, you say they I weren't know. black, what, what I'm saying is when you say they weren't black because they didn't think in the in the in the modern context of of black and white like you know when you use that as a way to to say whether they were not like i don't know i just i just don't know if if to me that's like a a, a good enough answer because whether they thought of themselves as black people and being one at, because they were black 
it doesn't doesn't mean they weren't actually dark skinned people or that they didn't look a particular way. You know what I'm saying? So it's just it's just weird to me that that you would say because they didn't have that construct. It's as if you're saying because they didn't have that construct, they didn't have the skin color. And it doesn't it well, doesn't it's see, not you're, really you're connecting making, to me. OK, but see, we'll see what you shouldn't do is just make up something because that's not what i'm saying every single human being on the planet that i know of has a particular skin color or or range of skin colors depending on if their arms are out in the sun or they wear short sleeve shirt or or long sleeve shirt and whatever whatever everybody ha is is colored okay so that that we shouldn't even have to say that so black is a class i know you know that because everybody who self identifies in the in the in the membership that we call black does not look the same like me. People will call me black, but I'm red. People call me red bone when I was little. I'm yellow red bone. I'm a, a what light do you mean by brother. class? What do you what would you mean by class? Wait, 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 because wait, everyone wait, that wait, says wait, they're wait, black wait, wait, wait. wouldn't be in the up, same hold class. Up. But hold up. But wait one second. I'm, I'm making a point here. Because you asked about, because you're making it seem, because according to your statement, you're making it seem that I'm saying or insinuating that people didn't have eyes or that people didn't have skin colors. Yes, of course people had skin color. But it's not about the skin color. It's about the, what is, what does it mean to be black? That is a modern concept. That is a modern conceptualization of what it means to be black. That they did not have. You got two people that can that can look just alike. And I don't mean identical twins, but two people that look very, very similar to an outsider. But those same two people will not see them uh, as being the same people. I know that to this very day. You could, you that could, may be you true. could, you could, you could talk. Wait, wait, wait. It's, it's not. Maybe it's true. It is true. You can talk to a, 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 a Nigerian. Two Nigerians. One will be a Yoruba, and one will be an Igbo, uh, Igbo person. They're not the same, but to us, they may look the same. But they're not the same. They're not the same people. So they don't organize that. their 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 wait. So so my thing is they don't organize themselves on the flat blackness thing. They organize themselves on an the ethnocultural basis. That's why they say I'm Yoruba and you're Ig Igbo. They don't say oh we're the same. We're all black. No. I understand like that the, Ujawu. Ujawu, okay, I understand right. that. But what I'm saying is the people today that want to know if black people if if the Egyptians were black. They're not talk they're talking about their skin color, not their ethnocultural anything. They don't care about whether they thought of themselves okay, as no, black no. the way they're they're okay, saying don't, but wait, wait, are wait, they don't, the same don't skin speak, wait, color? Wait, 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 wait. No, no. You ask your question. Don't act don't don't speak on behalf of anybody else but yourself. You No, I think that's just that simple me. enough for me to speak on behalf of they're talking about their skin color. What did they look like? No, they're no, not no, talking no, about no, what did no, they think are, like. No, no. Are you talking like you you ask the question of uh, from yourself. What what will be your question? So my question would be because my question is when I think of the Egyptians being black, I'm yeah. not thinking to myself, did they consider themselves like black people the way we consider ourselves black people today? And did they think that they were one because of their blackness the way we do? That's not what I'm thinking. When I okay. think, are the Egyptians black? I'm thinking, what's their skin color? What did they look like? That superficial, that's what I'm thinking about. Okay, not and I have an answer for you. And I have an answer for you. So so if that's your question, your, your question is what was, to narrow it down, your question is, what were the Egyptian skin colors like? If we, if, we, if we had to simplify your question, is that a fair assessment of your question? Correct. What's their skin color? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So their here's skin the color, the, the contact, the, the, um, the texture of their hair, like the, what we consider black today in terms of look, just what it looks like. Do they look like we look? Okay. So, so again, 
I, I want you to know that you're that you're that you're overlapping two different things. But I'm going to answer your question in, a, in the simplified ver version of your question. What was the skin color of the ancient Egyptians? And the answer is it was a range of skin colors coming from light skin to dark skin. That is the answer. Over the 3000 plus years of ancient e e Egypt's existence, the people in, in ancient Egypt's skin color range from light skin to dark skin. That is the answer. Now, when you want to move from skin to hair, okay, the hair so texture well, range you, um, from, from wait, 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 let me answer it. The hair texture range from wavy to what we would call, you know, tightly curled. That's the answer. So if that's not sufficient, then you're swimming and, and fishing for something else. But go ahead. Right. Sure. And that's and that's sufficient for me. I'm, I'm fine with that. Right. So but, but, but let me ask you this question, though. We can say the same thing about America. Right. America is the if, if someone was to ask, ask us what do Americans look like, it would also be a range. Right. And yep. I think I think, though, another question, if, if, we, if we were to ask, most people would say America is is, for lack of a better term, like a, a white culture. Right. It's like a white man's culture. Right. So that question still can be asked, even though there's a range, that question still can be asked. And, that, and so I would ask that same question of, of Egypt, even though there is a range, can we say Egypt was a white culture, as I think Chief X and others say, uh, I'm, and I don't want to get Chief X wrong, so pardon me, Chief X, if you're listening and I'm misrepresenting you, but would we say even though there was a range, it's a white culture, or even though there's a range, it was a black, it's a black culture? There's no such thing as a white culture or black culture. Again, white and black are modern social constructs. <laughs> Nobody is literally. What the people look like what Wujawu. I'm talking about what the is people white. look listen, like. Listen, 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 listen to what I'm saying to you. I already answered what the people look like. So for you to double back and say, <laughs> "Is it a white culture?" When I already said that the skin color range from light skin to dark skin, I didn't say white at all in my answer. So, so if you're asking me, "Is it a white culture?" After I told you the skin color range from light skin to dark skin your at best your question should have been well is it is it a light skin to dark skin culture but no you asked is it a white culture how in the hell are you getting white out of my answer okay so answer it in the terms of light and dark then you understand what i'm asking you you want to okay. you want to under you want to you want to think of it in the terms of is it a is it a culture from the north or a culture from the south whatever okay. however you feel comfortable answering it but you understand what I'm asking you the same way okay, we can so think of me... America is there's a range but we think of America as a European for the most part uh, the stuff from America and you know what I mean okay, the way so America is set up is more so European I want you, okay I want you to understand you move from a color to a place but let me let me answer you let me answer you based on based on your the way you're asking. And what I think that you're looking for, uh, uh, the way you're asking your question, the ancient Egyptian culture is not a European culture. The ancient Egyptian culture is not a Mediterranean culture. It is only a Mediterranean culture in the very narrow sense that Egypt as its geographical location is bordered on, on its north end on the Mediterranean Sea. Everything about the Egyptian culture is a river culture. Everything about Egyptian culture and the practices and lifestyles of the people was based on the Nile River, not the Mediterranean Sea. It, it, so it is a river culture. It's not a crayon color, crayon color, coloring uh, thing culture. It's a river culture. The Nile River produced its culture, not a color. You understand? So that's my answer to you. The culture is a river culture. The culture gets its genesis from the area, from the second cataract, which is the second waterfall and, and rock structure of the Nile River, all the way up to what's archaeologically called Nakata. So from Nakata down to the second cataract, that is the geographical location of the genesis of the ancient Egyptian culture. 
that is nowhere near the Mediterranean Sea, nowhere near any European country at all. So that is my answer. That is the answer. So now I can back up everything I just said and show you all of the iconography of ancient Egypt, everything people love about ancient Egypt from its writing system to the symbols, the red crown, the white crown, the glyphs, the crook, the flail, the, 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 the chief head person called the king wearing the bull's tail, everything. I can show you where the genesis of all that stuff is in the south, in the southern part of Egypt and the northern part of Sudan today what we call egypt and sudan today not the mediterranean period sure and i accept that um tell me one last time how did you um what does nehesu mean again if it's not black if it's not uh, what, what did you say was the proper translation of it uh, i didn't give it so that's why you're, you're, you're puzzled about it i i didn't say what it means i told you what it doesn't mean it so the experts say it means the land of blacks. Um, what do you say it means? No. So check this out. So remember, and you got you to gotta make sure you understand what I'm saying the way I say it, though. I said the experts of the late 1800s and the early 1900s, these Egyptologists and, and scholars of that era of time in the, in, the, in the beginnings of Egyptology. Egyptology started in 1822. So 50 years later and beyond is when these experts start writing. So I'm showing one on the screen right now. So I, I, know, you, I know you're driving. You probably can't see it. But I'm showing a source on the screen right now from E.A. Wallace Budge, 1896, where he and all of his contemporaries, it's not just Budge. I'm just showing him for convenience. But all of his contemporaries translated the word Nehes as the word black or Negro. And they call ta Nahisi, which is the location, top of them, they call it black land. And I got it on the screen, Negro land. They call the Nahisi you, the people, they call them Negroes, blacks. So in that era of time, the experts translated as blacks. Now, the scholars of today, they simply substituted the word Negro and they put the word Nubian in there. So today, scholars say Nahes and the Hesi and the Hesi U means Nubian. Nubia as a place, Nubian as a people, as a person. That's what scholars have done today. But then you and ask, do you accept well, that one? Like, do you agree with that? You said you disagree with the with the other one. Do you agree with this one? No, I don't. Okay, so what do you think it means? There's a there, there's a difference between what a word uh, refers to and versus what a word means. Like, for example, what's your what's your first name? American. Okay, American. So your first name is American. Now, now your name being American refers to you, but the word American itself does not mean you. It 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 has a meaning to it, right? So the the word Nehes is referring to a geographical location on the southern border beyond the southern borders of ancient Egypt of Kemet. That's what it's pointing to. That's what it's referring to. The word itself um, is likely to mean to mumble. It's a word that was used to describe the behavior of the speech of the people that was south of Egypt. So the leading, um, the most prominent uh, um, ascertained meaning of the word itself is to mumble. Is some some kind of mumbling the way the way that they they uh, uh, spoke the way that they did their enchantations and chants and stuff like that. So the people south of Egypt were known for their chanting, enchantations, and prayers and stuff like that. So the word Nehes is said to mean to mumble or to pray or whatever the case is like that. That's the meaning of the word. Has nothing to do with black or black land so think, or anything like so that you think they were referring to the way they spoke uh that's a possibility so i'm 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 with that possibility the jury the jury is not uh the verdict is not in uh in totality but what everybody does know it doesn't mean black or any of that stuff and when they translate it as nubian when they translate as nubian then i can ask you well what does nubian mean 
And then right, people right. have that. I mean, right. So 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 then it's like, okay, well, what does the word Nubia mean? And then people will go two different routes. They'll say, okay, it means gold, because the Egyptian word noob, it means gold. Or they say it means from the from the um Nabo people or whatever, it's a it's an ethnic ethnonym of a of a people in Sudan. And it doesn't mean gold. Some people say it means slave. Because two two warring factions in Sudan were at war with each other and they created the name um Nuba or whatever and it had to do with um slavery. So some people are of the opinion that the word Nubian origin, the etymology of it, has to do with slavery, and while other people say the etymology has to do with gold. And I can show you all of this. So so again, my point though in my other video you ever was go ahead. Go ahead. No, no. go ahead. I think what you're showing on the screen. Before, or have you written about it? Wow, you. Or made that presentation yeah, at you're all? Breaking, hold up, just repeat. Uh, it sounds like you're in a better spot now. You were breaking up real bad. Say it again. Wondering if you've if you've ever done a presentation or or about why you think means to mumble and and why you think the experts, um, both the old and the new experts, why you think they have it wrong. Um, that'd be a good video to do. So I, I I'll take you up on that and I'll I'll do one, because all, all all I'm gonna do is present what I can present to you right now, which is um. The, and, and, during you know, a, the reason scholarly, I'm saying it, a scholarly li literature review of of the word Nehes because it's being investigated among scholars and among people who are pioneering, um, you know, adding knowledge to the to the discipline in their uh, dissertations and thesis. So so people are actually exploring it um, as we speak. And so right now I gave you the two running the two running. Um, competitors right now in terms of the thought among scholars one is that Nehes has to do with um, mumbling another another uh, running contention is it has to do with something that dealing with stabbing or bee stings like a mosquito bite or a bee sting to sting so those are the two running contenders and then as so I said mumbling and then you got the stinging aspect and then um and then obviously there's a bird that's a, that's being associated with the word ne not the full word nehes with the ending on there but the word ne is also um a word that's used to identify a certain bird and so those are the three prominent exploratory things among scholars so i can do a video to show you to show all, all three of those in 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 Put on the screen uh, what they say. Read some paragraphs and stuff like that, and and then be done with it. So we could do that. Sure. Sure. But one um, thing for sure. Yeah, one well, thing for know, sure, though. <laughs> nobody is saying it means Negroes. <laughs> but my nobody but my, except but my, for those other nobody except for those outdated uh, experts. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. But my point was, my point was, people or rely, or rely unless on or or unless people, the, the experts no, that say Nubia meant black people by when they said Nubia, they may have been talking about black people. I don't and they know. Did. No, no. Well, I do know they did because here here's the thing. And see, I've already done a video on that. The only, the only video, the only thing that I would add to that video if I did another one is what you just asked about. Is 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 to sh is to show the word Nahis three possible meanings, right? The three running content contending meanings, right? But other than that, I've already done videos on this stuff, and and I've showed that among the scholars, they simply word swapped. They they simply took the word Negro because it became politically incorrect to use. They swapped that word Negro with Nubian. So you have breasted, and everybody that comes after breasted using the word Nubian. But prior to that, 
The contemporaries of Budge. Yeah, so let me put it on this. Let me put it on. Let me let me put the progression on the screen. I think I have it right here. Um, yeah, I, I have it right here. And 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 this is from the other night. So so Nahes, so Nahes was equated to Negro. Negro is the romance romance word for black. Then that got changed to Nubian. So this this is the progression right here. Nahes was Negro, which meant blacks, and then it got changed to Nubian. So they're all equated. They're all synonyms in the eyes of all of these scholars. So even to this very day, although they don't spell it B-L-A-C-K, they, they, they put the word N-U-B-I-A-N there. They mean black, though. They, they, they're trying to insinuate and imply blacks, but they're using the word Nubian. Because all they did was swap the previous words from from the previous scholarship. That's it. Right. So so they and don't one thing for, mean and, and one gold. thing for sure is that that it doesn't it's not Egypt. Yeah, yeah, they're not talking about um they're not talking about gold when they're talking about people. People people are not gold. So Right. So so, so the expert experts from the from the 18th or the 19th century aren't saying any any much different from the experts of the of the 20th and and of the 20th century or, or the 21st century right given that no, exactly. they're just they're using a different word no. instead of saying negro they're saying nubian but they mean there negro by nubian but they're all there saying you so you just agree with all of those experts no, 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 no. What I'm saying is that I disagree with all those experts. Right, you disagree and, and, with them. And, oh, I thought you said I agree. Yeah, I disagree. No, no, no. You disagree with all of them. Exactly. And I've and I've right. been in disagreement ever since I stepped on the scene back in 2009. So I've been very consistent <laughs> in all of my posts and everything. That's why I don't even use the word Nubian. I do not use the word Nubian. I use the I use the indigenous term. The endonymic term that was used for these people, which is Ta Nahisi, the, the Nahisi you. Well, let me and, ask and, you and, this and, question. And as long as we do that, we're clear. As long as we do that, we're clear. Because because I can call you American and your last name Dream, and I and, and I'm safe. I don't I don't have to make up anything else. As long as I call you what you what you're called, everybody will know and understand who I'm talking about and everything like that. Regardless of what what it means to you or anything like that, I am referring to you when I say American dream. And we can keep it moving. That's it. That's all we have to do with Egypt. Call these people who they who who they call themselves. The Egyptians are called Remetch. The Nahisiu are called Nahisiu. The Wawatiu are called Wawatiu. The um and so on and so forth. We can the the Chamehu, the Chahinu. We can call let them me all. ask you this, Mujahu. Uh huh. So uh, I'm I'm sure that Nehes is not the only term that you disagree with the experts on, right? So off the top of your head, what what's some term that you disagree with the experts? Okay, that's a good question. You broke up, but I think I understood your question. So, can you hear me? I want, I, I want, I want you to hear my answer. I'll make sure you can hear me. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay, so uh, you're you're absolutely correct. That's not the only term that I'm that I disagree with. Now, now I want people to understand that I don't disagree just for the sake of disagreeing. Uh, I disagree, and I can and I can make my case for it, and I have. I've done done so for years. So another term that's popular that I disagree with people people saying is the word Tamhu. People say Tamhu means Europeans or white people or Caucasians. And that's not the case at all. People are the experts, not people, experts. Like all the experts. Yes, there's a, there no, not all the experts, but there's an expert. There's two experts specifically that said Tamahu means white people or Caucasians or Europeans. You want to know their names? One is What does Budge uh, say? No, I'm not talking about Budge. I'm talking about Budge. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, 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 wait. No, let's not cherry pick. 
But wait, wait, wait. But wait a minute. No, I just want to talk community experts. expert. I don't consider the experts. I don't consider conscious community people experts. I'm talking about people you are talking about into i know I about the, if you, right like, there, now there may there may be a there may be a connection issue because i was about i'm not talking about com, uh, conscious community experts i you know you, you should know okay I'm okay my bad the zombie, the zombie community anyway okay i'm about to give you some bona fide experts just like i gave you with budge and his contemporaries bruce budge uh uh and all those all those folks right so on the issue of Tamahu, we got two experts. We got Jean-Francois Champollion, the quote unquote father of Egyptology. Then you have Gerald Massey. These are two popularly known scholars of Egypt and Egyptology who say that the word Tamahu or Tamahu means either Europeans or white people. Now, Gerald Massey went even as far as to say the word Tamahu not only does it mean white people, but it means filth. <laughs> filth, like, 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 uh, uh, created filth. And that's absolutely wrong. That's trash. It's garbage. And people in the conscious community actually bought that and use it for white people. You got people who are calling white people Tamahu because of these experts. So when you ask me, Jao, would, would you ask, when you ask me who, uh, for another one that I disagree with, that's my answer. I'm giving okay. you another example of what I disagree right. with. And I get that and I appreciate that, but, but allow me to kind of, um, to kind of adjust what I'm asking you. I want you okay, to give me something you disagree with because so far, the only terms you've given me is Nahas, which is black people, and then Tamahu, which is white people. I want you to give me something you disagree with that has nothing to do with black or white or anything like that. Just a term that means this, and you say, nope, it don't mean that. Um, well, you don't, you, don't, you don't want me to associate it with color or anything like that, right? Because this, 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 there could be a whole lot of I terms. mean... Cause you know there's, there's, yeah, there's, I prefer there's like thousands there's thousands of words in the language now. There's thousands upon thousands of words in the language. Yeah, li listen, I got a call coming in. Let me take this call. All right, all right, you come back, you come back, come back, come back when you yes, can. Yes, sir. All right. All right. All right. So he'll be back. So what's up, everybody? What's up? This is your brother, Wujau Meneb Edimad. And yes, you are tuned in to the Seshu Mindy Metal Nature YouTube channel, shortened to the Seshu channel due to people mispronounce, mispronouncing our name, Seshu Ma'ani Metal Nature. Just call us the Seshu. Call me the Seshu. All right. I'll take that. Call me the Seshu. I'm an aspiring scribe of divine communication. A loyal scribe of divine communication. Seshu Ma'a. The word Ma'a means true, loyal, real. All, those, all that in a bag of chips. All scribes fall under the dominion and the governance of two main deities. Jehuti and Sashat. So... Welcome to the Jehudi and Sashat show. Welcome to K WKMT. Kimmet. 11.0 on your FM dial. All right, so we got American Dream back in. You got the mic. Go for it. Um yeah, I was did you did you um did you give the example? No, no, I was well, waiting for you. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't hear what you were saying. Right. I was, I, I had asked for, um, an, an example of something you disagree with them that has nothing to do with, um, with color or, or, you know, or, or just race or, or anything like that. Because, you know, I don't want it to seem as if your only contention with the experts is when it comes to racial, racial distinctions. Oh no no no! I I have I have other contentions in other areas. Yeah yeah. So so that's so that's so I'm, I'm not I'm not limited to to just the racial conversations. 
Okay. I don't, I don't even I don't even take that serious anymore. No doubt. I'll take your word for it. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I do have have some uh, an, another issue that I wanted to speak. Well, not an issue, just something I've always been curious about. But I don't okay, want to I don't want to take up your your whole show. I, if I can sit back, if if there's anything else that you want. No, to listen, do. listen. Right now, you're the only one on the panel. The the panel link is pinned. So if anybody else in the chat wanted to come on, they they would have. But I, yeah. but I, I am I am going to address some some of the comments in the chat. But go ahead. I'm I'm all ears. I think people Indeed. can learn something. Um, you know, I'm, I'm fully aware of, of people's fascination with, with Egypt. Um, and a part of me have never, has never really been able to, to grab, to understand why, you know what I'm saying? Even, even people that are, that are not religious still have this fascination with, with Egypt. Um, even though Egypt was like one of one of, if not the most religious civilizations that existed. Um, but even atheists today, um, black atheists in particular, still have a fascination with it. Um, yep. You know, so, but what has always, like one of the things about Egypt that has always prevented me from being so fascinated with it is is the, um, you know, the incest that went on with, with the pharaohs and the fact that, um of how uh the, the the kingship if you will was passed down and and that you know they were having brothers and sisters would would you know would have children together um aunt Naten, for example was very was very sick um a very sickly um boy because of of the incest um that he was a product of um, and so just the, that idea of, of the incest that went on has prevented me from from being so fascinated with Egypt because I've always thought that, wow, that that's just weird. You know, um, so and I, I was wondering if you could if you could speak a little bit about because I've learned about um, in Africa that there was a lot of um, a lot of um, in a lot of old African societies, there was a lot of um, fascination with with um, with transgenderism, right? And and transgenders in in certain African societies um, were revered and were um, held in, in in high esteem in these um, societies. Um, and you know, I've I've learned that the reason that was was because of 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 the um of the religious or or the spiritual um significance behind it because they felt that you know a, a, someone who claimed to be transgender was just someone who who was a male but their 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 body got taken over by a female spirit or more specifically one of their female ancestor spirits and so you know it was explained away through the religion um so i'm wondering if if the incest that went on in in egypt with the pharaohs um was that something that was accepted by by the populace and just how did they relate to it um and just was it something that was explained away by the religion was it something that was accepted um just if you could just talk about that just just a little bit okay so in brief um um, but I have on. A, I'm not sure if you can see the screen. But I have on. I have on a screen. Um, Consanguinity and incest in Egypt, by Alexandra Bride Dorali, uh, 2018 um, article. Um, what I would recommend now. What I would recommend beyond anything I say is for people to really look into it because the incest question, when it comes to to um, these cultures, specifically ancient Egypt. It, it, it has been a hot topic and there's a lot of literature on it. OK, so now having said that in ancient Egypt, to answer your question, in ancient Egypt, ancestral relationships was not the uh, prevailing um, model. OK, it was done. Uh, it was done, but it was done strategically and it was in alignment with the um mythos in terms of the organization of how they organize the various different deities so usir marrying his sister who became his wife Oset, nebit hut marrying and becoming the wife of her brother uh satuk and so on and so forth geb marrying and becoming the husband uh to his wife nut and shu and tefnut and things like that so the the deities themselves were a product of 
of incest, what we would define as incest, this is no different than the, the biblical narrative of Adam and Eve starting off with two people and then having sons then in order for their her their sons to have children they had to get busy with eve unless they want to say that some other people existed that wasn't created by god but nobody really wants to go down go down that road so it's assumed safely that cain well cain kills abel but cain has to have sexual relations with either a sibling or his own mother and so on and so forth so so that idea is not uh, unique. It's not, you know, it's not new or whatever. It's very widespread. But in terms of, of was it the norm, the normal model among uh, the, the people of ancient Egypt? The answer is no. Even, even polygamy that was practiced among the kings was not the norm for the population itself. So, so we got to keep all that stuff in mind. So hopefully that's sufficient enough for you without me going into details and reading paragraphs from, from these books. But there's a lot of literature on it, by the way. So I, I maybe I can help and pull up some. I, I could put some book covers on the screen so people can um, find some good books on it. All right, so. Sorry, Wujawu. I got I got some bad connection. I I wasn't I wasn't hearing anything oh, for like the goodness. last minute. So I don't know if you asked me something or Okay, man, I don't know if you heard anything I said, uh, but I... <laughs> so no, I heard what you said that... about um I heard what you said about, you know, the Bible story and Cain and him having he would have had to go out um, you know, get a wife his wife would have had to be his sister. So you were saying it's, you know what I mean, it's no different from what's happening in the um, in, in the Bible. And and I don't disagree with that, um, you know, but, but for me, it, it still doesn't justify it and it still doesn't take away from the, from just the weirdness of it for me. Because I've always thought the incest in the Bible was also weird. Um, and that's a part of the thing that, that you know, kind of drew me well, away from the Bible I mean, as well. Yeah, I think I th I think eating spiders is weird, weird, but but there's cultures that 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 eat spiders as a delicacy. So so that's so how we feel about something is is totally kind of irrelevant to other cultures, and we just gotta respect it. But let me just add to what I was saying, that um, remember, in in the in the uh, pantheon of deities in many cultures, not just Egypt, the the deities would be described as practicing incest because that's how they have to uh, unfold their 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 production you know obviously if atum is spitting out and is coughing and sneezing shoe and tefnut and they're the only ones that's there then how are they gonna have children they got to get busy with themselves and have uh geb and newt and then geb and newt gonna have to get busy and they have you know the rest and so on and so forth and things unfold that way so they all, there's always a starting point within the mythos and these different stories. Now, um, like I said, also what you got to be careful of when it comes to ancient Egypt, and that's why I say there's a lot of literature on this, because one thing that we need to rule out is this idea of, of a brother marrying his sister. Because in many African cultures and in Egypt, the word for brother um, and a second one, the word for number two, the word for brother, the word for sister, and so on and so forth, may not be a biological, uh, a biological manifestation. So, for example, even today, in many African cultures, even 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 in, in the United States of America, in African American culture, we call each other brothers and sisters. I mean, look at that sister right there. Oh, what's up, bro? And now, and now, the younger generation say, "Bruh," like, "Bruh, stop lying, stop capping, bruh." Bruh, bruh, hold bruh, on, hold bruh, on. Bruh. Are you saying there's a chance that when they said they were brother and sister, they didn't really mean brother and sister? What I am saying is that um, even in ancient times, like on the continent to this very day, the word brother and sister does not have a biological intended meaning to it. And are you suggesting that that's what the that's that that's true for the pharaohs? I'm asking if that's what you're suggesting. That's what I don't I'm know why you, you would say that's it. What, that's what that that's what so you're saying. So, they weren't really brother what, and sister. I'm saying there are instances where no, they're not. 
They're, they're not biological brothers and sisters. Yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. I and, mean, and, 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 and that's and that's not that's not something new or odd because it happens all the way up to this very day on the continent. I could bring Emmy Cat on here right now and she can explain from her culture on the ground right now where that that occurs in Kenya. So okay, because so we're, so because, because but, but 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 wait, 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 but I, I want you, I want you to note take note of something. You're, you're coming from a place of already looking at it as weird because your comment was that you even think the Bible is weird. And that's why I said what I said. No, I didn't say the Bible is weird. I said I said the, I thought the incest in the Bible was weird. OK, that's what I, I said. Meant. Incest I, is weird. I, right. Right. I don't I'm not I'm not. But now it sounds as if you're saying the Bible. Wait, wait, wait. But now it sounds as if the way the you're weird. OK, that's we're that's fine. But your comment earlier about incest in the Bible is weird. So so you're 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 coming from a very subjective bias standpoint from the get go. So anything that I'm saying is going to be weird to you. That's why that's why you're kind of in disbelief. But go ahead. No, because right now, you know, I'm just I'm just trying to be clear on what you're saying right now, because it sounds as if what you're saying right now is that there really was no incest in Egypt. Is that what you're saying? That's not what I'm saying, because if you if you listen to everything I said, but but maybe, maybe that's where the break was in your connection. So you got to rewind back. So what did you I mean when you said it wasn't really brother and they weren't really wow. brother and sister? If you let me, if you let me talk, <laughs> I mean <laughs> that. I, I, I mean that there are instances where people are called brother and sisters, brother and sister in the language, in the text, in in the artifacts that's left for us to examine where they're not biologically brothers and sisters. OK, that exists. American dream that exists. There would be no interest going on. Okay, so if you want to take Correct. what I just said there, no, no. If you want to take that statement and then apply it to everything, then that's what you're doing. Because like you, you didn't hear what I was saying before. Because you're 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 asking me for an absolute, and it sounds like you want me to say. There was absolutely no incest in Egypt or there absolutely was incest in Egypt. And he fell off. And he fell off. OK. All right. So. Uh, again, welcome to uh, the Seshu channel. This is your brother, Wujahu Meneb Eri Ma'at. And uh, for those who are just tuning in, shout out to everybody who's tuned in. I try to go live earlier today because people complain that I go live late and they may have some questions. Today was supposed to be a language focused uh, uh, live stream, but we kind of went in different directions, which I don't mind at all. But, you know, I, I, I was hoping that we can get some very interesting questions about the language out. And every time I do this, I see that we don't, which tells me people are not being pushed to learn the language enough. So I'm gonna get on you all's nerves because I'm gonna be pushing the language because later for people who pretend to know the language, because see, people don't focus on the language because it leaves room for people to pretend and fake the funk like they know the language and be up here talking about this, that, and the third when they really don't. So we're going to start raising the bar. We're going to start putting people to task about the language. So people make up stuff about the language, you best believe it's going to be put to task. All right? And I'm going to give people homework because I'm going to push excellent. People are going to learn. Okay, I see we got American Dream back in the building. So American Dream. Go ahead. We should be able to hear you. Oh, he left again. Okay, well, American Dreams is driving. He has a bad connection. So, uh, uh, I don't know if Emmy is still in the chat. Is there anything else I'm missing? Let me, let me, let me, let me back up a bit. Um, let me back up a bit in the chat because maybe people in the chat, uh, were, were um, had some questions. 
Okay, but hold up. Let me just go through this little article right here. This this is something everybody can can uh just just pull up real quick. Um, let me see if I can post a link in the chat. Now now listen to what I'm saying, everyone. There is a lot of literature on the question of incest in ancient Egypt, specifically ancient Egypt, whether or not there's really incest or not incest the brother and sister thing all of these things have been written about okay now for the sake of time i'm not going to read a whole bunch of the literature that's been written about this all the uh, uh um you know throughout the scholarly world okay this particular article is something that everybody can get to very very quick and um i just pulled it up randomly actually and american dream is back in the building so let me just start reading this This is on the screen it says consanguinity and incest in ancient egypt 2018 article it says my curiosity was piqued during one of my turns at the petri museum facing all these artifacts traces of dynasties of pharaohs i was suddenly reminded of the stories of incest and marriages between brother and sister which were common in ancient Egypt among the ruling class you see that is a statement that's made a lot right there a lot of people make that statement and that's just like generally accepted that's like a generally accepted statement um, that's made more recently the topic was brought up again by another visitor I was told about Ankin Aten's androgynous appearance that could have been a result of the incestuous practices of the time. This practice, and I think uh, American Dream even, even mentioned Ankin uh, uh a little while ago. This practice seemed to be a common thing, and these stories made me, made me immediately think of Greek and Roman gods and their intricate family love relationships. With this thought came, came then one question. Why would pharaohs marry their sister, mother, and other relatives? To act as living gods? To preserve the purity of their blood? Which is it? All right, so let's see what's going on here. Many, others, many other questions followed. If incest was accepted in ancient Egypt among the ruling class, was it tolerated by the whole population? What makes it unacceptable in Western culture? countries today health morality are marriages among siblings and or first cousins still allowed nowadays in some countries and what are actually the risk of incestuous relations from ancient egypt to habsburg family in europe throughout history cases of consang consanguinity excuse me mainly among members of the ruling class are numerous it is surprising that the practice continued for as long as it has when religious and civil laws started to forbid it and when the risk associated to this practice started to be known. From the 5th century BCE, Roman civil law already forbade couples from marrying if they were within four degrees of consanguinity. And I guess there's a citation there. Uh, from, the, from the half of the 9th century CE, the church even raised this limit to the 7th degree of consanguinity. And the method of calculating degrees was also changed. More recently, modern philosophers and thinkers argued that the prohibition against incest was a universal phenomenon, the so-called incest taboo. But, these, but this theory seems contestable in the view of the Egyptian case. So why is it that incest was accepted and practiced in ancient Egypt and more recently among members of the royal family such as the Habsburg, which is 16th, 18th century, and how did science shed the lights on family relationships in such as practices and the disease resulting from them? Let's first take a look at the case of the 18th dynasty, the first dynasty of the new kingdom of ancient Egypt. Incest in ancient Egypt, the case of the 18th dynasty. There's an abundance, she says, or he says, of evidence Showing that, showing that marriages and sexual relations between members of the nuclear family, that is, parents and children, were common among royalty or special classes of priests, 
since they were the representatives of divine on earth. See, this is a statement that a lot of people uh, parrot and it's just generally said. Okay. People have this in their mind. They were often privileged to do what was forbidden to members of the ordinary family. During the Ptolemaic period, the practice was even used by King Ptolemy II as a major theme of propaganda, stressing, stressing the nature of the couple, which could not be bound by ordinary rules of humanity. But let's go back to the 18th dynasty. In 2010, a team of Egyptian and German researchers analyzed 11 mummies dated, dated from the 18th dynasty, which were closely related to Tutankhamun. The mummies were scanned and DNA extraction on bone tissues was carried out. The information they could get from these analyses enabled them to identify the mummies, determine the exact relationships between members of the royal family, and to speculate on possible illnesses and causes of death. The results of the DNA analysis showed that Tutankhamun was, beyond doubt, the child born from a first-degree brother-sister relationship between Akhenaten and Akhenaten's sister. See figure 3. Moreover, the authors provided an answer to the androgynous appearance of Akhenaten. They actually showed that the feminized appearance exhibited by the art of the pharaoh Akhenaten was not related to some form of gynecomastia or Marfan syndrome as suggested in the past. Neither Akhenaten nor Tutankhamun were likely to have displayed a significantly bizarre or feminine physique. The particular artistic representation of persons in the Amarna period is more probable, probably related to the religious reforms of Akhenaten. However, the ancestral relationship between Akhenaten and his sister may have had other consequences. Pharaoh Tutankhamun suffered from congenial equinovarous deformity. Let's read that again. Congenital equinovarous deformity, also called clubfoot. The tomography scans of Tutankhamun's mummy also revealed that the pharaoh had a bone necrosis for quite a long time, which may have caused a walking disability. This was supported by the objects found next to his mummy. Did you know that 130 sticks and sta stabs were found in his tomb? Just like walking canes. Here's the genealogical chart proposed by the 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 um, the results of whatever they're reporting on the, on the DNA analysis. Now, this DNA analysis that they're talking about has further it's been further debated and disputed. So I just want to put that out there for everybody. But I'm saying I'm showing all of this and going through this, and I'm going to stop in a, in a minute to show that incest, the question of incest, whether it existed or not, the brother and sister thing is written and it's out there. You can find some titles. Matter of fact, I'm going to look in my collection and I'm going to put you all into some some um, books that dive deeper into that. So I'm, I'm sorry, Wujawu. Can you hear me? Okay, yep. Go for it. Yep. Oh, man. I just, I've been out for like seven minutes. I, I couldn't hear nothing. So I okay. only heard like the very end of what they're saying here. So, so there was incest in Egypt. So they did practice incest. <laughs> yeah, you came, you came in. Right. You came, no, I just, want, I just wanted to be clear on that because it sounds as if you were kind of trying to say that there may not have been. Um, so I just wanted to be, to just be clear on that. But, but let me ask you this question, um, if I can. Um, All right. The relationship, um, actually, because, you know, it sounds as if the nation that they use Right, because you know you key you you mentioned that you know um, the gods also were um, were in um, these incestuous relationships as well, um, you know. But if 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 we're being realistic, we know that it's it's human beings that wrote these stories about the gods, and the, and it's these human beings that that did that. And and I think it's the same way that as as I mentioned about. Um, you know, transgenderism being being prevalent in certain African cultures and and being justified by by you know the the spirit world, or you know, it's the same way people justify whatever they're doing through their spirituality or through the spirit world by saying you know this happens with God as well. So, 
just to make it acceptable here. Um, so I don't necessarily, I don't think the fact that the gods were, were incestuous or if there's an idea that the gods were incestuous, that that somehow, you know, makes it okay for the pharaohs to do it. Because I think the pharaohs and the priests wrote those stories to justify their perversions, if you will. Well, I mean, that's, that's I mean, you know, I understand that to be your, your belief, but I don't think you have any basis for that. You just made that up. But uh, Right. But, I, I'm, I am just making, but it's, it's the only thing that, that makes sense to me because I think the trend, Transgenderism that went on in these African cultures, I think they justified it by saying, by using the idea of the spirit world. And these people that are transgenders, there's nothing wrong with us. We're just, our bodies are just taken over by a spirit. And, you know, and you have to honor that. Um, so I don't necessarily think, you know, it doesn't surprise me that the Egyptian gods were behaving the way that the Egyptian pharaohs were behaving. It just doesn't surprise me. I think it, they meant to do it that way. Um, well, but hold up, but wait, 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 I don't, we can't, we can't just gloss it that, that fast. Let's just think about it for a second. I want to take a pause on that, on that point right there. If you're, if you're explaining how existence unfolds and, and you're explaining it in such a way where you have a starting point as a singularity, as a singular, how do you go from a single, a single or unity to a multiplicity? without without the default need the inherent need to have some kind of either masturbation auto auto uh, reproduction or incest going on how do you avoid that there's no way you know with the, the bible stories well, with the, the bible story for example that. well the, you could the bible could have easily avoided it by just saying god created everybody he didn't just create adam and then took Eve and then had them have, like, you could just change the story and say, God created a whole bunch of people. Right. Yep, and so yep, that would, yep, and then, yep, you know, and yep, that would just yep. eliminate it. So it's just very easy to come up with a story to eliminate the incest part. But for whatever reason, yep. these people that were writing these stories wanted it to be. Incestuous. No, 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 I don't no, know no, if they no. knew See, if they didn't know better or I, I don't okay. know. Okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I was, I was with you till you said your last statement. You're absolutely right. <laughs> Uh, you're, no, no, listen, you're absolutely right when it comes to the Abrahamic beliefs because their God is separated from creation. So it would make sense and, and would be easy for God to, to create multiple firsts, like multiple atoms and multiple Eves, and then let them, let them, you know, get busy and reproduce and be fruitful and, and multiply after their own kind and, you know, how the Bible words it. You're right. But when it comes to most of the African conceptualizations of of how existence comes about, they don't separate the 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 quote unquote God from creation. Creation comes out and is part and parcel of God itself. So you can't do that in 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 that paradigm. So we're so we're talking about two different paradigms here. So in the paradigm where God uh multiplies and become the things in and the world itself you can't do that so it's it's inherent in that model or in that paradigm where you have to have um either um self-pregnancy masturbation and incest involved in any kind of uh, story trying to explain it period so for example in egypt they don't separate the creation or the creator from creation at all creation is well, part you know, of, of the creator right so, so like what you just mentioned about um um like where where he reproduces out of himself right where the god um um however they explain it where it's just him where it's some type of masturbation if you will um yep. that's not incest no I, I i never said that that was incest what i did say what i did say was that you cannot explain the unfolding of existence in that parad paradigmatic model without using some form of auto fellatio masturbation and or incest 
I did not subscribe right, to masturbation. Right, but it incest. doesn't have to be. But I'm just talking about whether incest has to be there. And according to what you're saying now, it doesn't. Because what you're saying, that's not incest. The piece that you're talking about yeah, has I, nothing I, I, to I do never... with incest. So they could have done without the incest stuff. I think they just chose to put it in there. No, no, I, 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 I did. But see, I'm saying you're, you're going beyond what I'm saying. Like you're adding to it. I, I never said masturbation is incest. What I said was, okay, in the case of, of Egypt, let's get out of the hypotheticals. Let's deal with the actual story as the Egyptians tell it. So you have this deity um, that's speaking, Nebuchadnezzar or Atum or Ra, depending on which text you, you use. This particular deity uh, sneezes and coughs. Two, two, two entities from itself to make a second and a third. And then that's it. Then those two, those two have another set, another two. Now, how can those two have have another set if it not worth were for what we call incest, what we define as incest? Well, the original person who created those two, he could have created ten, or he could have created a hundred, <laughs> and say have but at they, it. But they, but they, but they, but. But they they will still be siblings though. God dang, can't you? No, understand? they're all created. No, how are they siblings? Siblings mean they have the same mother and father. This is some this of these these are people. If he created fifty Adams and fifty Eves, they're not brothers and sisters. All, all fit. Well, how not? Wait, 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 wait. How? We gotta go back to so. Wait, we gotta how go back to some basics. Wait, wait, wait a Hold minute. On. We gotta if go back God to some If God creates basics. fifty Adams. <laughs> From the earth, and wait, 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 hold on, slow down. Wait, from slow the down. earth. Slow, slow down, slow down, slow down. How were they brother because, and sister? Wait, 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 slow down, slow down, slow down. Because I'm not gonna let you slip like that. So hold up, hold up, hold up. You, I was talking about Egypt, and you jumped right back to the Abrahamic, uh, which is a different paradigm. As I explicitly explained, I said the difference between the Abrahamic system and the many of them on the continent is that on the continent they do not separate the creator from creation the creation is part and parcel of the creator it's an unfolding and when i said that to make your point you totally jumped not even moved the goalpost you went to a whole nother football arena and went right back to the abrahamic um uh story so 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 choose your story and then we could we could continue the conversation i'm i'm talking about egypt and you're talking about the Bible at this point. So what I what I want what I want you to understand is that is that in the Bible, God creates. So I'm using the Bible because you went back to the Bible, and and it seems like you're you're you feel safer there. So in the Bible, God creates man from dirt. So so you don't see you don't see Adam as being like a familial relationship with god it's a it's a adam is a creation and and not and not and not a produce of god so to speak or from god so 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 there's no like connection outside of god just his creative act of of, of putting dust together and creating man and man magically just comes to life okay but in egypt there's a familial characteristic to to these stories which is totally different so now if god of the bible created 50 atoms you you yourself said that those 50 atoms are not brothers i said they're not brothers i know that's what i just said you said those right, 50 atoms brothers. are are not brothers okay then who all right let me let me ask you this right now and this is a serious question for for, forget the 50 atoms because that's not that's not in the story let's deal with the, what the story says who's adam's father who's Ad yes who's adam's father up oh, you're breaking up you break you're breaking up man you must be in a bad spot you must be driving in the mountains somewhere are you retra you must be retracing oh we got robert Rand in the building i'm sorry robert Rand is in the building let me take this off the screen so everybody can see 
Uh, is that you, Robert? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you yeah. sound, but you, but you sound low. You sound low. I can hear you, but you sound low. Yes, that's these headphones. Man. I gotta switch my headphones. Okay. But that, but that's my American Dream. If you're still there, I'm asking you my my question to American Dream, and this is for people who may just may just tuned in or the, or the chat. Make sure the chat is stand stand with me here. Who is Adam's father? Because American Dream. All right, I think he's back now. So American Dream, my can question to yeah, yeah, I can hear you now. My question, my question to you is, who is Adam's father? Uh, he's my father. Wait, he doesn't have a what father? An earthly father. Okay, now, now, what you to notice that, that you had to put? Okay, but wait, wait. So okay, so. So let you. me ask you this. So are you wait, saying, wait, hold, wait, hold, wait, hold wait, on, hold on. Wait, 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 I asked you who is Adam's father, and I just want you to notice that you that you qualified father by putting the word fatherly in front of it. You said that he's not Adam's fatherly father. Uh, I mean, I'm I sorry, earthly. earthly, earthly, yeah, right, earthly. Sorry, sorry, earthly. You sure. said you said you said Adam does not have an earthly father, but I, but right. my point is, I want I want you to take note that you had to qualify father by putting earthly in front of it. But I have so, to do that so, in order. So, I have to do that for this to make sense. Okay, now I want you to understand what you just said. You said you have to do it in order for it to make sense, <laughs> man. Correct. But I'm telling you, you you are making this easy. But go ahead. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. All right, go ahead. So let me tell you why why I, I would wanna, say that to make it wanna, make sense. Well, let me. I don't want. Let me. Wanna, let me try. I don't want to. I'm not trying to abuse abuse it. But go ahead. Go ahead. I'm, I'm gonna let you. Go ahead. Right. So let me. Let me and explain to you what I man you need to pull over or something I don't know how how far are you from your destination or you drive trucks or something are you are you on a are you on a trip are you on a are you on a run on a truck run I mean by that's the only way it could make sense because it sounds as if wait 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 American Dream this is not fair to me or the, or the listeners because you, you're breaking up real bad so I don't, I don't how, how far are you from your destination? Bro, I don't know what to tell you. I'm at no, my I'm destination. Not, yeah, I don't know. I don't understand. I'm like, at yeah, my destination. Okay, yeah. Uh, I'm right, in here, okay. yeah. I'm all at right, my go destination. Ahead, go ahead. Get, all right, go ahead. Where, wherever you're standing now, I can you. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. You got it, if you can hear me. Right. All right. So you so just tell me oh, man. if I start breaking up. Um, yeah, you, sure. You, so it, it can only make like sense, right? Because it sounds as if it, it sounds as if what you're. Am I still breaking up? Now go ahead. Go for it. Go for it. Go for it. I can, I, can, I, can, I, can, I can hear you. You breaking up a little bit. You choppy. You chopping up a little bit. I don't know if if you got like, you you probably got a real big house. You probably got like six floors, and you in the basement or something. I don't know. Uh not that big. <laughs> uh, um, but go, but wherever go, go near your Wi-Fi signal. Go, go near the source of your Wi-Fi. Right, let me try. <laughs> so, <laughs> go, let me try. go, go in its fifteenth no, bedroom. In, it, it, you know, in the problem in the, is in that I'm going to have to reset it. I may have to reset it. Maybe maybe you um on the hotspot instead of your Wi Fi or something. I don't know because you you definitely um breaking up. And I want this uh, we gotta be fair to to everybody trying to listen. Cause this this is a good conversation. I'm 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 trying to um I'm trying to I'm trying to see where we're going. So American Dream, why you do that, pop out and pop back in. So so listen, you all in the chat. Uh again, peace to the chat.
appreciate y'all tuning in. This is your brother Wujau. Been on for three hours. I'm just hanging. My intention today was to really just field questions about the language and to promote the um, expose everybody to the fact that you can learn the language. It's not difficult. It's different, but it's not difficult. We got groups forming all this month, all next month. You can join anytime. Get in where you fit in anytime. We got you covered. All right, period. We're very thorough. You will learn, you know, very systematic way you will learn. Not some willy-nilly random hodgepodge uh, piecemeal of showing you this, showing you that. No, this is this is a, a serious curriculum where you're going to learn um, procedurally things about the language. We section it between, you know, beginner's level and then we have more advanced level. So, okay, so while, while we're waiting for American Dream to come back in here, though, um, I'm just going to make my points or reiterate my points. So here's the thing. Um, when it comes to, because uh, we were talking about incest. I don't, I don't know how we got on that, that issue, but incest, um, relations between nuclear families, right? According to the Bible, according to the Bible, um, incest is not, mentioned and people don't don't discuss it but it is assumed clearly because God only creates or fathers Adam and Eve now people may have a problem with the word father but Adam is called the son of God and so what the, what people would do is ex say well God is not Adam's earthly father but you know he's he's the um Adam's father, you know, Adam is the son of God, you know, just like Jesus, son of God and son of man. But anyway, so Adam and Eve, you got two people, right? Adam and Eve have two sons, Cain and Abel. Cain kills Abel. But then humanity goes on. There had to be some incest going on. Did Eve have another daughter? If so, somebody please point to me in the Bible where Eve had a daughter. Can anybody in the chat point to me where Eve had a daughter? I could have missed it. But to my knowledge, she didn't. But I could have missed it, though. And Cain kills Abel. But then all of a sudden Cain gets cast out and goes to this this mysterious place called Nod or Nud. And he finds a wife over there. That's weird because the Bible don't explain that. Now, you may have extra biblical, extra biblical text that may talk about this, that and the third. But that's it's not in the Bible. It's not in the Bible. But anyway, the point is, is that if Adam and Eve are the first couple, Adam and Eve has two sons, one son kills the other son, but then humanity go, generations continue, then Cain had to get busy with Eve. And if it wasn't Eve, which would be his mother, he had to get busy with his sister. Let's just say for the sake of argument, Eve did have a daughter. Cain would be her sister. I mean, her brother. That's all. I mean, that's, I mean, so that's all there is to it. You can't get around these stories. All right. Here go American Dream coming back. Let's see. Let's see if, let's see if we can get, we can hear you clear. Go for it. Yes, sir. How am I sounding? Oh, you're loud and clear now. So I don't know what you did, but you must have upgraded. Um, so um, the last thing I think we were talking about was um, why other? Um, because I think what you were trying to, you can be saying was that the answer you were looking for is that God, God is Adam's father. God is Adam's father. He would also be the father of the other 49 Adam, the Adam's brothers. Yeah. Right? 
Um, yeah. Right. And so the reason it makes sense to me is that if that's true, if 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 all the atoms are broken, um, then all of the lions would also be our brothers, the and sisters with all animals and everything that God created. So that's why I said talking about earthly father, because when you bring in the idea of God being the father, then any sense because then you're going to be brothers and sisters with everything. And that just kind of trying to make sense of it. Um, so I would say um, Adam's father. Okay, who was who was Cain's father? You there? Yes, Adam was Cain's father. Okay. If I'm uh, yeah, Cain Cain had children, right? Yes. All right. Who do you have children with? Um, the story says he went somewhere and and found and and I'm not sure. Who doesn't specify? Yeah, it it, it doesn't. Now let Correct. me ask you this. Okay, let me ask you this. Who who is uh, Eve's father? Eve's father? Yeah. Um, I would say Eve does not have an earthly father either. She came from you know, Adam's being rib, taken though, right? From someone's rib. Yeah, but that, that's not what makes like father is like when you pr reproduce from you know the way we reproduce. And either Eve, Eve was not Adam's. Eve is not Adam's child. So no. Okay, so so all right, let's let's all right, let's 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 pause on that on that note right there. The 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 point of reproduction, now we 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 call reproduction the sex, you know, the sex act that's involved in reproduction, but biologically all reproduction is is the is the proliferation of of certain cells, the gametes and and stuff like that joining together and starting the chain reaction, right? So if Eve if Eve is a product of Adam's rib, don't you think biologically she has the genetic the genetic material of Adam? On a, on a biological level, that it, it doesn't she have um isn't she a reproduction of Adam? Um a reproduction of yeah, sure. Okay, so if but Eve not, is not knocking a, boots, father, if Eve is knocking boots, the same thing to their father. Like, okay, that's not okay, the so same, let's scratch the word. Not the father we're talking about. Okay, so let's scratch the word father because I don't want to get caught up on word on the words, but let's talk about Eve knocking boots with with her genet her genetic equivalent. Would you describe that as incest? Um, no. Okay, so now I got your definitions. So you don't see that as incest, but only if we introduce the terms mother and father in there does does incest make sense to you? Yeah. So I mean, so 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 for so so a brother and a so sister. for you is not a bi so incest for you is not a biological a it's not a biological thing. Say right. That. No, I said so for you, incest is not really a, a a matter of biology. It's it's just a matter of, of what we call things. It's a matter of who you're having sex with. If you yeah. have a brother or sister, that's incest. None of yes. what you've explained Eve, Eve, is not his body. Eve had sex with sister. wait, Eve had sex with Eve had sex with Adam, right? Her brother. He came in unto her. He came in unto her, though, right? But it's not her brother. Wait, wait. You said you said that. Okay. Do they do they have the same non earthly father? Sure. Yeah. Okay. So they have the same. But that's father. not what makes us brothers and. That's what made us brothers and sisters. <laughs> You'd be a brother with a giraffe. A giraffe would. 
No, but a giraffe didn't come out of didn't come out of Adam's rib though. Eve came out of I Adam's get rib. That, but you're talking about their heavenly father. They have the same heavenly thing about. Okay, I got you. I got you. But I'm I'm still on the rib, right? Inside Would the rib. Do you have children? Would yes, do you have children? I got three. Yes. Yep. How many of them? How many of them were? You broke up. I'm gonna, I mean, I'm gonna what? go out on a limb and say none of them. No, no, no. That's I, not I, what I, makes I someone your you. child. No, I just couldn't hear you. Just I, repeat what you I said. I said, how many from your rib? Oh, none of my children were taken came out of rib. your rib. How none of them. Children are made. So, so none, since none, that's none, how of, Eve none came, of my children came so out of Adam, my ribs. Right. And none of Adam's kids came, came out of his ribs either. <laughs> All of Adam's kids came. He wait, wait, wait. With Eve. wait, 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 I can't let you get away with that. <laughs> you, you asked me if I have children. The answer was yes. You said, did any of them come from my rib? The answer is no. Then you go and say exactly like, how can you use that to make any point? Because Adam, Adams did have a person being produced from his rib. So, so you can't compare me in, in any ana analogous form, form to Adam. Adam actually did have somebody taken from his rib to, to create a, another full-size human being. Adam also had children the way you have children. No, Adam did not have Eve yes, he through did. sex. No, he, he, he did not have Eve through sex. I'm talking Adam about his did, other children. I said, did he have sex? No, 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 no. I'm, I'm still on Adam and Eve. I'm saying Adam, Adam did not reproduce. I guess Eve I'm sex. still on Adam and Eve as well. All I'm trying to show you is that in the same way you have children, right? So, so now when Adam Wait, does you're kind of breaking why up. Why are you saying that he's okay, also having a child? No, Adam. I'm saying was, Adam had children, right? When the Bible no 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 it says it's no 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 i already told you that we can do away with the terminologies of father and child and stuff like that i went straight to biology i said and i asked you specifically is not eve produced from adam's rib would she therefore not have Adam's genetic material in her to produce her? Forget the label. Yes or no. Does Eve have Adam's genetic material in her that makes her who she is? Yes or no? Yes. Okay. So irregardless of us calling her a child or a side piece or a mother and all the other kind of stuff we we agree that eve is a product of adam's biology eve okay. is a product of adam's biology now let's reintroduce the terms a child is a product of two people's biology regardless if we say c-h-i-l-d that's in english we got other languages around the world who don't even use that form, the word child, but they're describing a biological unity. It, we're talking you biology. You make a child? We're, make we're, a child we're, we're, we're talking of biology. I'm sorry, a say it again. Is not the product of two people, not the product of two people's biology. A child is the product of two people having sex. Man, did you go like did you did you did did you ever take biology? <laughs> I mean, how can you not know that that the that a a new human is formed by the by the 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 connection between two cells, the sperm cell and the ovum? How can you not know that? Okay, so how do you define how do you, how do you define the word brother? How do you define those words? Like, what 
does it mean to be someone's okay, brother? Okay, so what is the so again? And what does it mean to I'm be saying. someone's you're, you're, child? You're, like, wh what do those words mean, mean to you? If you, you could go one at a time, what does it mean, mean to be someone's brother? Because to me, it means you share, right? What does it mean to be, be a sister? Same thing. You have the same mother and father. Okay, so let me ask. All right, so let me. You're a product right, so, of a mother and a father having sex and the woman given birth. That's what it means to be someone's okay. child okay so right okay so let me ask like the, I, right, let me ask you a question god creating a human out of that, that <laughs> rib that's not the definition of his child the bible okay, doesn't, I got you. doesn't even say I got it's you. his child i got the bible you I... and explains that cain and abel are his children because yeah. the two of children are produced yep so for you okay so let me that, ask you Going into the rich children is weird. No, I see. I never said that that Eve was Adam's child. You could rewind this. I never said that, and that's what I'm saying. It's like it's like when you're thinking, you're 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 hearing you're hearing a little different than what I'm actually saying. And I and I and you know I hope you eventually can kind of control that a bit. But here's the thing. So hold on. So is she reproduction sister then? Wait, 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 wait. I want to answer your first her. question. Wait, wait, wait. I want to answer on. your other questions about, about brothers and sisters because you, you, you asked me a few questions that I do want to answer. Answer this um, one first. You said Eve is not Adam's oh, boy. child. Now I'm asking you, is she his sister? I'm about, to, I'm about to answer it. So when we say mother, father, son, and daughter, those words are used to establish relationships between two or more people. And so a father and son relationship is generational. So one descends from, from the other. It's, these, are, these are words that are used to describe a biological reality. So a son descends from um, well, a child period, so forget the gender, a child period descends from two other people. And if those same two people produce more than one child, then the relationship between those, those several children that are, that are produced by the same other two, the same two people are referred to as siblings. So the word siblings simply describes a biological relationship now if if the if we introduce gender into the conversation then we have more terms that we can use it could be a brother sister relationship or a brother brother relationship or a sister sister relationship all these words are doing are are ways in which we can describe biological realities and so when somebody who is a child of somebody non-biologically, we have terms for that as well. We'll say non-biological son, or we may say adopted son, or foster son, or foster child, adopted child, non-biological child. We, we have words, all these different words, all they're doing is describing biological realities. That's it. So... Back to Adam and Eve. Eve is a biological product of Adam. So although we do not call her Adam's child or Adam's sister and stuff like that, the biological reality still exists regardless of what we choose to call it. You can't get around that. Eve is a product of Adam's biology. You're not going to get around that. If she weren't, God would would have just made her from the dirt too. But He didn't, so I don't. No, I don't want to get into the hypotheticals. I don't want to get into hypotheticals. Hold on. Eve was created. Eve Adam was created from his rib. Adam, I know, and because of that, you're saying that he's the she's the same thing. So he's. Her father, or they're by, they're, they're, no, no, they're, no, 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 they're biological, they're biologically, uh, they're, 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 they're biologically related 
very closely as what we would call nuclear. There's a nuclear biological relationship there. But they're not brother and sister. We don't call them that. Okay, so it's not incest. That's what we call it. I don't even know how we got here, Wujaw. Because of I think you. The only reason we would have gotten here was of you because for some reason it seems as if you're trying to justify either no. you're, you're either trying to deny that incest happened in Egypt or you, you try to justify it. Like and it's and that too, with, with me is also weird. No, right? And then no, when you no, when listen, you den listen, I'm deny not. denying it, but but you're either <laughs> denying that it happened or you're trying to justify that it happened. All right, I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna let you get it out because this is easy. To, this is easy. I, I I don't know if it's because of your connection. You were in and out, because maybe in your mind you're piecemealing what I'm saying. But 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 how we got here is because of of your of what you you you've been bringing this up. Incest was not a topic that Wujao brought up or was bringing up. Trust me on that. Okay, so I don't, I don't know why you're puzzled on how we got no, here. I'm talking about Adam and Eve. I'm talking about Adam and Eve. One, whether well, Adam you keep you you brought up you brought up like, you, you brought up you, the Bible. No, wait, 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 wait. You brought up the Bible. I was talking about Atum and and Shu and Tefnut and stuff, and you went back to the Bible. So so I'm like, all right, you're comfortable there. I'm gonna stick to the Bible. Then. That's fine. That's why we. That's why we on the Bible. Were, okay. When when you say like what is because we're talking about incest and now you're trying, trying to make the point that actually the same like what does that have to do with the conversation are you saying that incest okay all right so let's like, do I don't, this i'm trying to figure out why even why you're even going down the road of of having these are biologically related like what's the point like i don't, are you trying to justify I don't, I don't i don't understand what the point is and that's what i meant but i don't i don't understand then why we're here talking about Adam is Eve's daughter or sister or, or I don't I don't <laughs> understand why we're here. What, do, what Okay, all right, all right, all right, all right. Let's let's do this. Because like, what does it have I have to do with incest. Okay, all right. So let's all right, let's do this then. So I'm gonna do this so that we so that we're very clear. Because whenever whenever there's a bump in the road, I like to solve it. So we're going to pull up a a just a standard surface dictionary definition of incest. We're going to start here. I don't suggest we finish here, but we're going to start here. OK, so I'm not sure if you can see my screen on the screen. It says incest is defined in the first sense as a sexual as sexual intercourse between closely related persons. So based sexual on that first intercourse. sense. Right, right, right. Sexual so, so based on that, intercourse. yeah, you Come want me out. to highlight it because you, you, because you, because you, 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 you said it, you said it twice. Let me, let me highlight it because you, you said it three or four times. So I'm gonna highlight it for you to reflect you repeating it three or four times. Okay. So now that we, now that we gotta highlight it, and I, I'll say it with you too. Sexual intercourse. So now, based on that first sense of the definition of incest, my question to you is. Adam and Eve, two closely related people. Yes or no? <laughs> like you see, when you say close, closely related, wait, wait, right? hold wait. up, hold up. This is too. What do you is, mean right, closely related? Do you go mean ahead. do they have, have? Are they like cousins? Do <laughs> now, or like no? Now we don't no. know what don't closely know what related you mean is. Mean by closely God, related. Dang. Like in your head, you have. <laughs> some type of biological they they have the same biology <laughs> right but when oh, we're saying your mother parents, your mother and father are cousins with these people like it's a mother and fathership that we're talking about like, you know uh, well, what do you mean when you say are they closely related when you say you're related to person a and person b what do you normally mean related to them I mean that they're related to my mother is related to some there's some type of relation going on thing relationship with people 
it's through sex. Like, it's, okay. All when right. we talk about yeah. relationships, okay. we're talking about sex related to that person. It's all about. Okay, so. Okay, let me let me let me let me ask you. Intercourse. Okay, that 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 didn't go very well. So let me ask you a different way. Like, uh, just for to, example, just to, wait, 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 like wait, for wait, example, wait, wait, no, 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 no. Let me just ask you this question. I, like, I think, if, I, think if, we, I think we get, I, was, I think we get somewhere. I think point. we get somewhere. Please okay. say this, Wujawu. If my, right, I have ahead. brothers. I have bro brothers, right? Are they full, are they full brothers, half brothers, adopted brothers? Full, full brothers. All of them are full brothers. <laughs> Okay, go ahead. Right? All right, go ahead. Go ahead. Say, full brothers. All right. If one of All right. them comes to me and says, I went to the lab and took some of my chromosomes and created mm -hmm. a child, you have right. a new brother. Right. <laughs> I have a brother. What would you say? Brother, dude. I'd be what would you say? Like, yo, what is that? That's not my brother. What is that? Okay. All right. So now I'd be you're like, yo, you're, what is you're giving... that's a freak of nature. Okay. Right. 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 I got you're you. Not I got you. So, so you... Me. he will not convince me that that's my brother. Convince you. Okay. But okay. I got you. It's not going to convince you. me. Okay. I got you. All right. I got you. So, so, so now, now you have, you have, you have drew, drew, drew a line in the sand of, of your definition of these biological relationships and i get it and that makes sense because that's why you've been saying what you what you've been saying all along so according to you um your brother cloning himself in a laboratory producing another sibling of yours you wouldn't accept that as your sibling you said that's a freak of nature and i ain't with it and get that out my face basically and i get it i understand that so because you have that sentiment and you have that, you know, that you have that thought process, you're finding it difficult in what I'm saying. And I get it. So 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 in your example, I'm like your brother where where I'm trying to tell you that, hey, I produced another brother. Here he is. And you're telling your brother, no, that's a freak of nature. So you're doing that to me right now. So so now let's 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 back up. Let's let's back up. I, I, I had asked you. um. I had asked you, was Adam and Eve, you never, you, and you never answered. I asked you, was Adam and Eve closely related? And then you said, what do I mean by closely related? Or something like that, right? Ujau. You said, wait, wait, I, 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 just want you, I just want you to at least understand that you did not answer my question. I, I asked you, is Adam and Eve closely related? Are they, too, are they closely related to each other? Ujau, is, is the point you're trying to make here that adam and eve was, was i ain't making no point saying? nope so I'm i don't not, that's nope, why I don't, and i don't know why we're talking about, about this and that's why i'm getting well, saying because the only well, thing what you what you can know why you know what you what you can know is if you're saying that you, it's an incestuous and even and if that what is what you you're, can you're know saying, is, like, is so the what? fact like, that i asked the question what does that have to do with what i'm talking about okay again i know i'm saying what you can know and should know is that i just simply asked the question don't try but to I'm go in the future, Crystal Ball. Up, but we're going, and I'm like, where are we going? <laughs> like, but, I feel as but, if you're, you're from a, another no, conversation. But, no, but why? Why do you have a need for a crystal ball? I'm, 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 I'm here with you in real time. I'm just asking you: Is do you is Adam and Eve closely related? Are they closely related? I just want to know that first. You mean my brother are closely related? No. You mean like me and my cousins are close, closely related? This is a whole other thing you're talking about. This would be like Wait, me can you see closely the related to that thing. My... Wait, can you can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, it says it says incest as defined by by um sense number one, sexual intercourse between closely related persons. And 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 I and I'm and I'm saying in light of that definition number that. one or sense number one I'm, I'm asking you do you consider adam and eve to be closely related people no it's either you know yes or no okay Absolutely. no okay good that's okay. not what that definition meant by closely related when that definition by close relatively sure these people were not talking about a man and a woman made from his rib talking 
about closely related as as in mother, father, uncle, auntie, like. Well, like you're reading. Well, I don't see. I mean, you're 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 reading. I. Hey, all I see is one, two, three, four, four, four five, what? six words on the screen. I see six words in this first in this first thing. You, 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 you added a whole bunch of you added a whole bunch of stuff in there. Okay, so 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 no, but you answered my question and I appreciate it. You said no. Again, my question So wait, you're saying it is my, incest. No. My question to you was do you consider Adam and Eve to be closely related? You said no. So so wait, let's walk. I'm 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 walking with you. I'm trying to understand okay. you, American dream. So so you know, I got you the answer. Don't understand me Adam yet? and Eve. Wait, wait. It's, it's very simple. There was incest oh, in Egypt. What's not to understand? I don't understand why <laughs> would you, that's the only thing I'm saying. I already I already what, said that like about understand? an hour ago. I already said understand? that about an hour ago. So what don't listen? Don't you want to understand about that, what I said? What I don't understand about what you said was I don't understand how in the hottest of hells you can't see that Adam and Eve are very very close related because Eve came from Adam's rib. <laughs> how can you not see that? <laughs> okay, Wujawu. I tell you what. <laughs> I see it. I see it. Now what? She didn't come from the dust of the ground. Adam she came and from Adam's Eve are rib. Close. Adam did. Now what? So what? What's the point? Okay. Okay. So, at, but I don't. But I don't want you. But I don't want you to. No. 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 I don't want you to to do the um agree to disagree thing. I want real answers from you. So so but, I, so so bro, I think your I think bro, your first yeah, answer was the yeah, real. You one. said you wanted me to walk with you, so I'm walking. No 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 no. I'm walking with you. No 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 no. I'm walking, you, no, 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 no. I'm walking with you. And you made fun of that answer. I'm, so now I'm giving you the answer that you think is the. So I'm giving you the answer. No you want. no don't do so that. Don't do that. Walking. No don't. They, they no, are don't do that. I really come on. No 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 no. See now 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 you're. No, now you're cap. What they call capping. Now, now you're, now you're just, now you're like, you just, you just. Bro, I think uh, you're just you wasting it? my time right now. I think you just. <laughs> oh my, I'm wasting your time. <laughs> I sound like For real, I'm, I'm, I'm wasting your time. You, family, Adam family. Let's be clear, family. Closely related. Let's be clear, what, family. What is the point? Let's be clear, family. Okay, so what's no, the no, point? No, 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 no. Jeez. Here's the thing. Wait, Bro. wait, wait. American dream. Maybe. <laughs> Wait, wait. You're Maybe killing you me. Just got in. No, no, no. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Maybe you just got in and you didn't eat dinner yet or something like that, man. But hold up. At least give me a little bit more of your time because this is kind of fun now. So hold up. So, my dude, I, so dude, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't, I've, I've hardly hugged my kids since I got home. Like I'm, I'm here. Like, <laughs> right. My, that's what I'm saying. Man, and I'm like, dude, that's get to I'm, it. Like, what's, what what's your point? Like, that's why I'm like, <laughs> and you like, no, no, no. Come okay. walk with me. I'm, like, dude, okay. I gotta check on Wait, my wait, wait, wait. American dream. dream. I tell you what. What, okay, what is listen. dream with you, Wujawi? Okay. Adam and Eve okay. Are American dream. Closely wait, 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 wait. Now wait, what? Wait, American dream. There's there, there's definitely a connection thing because we're kind of like talking over each other. So look, do this. I want you to settle into your house, <laughs> uh, uh, greet, greet your family, eat dinner, and then, tell me and what then your come back if I'm still. Point is, bro. Bro, no, 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 no. Just do me I'll, a favor and just tell I'll me what tell your you point then. is. Because otherwise, I'll tell I'm you leave. then point you were just saying adam and eve were incestuous so if I'll the tell, bible I'll tell can be incestuous then. so I'll tell you and it's then. like and that's all I'll in my, you my head that's the only thing you're saying man if you hear anything man, about so, the egyptians so incest, incest because there's incest in the bible that's what you're Re trying to act as if that's not, not what you're saying but that doesn't justify the even if that's true that went on in <laughs> egypt and it listen, sounds as if you just but hold up, but it's not to justify fair. it at this point. No, I'm not. If listen, that's not I fair, swear then tell to you, I'm not trying to justify is, anything. Other, otherwise, that's the, the only point. I tell me what the your only point. point is. Look, look, listen. Because you were in and out and you had bad connection, you didn't hear me almost an hour ago. I read. I even read where they're saying incest took place in Egypt. So I'm already past that. Now you may have missed that, but Point. I'm already past that. So, so we got on the um, Bible thing because you kept bringing it. I was giving you the example of text 
that talks about incest coming from the divine, which was talking about what the article was saying, that the royalty, um, the ancestral uh, claims or accusations on royalty was due to the, the divinity. And so I was talking about, uh, you know, the, the divine, the divinity and this, that and the third. And you brought up the Bible. So then we got into the Bible and I'm talking about God. Now what said, I well, know when you God, did you said that. you said well God you said well God is not really the father he's he's not the earthly father of anything because then then you know giraffes and hippopotamus would everybody be brothers and sisters I'm like okay cool I'm gonna let you have that so then I'm now I'm just on Adam and Eve I'm trying you to establish let me have it bro no I'm saying I I I I did not bring that back you let up. me take I, it I went away from that no yeah, you let I went let away me take it you gotta I went say away. right you let me take it you didn't let me okay, have it I let you take that. You okay, I let. Okay, I I word it the way you want me to word it. I let you take that. Uh, we like I would never call a, a hippopotamus. You want me to word it. No, I would never call a hippopotamus. Now I'm wording my something brother. the way you want me to word it. No, no, no. Listen to my point though. I, you're absolutely right. I would not call a draft my brother. So, so, so you're absolutely right. I concede. Let me put it that way. I concede that giraffes is not my brother. I, w I wouldn't. I wouldn't go walk around saying that a cat is not my brother or sister. And so, if God a made fifty is not my brother or atoms, and if God made <laughs> fifty atoms, then... right? No, but but see, you keep bringing that up. But I, I'm, hold on. That's if when I. God that's when I brought up Adam and Eve. Atoms. If God made fifty Adam, them brothers. Correct. <laughs> Listen, man. If God, man, if see God, what I'm saying? You if wait, God made fifty my, atoms, yo, you, man, you, that's an extra I can't, ten minutes. I can't took, my kids you is never going to get even, this time even back me, from you. you. You listen. You won't even let me talk. You won't even I'm let trying me. To tell me going you. is more, more important. Whatever you want to do on, on, my, on my children right now. Get through I it. I already with, said no. Listen, I already said go greet your family. Come back. Have right. dinner, come back. Right. Like, I'm gonna how did do you that? Yeah, greet your family, yeah, have dinner, man. Come back. That. If I'm if I'm still online, if I if I'm still online, you got front seat. You got you got carte blanche. You come back after you greet your family, eat your dinner, have your dessert, you know, maybe watch, you know, Game of Thrones or or or, or House of Dragons. And if I'm still on, come on back. All right, so that's Absolutely. a deal. So that's a bet. That's a bet. All right, appreciate it, man. Yeah, man. And, and that, let's continue. Let's continue. Let's continue uh, yeah, when you come back. Up. All right. Yeah. Hold yes, up. sir. All right. <laughs> so, <laughs> hey, everything is everything. You dag all right, man. Y'all, y'all don't come on the y'all don't come on the on the panel. So I'm gonna punish y'all with with conversations like that. <laughs> that was, oh boy, man, that was good though. That was good. That was good though. Oh man, he act like I held him hostage. Oh my goodness, boy, man, that's crazy though. So where were we? All right, so uh, let's rewind. So yes, you're tuned into the Seshu Mani Matter Natural YouTube channel. This is your brother Wujao Maneb Eri Maat. Welcome to W uh, KMT TV and Radio, coming at you live. So listen, um, I've been on for three hours and forty four minutes. At the most, I'm going to put another 15 minutes in. That's only if I can get some questions about the language now. So everybody take a breath. <clears throat> everybody take a deep breath. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. So does anybody have any questions uh, in the chat? Cause, because... I'm sure I missed some some comments in the chat and stuff, but it, it looked like y'all were talking about uh, <laughs> y'all were talking about um, um, what the brother was saying. See, See that, that could have been a that could have been a um, interesting interesting build though, for real. Because here's the thing, <clears throat> um, it's just a it's just a difference of views on on between him and many other people or specifically between tonight between me and him because all right let me put this definition back up here look this is basic this is very basic this is some surface first first uh first pass stuff 
the very basic definition of incest, the sense number one is sexual intercourse between closely related persons. Now, Adam and Eve are very, very closely related. They're extremely close related because Eve came from Adam's rib. Uh, Eve came from Adam's rib. So they're very closely related. Okay. Biologically. Sense number two has to do with crim crime, right? So I don't even have to go into that because incest is considered criminal where it is not permissible. So I'm, I, we don't really have to deal with number two. Okay? Because that deals with the legality of, of it, of number one. So number so sense number two deals with the legality of sense number one. So we can stick with sense number one. It is incest is considered the sexual intercourse between closely related persons. All right. So we got that going on. And let me take that off the screen. Hopefully everybody understands that. Now let's go to another surface. This is still surface. I'm not digging deep into, you know, um, beyond anything that somebody could pull up real quick in a microwave. This is all microwave stuff right here. So we have incest as a as a Wikipedia article. And let's just read a little bit of it. It says incest is a human sexual activity but family members or what close relatives so this wiki statement is basically saying the same thing as the definition i read a second ago just worded a little bit different it says let's read the next let's just read the whole first paragraph it says incest is a human sexual activity between family members or close relatives. This typically includes sexual activity between people in consangui sang sanguinity, which means blood relationships, consanguinity, goodness. This typically includes sexual activity between people in consangui sanguinity and sometimes those related by affinity adoption or lineage all right so now if this is going to be the definition that's going to govern the conversation then the conversation i was having with american dream would not prevail it, it, it can't happen because he does not define these things the same way so he's not going to allow this definition to govern the conversation all right because he gave the example of an abomin abomination if test tube baby and stuff like that and everything so he's looking at you know it non-biologically anyway so i'm gonna get off this but the entire point was, uh, I think, so for those who tuned in, how we got here is really kind of strange. But how we got here was, um, first we were talking about whether Egyptians were black or white. And he wanted a clarification on what I meant when I said that Sudan is the black land and whatnot, which is what I have on the screen here that hopefully y'all can still see right there. And that is according to the experts, because I'm sure you all know that there's people going around on the YouTube streets that like to quote experts and rely on experts. They can do nothing but appeal to authority because they haven't put in the work. They don't know how to put in the work and they don't read. So they have to rely on experts. So the point I made showing this is that according to the experts, Tanahesi, which is the ancient name for the region that we now call Sudan, according to the experts, they called it black land. You see the red arrow pointing to it. They called the people, the Nahisiu people, they called them blacks. You can see the red arrow pointing to it. 
So the experts say that the black land is Sudan. They say the black people are the Sudanese. That's what the experts say. These experts, everybody in the late 1800s and early 1900s, all of E.A. Wallace Budge contemporaries, Budge himself and Budge's contemporaries all agreed and said that the black folks y'all looking for are in Sudan. Those are the Sudanese people. That's according to them. That's simple. All right. Now, my stance is very clear. None of them are black. None of them are white. The modern social construct of race did not exist in the minds. It was never conceived in the minds of those people at all. Period. So throw it in the garbage. But if you're going to play the game, and that's my point. I actually said this the other day. If you're going to play the game, play it right. Or don't play it at all. And I gave the example. Like me as a grown adult, male human being right now, I don't play freeze tag. I don't play hide and go seek. I'm not a little kid. And I no longer play those games, right? But if I were to play those games, or if there are children who are going to play those games, they got to play by the rules. So if people are going to play the black white game, you got to play by the rules. If you're going to play appeal to authority game, or I'm only rolling with the experts, I'm going to rely on the experts game, then play by the rules. Rely on the experts then. Your experts say that Nahisi is black land and the Nahisi you are black people. Stop cherry picking. If you're going to play those games. Or grow up. And come on board and have these adult questions and do some actual work. That's my point. People playing games and playing playing with people's minds and, and everything like that. Striking up live streams and whatnot, playing around, playing games with people. And got and, and continue this conversation. Are the Egyptians Mediterranean culture? Are they are they uh are they a non Mediterranean culture? Mediterranean culture, are they black, are they white? Are they gay? Are they straight? All those are just games. This is just immature, petty little games people are playing. For likes and subscribers and attention on YouTube and stuff. And you know what the worst part is? Is every single time, and you've seen it here today. Uh, we saw it the other time when James came on the panel, and you know, other times that this happened, is that people who are not qualified, who do not have any, any, you know, who do not understand this particular subject, will go out there and teach. And they do have students, because y'all seen what happened today. You know, y'all remember what happened with James on the panel the, the last time. They do have students. So people are actually paying attention and taking notes over there. Then once they are confused, for some reason, then they remember that they need clarity. So they don't go back to where they were confused. They come over here for clarity. <laughs> so everybody else is making a mess over there and then wanting us to clean up over here. And, and, and that's, you know, that that's the whole point why we even, like, like even the whole point of having this show today, you know, we have classes literally. So before you even try to teach or argue or whatever, take some classes. You don't have to take classes with us. I mean, there's classes everywhere. You know, I know some people, you know, can't find themselves, you know, within themselves to actually learn from Ujau or whatever. So, so you know, they might want to take it somewhere else. But the point of the day is that you see what happens when somebody learns from um, somebody who's not well equipped to teach this particular subject they get confused american dream is was literally confused and the worst part is this is not even things that are written in a book they're actually youtube videos so youtube videos you can actually go back and play them at any time and, and he has that access to those videos that whatever Mujao said was there but he can't even um get to that and learn properly other people who are watching that will take those videos even the ones that we did uh, recently and completely like this is audio right Imagine it's audio, simple English, and somebody misunderstands and, and doesn't comprehend that. And these are people who are actually supposed to be reading books. So they, you know, they don't comprehend that. And then 
and then they confuse the hell out of people. So American Dream is completely confused right now. He does not, and 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 there's no way that he's gonna get unconfused over there. So we're trying our best. We can't we can't to, to unconfuse him. But this is the problem when people actually try to teach what they should not be teaching or what they do not understand. You'll confuse the hell out of a lot of people. All righty. So Black Egyptian says Chief X and Pseudo Killers had a field day of improv presentation. But here's the thing. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, people can cherry pick and have a field day. Hope I, I don't know how it went, you know, um, uh, one way or the other. The case is. But what I definitely do notice is that um, people will um, take. Like, for example, even with what um, American Dream, when American Dream first came on, I'm guessing he saw their present, their their live stream as well. So that's that's a result of why he came over and asked the question. He came, which tells me now I haven't seen their video. But to me, so far, it's clear that they cherry pick or make up something out of the video. And that's typical for people who are not known as readers, because People do that with the Bible where they where they take verses out of context and stuff like that. They cherry pick. We call it cherry picking, taking things out of context or whatever. These are people who are not very um, skillful readers and everything. Because if 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 people were to watch my video from that's entitled um, the land of the blacks, Egypt or Sudan, and even the one I, I did after that, it's very, very clear. Um, everything I said, if you watch it, you know. Uh, and not cherry pick us or a sound bite from it or whatever the case is, especially the one where Chief X came came on the panel. Um, I was very very clear and whatnot. So here's the thing, just to be very clear to everybody here, because th this I'm put into a nice sound bite, and y'all could timestamp this. What is this? This three three hours and fifty seven minutes and fifty two fifty three seconds, etc. Timestamp this right here. For those people who are known to not study Egypt, who are known to have never taken grammar with the Egyptian language or anything, but will talk about ancient Egypt and jump in on the bandwagon on the hot topics revolving ancient Egypt. When it comes to the question of the Egyptians being black or not, these people will boast and brag about relying on experts. That's all they can do because they can't rely on their own analysis of data because they don't know enough. So they have to rely on whatever experts say and roll with it. And they get stuck when two experts have opposing views. They don't know what to do with that. So they just ride with one expert over the other and they argue ensues. So you got cliques and clans of people siding with this expert and then another group siding with the other expert. And then those two groups come together and, and, and click the button live on, on YouTube and they argue back and forth for months and months and months and months. That's what happens. So the point that I'm making is that if you're going to play the game of the race and you want to perform this anachronistic game of projecting the modern social construct of race backwards on the ancient Egyptians and you want to also rely on the experts then play the game correctly the experts tell you that the land of the black people is Sudan that's what the experts say the land of the black people is Sudan. That's what the experts say. And there you have it. They don't say Egypt is the land of black people. They say Sudan is the land of black people. Okay? It's just that simple. So if people wanted to justify identifying with Egypt so bad and they need to identify with the blackness of Egypt and make Egyptians black like like how we use it today to justify them dealing with Egypt and, and all the other kind of stuff, 
then the the thing is is that why didn't you go a couple of degrees longitude below in Sudan? Because that's what the experts say. The experts don't say Egypt is the land of black people, but they do say Sudan is the land of black people. So if you need to self-identify, if you need to link yourself up with some with some people, why didn't you go to Sudan? But now here's a twist to that. Here's another point, a a a a um, addendum point to that. Supplemental <laughs> uh, point to that is that people are subtly trying to actually do that. And I'm sure you all have seen people try to combine um, Kemet Kush. You see Kemet Kush, Kemet Kush and stuff like that. And they're, and they're making the Sudanese out to actually be Egyptian now. When that's also false. The people in ta in ancient times were not the Egyptians. The Remech are not the Nahisiu as a people. We have a people called Remich and we have a people called Nahisiu. Among the people of Nahisi, the Nahisiu people, we have sub communities. The Majau, Wawetiu, Yamamu or Yam, Setchu, etc., etc., etc. The Inu people that lived in that region called Ta Nahisi, today called Sudan, none of them were Egyptians. Can they become Egyptians? Yes. Some of them actually did. But as a stock of people, they are different. Period. So I hope people understand that. There was no such thing as a racial category of black, white, red, brown, Ocean Pacific, Alaskan Pacific, Hawaiian, Native American. None, none of those social con constructs that we use today existed in ancient times, in ancient Egypt. Period. People got to get that in their head. And like Dr. John Henry Clark, I long for the day when people can get past the so modern social construct of race being at the for forefront of every <clears throat> excuse me every daggone conver conversation where we got to make everybody black christopher columbus is black king james is black santa claus is black jesus is black buddha is black the olmecs are black elvis presley is black and by this time next year queen elizabeth is going to be black If you if if you let people have it, and that's crazy. So we gotta get over that, y'all. We gotta get over that. As a matter of fact, shout out to the late and great Dr. John Henry Clark. And for that, I'm going to play this clip. Y'all listen. Listen to, don't listen to Wujau. Listen to Dr. John Henry Clark. You're saying, in, in essence, uh, that there's no such thing as a race. Oh, I, I maintain that race is the phoniest issue ever invented by the mind of man. The European invented and 
developed the concept of race, there's really no such thing as a, as a race because nature created no races. The whole race is a man-made thing, you know. Well, how did people get to be French and English? Well, uh, uh, different um, climatic conditions and migrations and, my, and, and amalgams of, of different people and migrations of people into your country, migrations of people out. All right. Now, this is, this is an ethnic grouping as against uh, what we call race. If you go back and you look at an old dictionary, you won't even find a definition for a race. Race grew out of the pseudo-scientific development of Europe. And this is what Rogers was uh, addressing himself to and, and saying that according to your rule, which is ridiculous, a lot of you belong to us. Well, in mm. another context, mm. if race is arbitrary, mm. then could we say that being called black was a political term? It's a political term and a term which indicates our self-awareness at this juncture in history, and I think we really need, uh, we really need it. We need to really bathe in blackness for a while, but I wish we'd get the bath over with and go on to something a little more important, because black, black in itself is not an ethnic term. Black tells you how you look, but it don't tell you who you are. We are essentially an African people. Wherever we live on this earth, we're essentially an African people. And we relate to the millions of African people throughout the world, including the uncounted millions of Africans in, in Asia. Uh, the word Afro-American or African-American would probably be more appropriate and more honest and more in keeping with what we actually are. Because all of us are not positively, physically, you know, real jet black. And so the argument now sometimes is between the supernationalists and the mild nationalists and blacker than thou. When blackness is a state of mind, a state of attitude, a state of approach to things uh, that can exist in almost any of us, uh, including from the blonde black person to the, to the jet black. And the jet black can be traitors and they can be patriarchs, they can be a whole lot of... See, we, we, we've been everything in history from saint to baffoons. We are complete people, and we need to start looking at ourselves as a, um, as a complete people. And I think that once we have uh, convinced ourselves that we're black and beautiful, we'll stop saying it and just go ahead and be black and beautiful and release a whole lot of energy for more important things. All right, so All right, there you have it from Dr. John Henry Clark's mouth himself. So you got uh, Sister Mika on the, on the line. And, and Mika, since you came in, I'm going to give you the microphone, give you the whole floor. Uh, Hotep. So right before I start closing out, Hotep. Yeah, I can't beat um, American Dreams <laughs> questions. But, um, I want to speak on the um, belief system that the um, Egyptian had, and I want to know, would that be considered a cult, what they believe, like a shrine? Is that a cult? Okay, good. Uh, is that rain? Where you at? Oh, is it raining? Yes, yeah, it's raining. Actually, yeah, actually, I'm on my break, so I'm just doing a quick call, and it's raining heavy. Up, you know, down here, I should Dang. say. So, yeah. Man, it sounds like it's, it's hailing. Wow, I can hear clear. All right, but yeah, yeah, that's a good question though. But yeah, if you if you could mute, okay, cool. So um, so is it a cult? All right, so let's let's establish this. The cult, the cults, it was cults plural, and by definition, the ancient Egyptian had several cult centers, and they were centered around various different nature nature so you may have the cult of Ptah, the cult of Sekhmet, the cult of Oset, the cult of this, the cult of that. Because whatever these different deities represented, they had a center and focal point where people would cultivate whatever it is that they, that they represented. So for example, scribes can be considered a, a cult of Jehudi or Sashat. Doctors could be considered a cult or a group of people that are cult, a cult of Sekhmet. Sekhmet is the female lion headed lioness deity that governs um, diseases, sickness, healing and all that other kind of stuff. And she's the patroness deity over all medical physicians called Sunu. So all these different Sunu 
people would could be would be considered a cult of Sekhmet. And so if they had a focal point in terms of an actual location um, where this particular deity was enshrined or within a temple and so on and so forth, they would call that a cult center and blah, 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 blah. So in that sense, ancient Egypt had many cults. So, you know, cult of Het Heru, the cult of Heru. Every king would be a cult member. <laughs> Every king of Egypt would be a cult member of, of the Heru cult. I mean, you, you know, think about it. Every And think about it. Every mourning woman, every professional mourner will be within the cult of Osset and Nebet Hut, who were the, who were the uh, archetypes of, of the mourners for the, for the deceased. And so every professional mourner will be a cult member. So, yeah, now in, in the sense that we use it today, the word cult, where we have a charismatic leader and, you know, their pseudos all outdoors and they're manipulating people, this, that, and the third, you know, that's, that's the modern, that's our modern, um, more um, way we use it and stuff like that. You know, obviously these deities are not sentient human beings. You know, ain't no, there was no segment walking around, uh, doing anything there was no all set walking around you couldn't walk down the street and bump into all set unless somebody's name was all set but not not the deity all set and, and so on and so forth so it wasn't like that the, you know it's 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 a it's a nice complex more complex network not complicated but complex anyway so hopefully i, I don't know if i answered your question so in in, yeah, in yeah. one sense, yes, yeah, it sound like that sound like hail. That don't sound like rain. That sound like some some golf ball size hail coming down. I don't know what kind of rain y'all got down there in Florida, but man, man, when it rains, it pours. We don't have like no regular rain. We have okay. This is kind of where it is down down here. It will rain in one area, and then another area, the sun will be shining so bright and so nice and dry. That's how it is over here. Oh, wow. Rainy. Well, right right now, it sounds like... See, in Georgia, if if I hear rain sound like that, and I think it's golf balls, that's a sign that, that it's, it's uh, conducive for a tornado-like type weather right there. That's, Yo, that's what we see here. I am sitting in my car on my break. No, I'm not in my house. <laughs> he said playing. that's just her house. <laughs> he said <laughs> he said <laughs> he said that's your washing machine making that making that noise. But anyway, but yeah, what uh what else you got going on? You got you got anything else? I mean I, I don't know if that was sufficient, but you know, I don't know what if people because <clears throat> cult has a different connotation now. You know, cult leaders and cults and stuff like that. Cults, cults back in the day, were 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 not a pejorative, negative thing. You know, it it wasn't it wasn't negative. It was it was just understood as um, a um, what we would call a cult is something where something can be focused on and cultivated and things like that. But in a modern sense of of like this charismatic cult leader and all this other kind of stuff, the the Jim Jones. And a David Apple Applegate or Applegate people, David uh, Koresh, and all that kind of stuff. That's that's different. And and I don't want and see people shouldn't get confused either because you have initiatory systems that are headed by some kind of high ranking individual that's responsible for the initiation initiation system and 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 you know a group of people that carry things out and make sure it's it's structured and goes according to how it's supposed to go and stuff like that. Those could be considered cults and and whatnot. But we don't exactly describe like we say an you know initiatory system. I'm going to get initiated. Oh you get initiated oh, yeah, yeah, in that cult. Yeah, I got a question. So would you consider Jabari Shrine a cult? I'm just saying Oh, Jabari Shrine a cult? Um well, here's the thing. In in 
in the old sense of cult, it it could be described as a cult because his shrine is called the shrine of Ma'at. And so if Ma'at is the focus and and everything that Ma'at represents is the focus of study and attention and 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 all the business that and everything that they do, whatever rituals that they that they perform and do, whatever is connected and linked to Ma'at, then it would be a, a cult of Ma'at in a traditional sense. But Again, I have to qualify that because if we if we start to say it in a modern sense, which I, which I think people are trying to use it to to accuse Jabari of being a cult leader, I don't think that that's um, I don't think that that fits. Uh, I don't think that that's fit that's fitting. I I I would not lay that accusation on the brother Jabari. Now there are cults that exist and I wouldn't say that Jabari's um shrine of my eye would uh fit in that description. At least not at this point. I don't I don't see it. Now I'm not like you know what I'm saying I've I've never been I never met Jabari. I've never been to his um shrine to see what they conduct, what they do, this and a third. So 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 my information is limited and based on my limited information I wouldn't I wouldn't accuse him of that. Yep. So that's my answer. Well, by definition, I believe it is a cult. Because look what in 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 the modern sense. Behavior. Yeah. Oh, give me an example. Okay. For one, he's the leader of the group. But two, I don't, the stuff that he's doing, um, the ritual, so I, I believe it's a part of so. Okay, let me, all right, let me, let me just ask you just for my clarification, and I'm, and I'm trying to, I'm trying to see where you, where you, where you at, where you at with it. So, I know you heard of uh, Boy Scouts and Eagle Scouts and Girl Scouts, Right. Okay, so now Boy Scout has a scout master and a, and, a, and a leader, a scout master, and same thing with Girl Scouts. So in the Boy Scouts, they perform rituals. They have they have signs and symbols. They learn practical things, tying knots, um, how to survive, how to do this, that, and the third. And but they ha but they have a lot of symbol sim symbolic things. They have a lot of symbolisms among the boy scouts and and they have different ranks but they have a no, leader but this too is different. no this is different this is like something unusual like it's not like oh he, he learned how to tie a knot or something like that this is something how how do i say spiritual i don't know Should i say spiritual um is this something different hey I know what's unusual is that daggone sound of that rain. That's unusual. It's, it's <laughs> what kind of well, what kind of you can hear it? What kind Damn. of car? It's not it's not like you have an aluminum car. <laughs> that's, that's, <laughs> that's what sound no. Okay, but hold up, but back to the Jabari though. So no, I was just trying to get your I was trying to get your um thermometer check. I'm trying to I'm trying to see where you are with it. So so you see so if we compare the Boy Scouts with Jabari and what he's doing, you're saying that those are those are too different. They're 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 too much different to be to be compared, right? Is that what you're saying? Say that again. The rain. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the rain. Um, no, no. I'm, I'm about different. No, I'm saying. I'm saying. I'm saying. Do you? Do you think that a, a comparison between the Boy Scouts having a scout master, scout leader, and then all the rituals and symbolisms that the Boy Scouts go through, you said it? You do you do you feel that's a un? It's unfair to compare that to Jabari right. and what he's doing. Yeah. Right. Okay. 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 I got you. I got you. All right. Um. Have you, wait. Have you seen what he do? Have you seen like the um? The rituals or the um, what you call it, the ceremonies and stuff that they do. Do you 
Well, that's what I'm. That, that's what I'm saying. I, I'm 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 not I'm not um I'm not up to speed on that. The only the only thing I've seen about uh with Jabari is the fact that I've seen a couple of his engagements of people on YouTube. You know, in terms of um uh like having discussions or or kind of semi debating debates or whatever. I've seen that, and um I did catch. I think I did catch uh, one or two of their Sunday presentations, but they weren't doing anything. Jabari was basically giving a history, you know, a, a presentation on on Facebook. So I, I think I saw a couple of those and I know that he sponsors trips to Ghana and Egypt. And that's it. I Other than that, I don't really know what um, what they do. I don't. I don't know. I, I never. Um, I never seen footage of what they do or anything. Other than that, that's it. So so now. Nah, so I'm. I'm probably the wrong person to ask. I'm probably the wrong person uh, to ask. Okay. But, okay. But you know Nature Boy, right? Yeah. 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 I've seen Nature Boy. Uh, so so you uh, you you think that's a cult, right? Now Nature Boy. Nature Boy is 100% fitting for our modern definition of cult leader and cult. Yes, absolutely. And I know more about Nature Boy and, and their activities and things because Nature Boy goes out of his way or went out of his way to film everything and to publicize everything that they did. Everything. So, so, so the, the things that I did see was like front row seat into everything he was doing. You know, so so now that now that's definitely not what Jabari's doing. I would never compare Nature Boy and what he does to Jabari and what Jabari does. I would never do that. Right. Yeah, I would I would I would never do that. Jabari yeah, Jabari like that's kinda insulting to 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 compare <laughs> Nature Boy and Nature Boy and Jabari. I would never do that. That's 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 insulting right there because nature boy is off the chain nature boy is the hallmark of cult leader definitely 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 he he fits every single bullet point on what a, a modern cult is he checked he you checked the whole list charismatic controlling manipulative um separation um and it's so the percentage of the separation is so deep where he actually makes normal society the enemy of his of his group and people forget about that that attribute of 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 modern cults and things like that and then the manipulation. I mean, he has men. He had men, young men and women, bathing his feet, feeding him grapes, catering to him, and things like that. Now, obviously, you know he's showing the footage. He, nobody has a gun to their head or whatever. But they, these are all psychological manipulations and things. And that's and that's you know so cult. You know that whole cult thing is is a, is a deep subject. But no, nah, no, nah, I, I would would never, um, I would never uh, use Jabari and Nature Boy in the same sentence. Nah, I wouldn't do that. So yeah, so 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 you got my definitions of cult. So if you if you want to know my idea of a cult and a cult leader, definitely Nature Boy. And 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 what 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 was he? And he and he proclaimed to be God. Now I don't mean God in a sense in you know African sense. My man was was claiming to be. He was he was leveraging that whole concept of God, playing on all levels of the concept. Prophet, God, Messiah, all in all in one. That's crazy. Anyway, I see we got American Dream, but I'm not gonna be on here long. So, um, uh, Mika, you had you had anything else? Cause I know American Dream back and boy, American Dream about to. Nah, nah, I'm good. About to get back 
All right, well, be careful in that, uh, in that hailstorm. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I don't know what kind of car, car you in, but that's, that's, that's the sound effect. So, America Dream, what's going on? And mind you, I'm, I'm only, I only got five minutes. So, can we build in five minutes? What you got for me in five minutes? And shout out to everybody in the chat. America Dream, I, I can't hear you if you're speaking. Shout out to everybody um, in the chat. I see we got Five Lighting to us. We got Miss Tiffany uh, back. Brother Sarmo yes, sir. came through. Donnie. Okay, go ahead. What were you saying? Yeah, I'm only back with a special request from the chat. Have you seen the chat? They freaking love me. Um, <laughs> so oh, for that's real? <laughs> <laughs> Check it out. They can't, they can't have enough of me. Um <laughs> But you know, I was I was a little bit insulted by what you were saying after I left. You were kind of making it seem as if I was down with the pseudo killers, and that's kind of insulting, man. Don't do that again. Just because I okay, listen to no, them, no, no, mean no, I'm no. down right, with let them. Me, okay, let me be. I'm just me, joking. Shout out to oh, the okay, pseudo okay. killers. I'm just oh, no, okay. but I'm not. You know, I'm not a pseudo killer at all. I think yeah, the I pseudo killers have their own issues that they have to deal with. Um, you know, but I just listen to everybody to get an idea of where everybody's coming from. Um, you know, I don't want to rehash anything we've been talking about. Um, you know, I, I'm, I am interested in the idea of what you guys were just talking about in terms of cults and, and who's a cult and what's a cult. Um, and I was just wondering, yeah. and I'm not trying to, you know, be pushing any buttons, but would you consider the new Wapians to be a cult? Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and let me ask you this. Um, you see I how fast, Malachi, you, wait, wait, you see, you see, you see how fast I answer that and, and, and direct. You see, how, you see how that works. Absolutely, that's great. <laughs> I appreciate it. Um, right, and let me ahead, ask you this, <laughs> um, because one of the things that always stuck out to me with, um, because when you were just talking about, um, you know, the epitome of of a cult leader, and you were talking yeah. about, um, and you were talking about um, what's his name, uh, Nature Boy. Nature Boy. In my head, I'm thinking What's Nature his name Boy. Now? He, he don't, he don't I'm thinking. Call, he don't, he don't call himself I think Nature he was three anymore. something, three oh, third, three God. Just some three, yeah, three guy. God. Yeah, 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 three. God. Um, yeah. But I, but in my estimation, I was more thinking Malachi York, um, because you know I used to read a lot of his book. Like this man wrote so much and came off as being so freaking intelligent. Like for me at least, like my I was my mind was blown with. That. I was like, wow, this guy knows everything. So you're a cult <laughs> member. No, I was I was never a cult member. I bought his book because I was learning. I was, you know, when I was younger, I was I tried to learn from everywhere. So I was um I was learning from from everywhere. And you know, if I was if I was a cult member, it definitely wasn't the New Opians. Um, but uh, but I was just learning from from everywhere. And there was just a time when I ran into one of his books, and you know, it just happened to be around what I was studying at the time, and I was just really interested in what he was saying and i was just i was just really um indulging in it um okay okay but you know i was wondering if you could tell me one of the things that always stuck with me was one of his sayings um he, he would say um give them what they want and they'll want what you have to give and, and i'm wondering if you can yeah. like expound on what what he meant by that because i have my own idea of what i think he meant by that but i'm, I'm uh -huh. hoping you could expound on it well i'll i'll answer it two two ways one, I will answer it on what I think he meant by it, and then I'll answer it from from a psychological standpoint of how it's actually used professionally. So I'll do the latter first. So so in psychology and, and professionally, um, the way and and this is in the science of teaching, you know, pedagogical teaching, is that we understand that that the way that we learn is by association, and so. When we learn things, new things, we're actually building on things that already exist. And so we ha so they ha we have to find a sweet spot when we introduce or teach things. You got to you got to anchor it into something that somebody already is standing on or knows. And so you have to give people um, a little bit of what they think they know in order for them to learn to want to, to know new things and to build on it to add on. So that's that's a saying among professionals and the science of of that teaching methodology. Now, when it comes to using it as a phrase of um, I came giving you what you want to, to, so that you could learn to want what I really have to give is trying to utilize that that teaching concept. But the way that uh, York used it was to 
to actually justify going through what he referred to as different schools of thought. So, for instance, when there's a change or a transition from the Ansar Allah school of thought or Muslims or Islam into the Nubian Islamic Hebrew thought, then the Holy Tabernacle Ministry thought, and then to the Nuwabian thought, and then to the Moorish thought, and so on and so forth, those transitions needed an explanation. Because while in real time you're in any one particular school of thought, it was always propagated that that was the end all be all school. Like, man, you're in this school. This is what it is. But then when you put that to the side and go into another one, it's like, well, wait a minute. I thought we were already learning, you know, what we're supposed to be learning. How, how, how can we push that to the side and learn something different? Then it then the explanation came out as, wait a minute. I came to give you what you want. That's what you wanted. And I did that so that you could learn the one I want, what, what I really have to give. And now in this new school, this is what I really have to give. And then once that gets pushed to the side, that saying is repeated again. Well, guess what, y'all? That's what you really, that's what you wanted. And I gave you that. Now I'm going to teach you what I really came to give. And so it's a, it's a carrot on the stick type of methodology or use. That's how it's actually applied. So hopefully I answer sure. both, both of those questions. Absolutely. Um, uh, yeah, the way I always thought of it was that it was it was kind of like, hey, um, and you can, you know, um, I always thought of it as it's that cult leader, like it's something that a cult leader would say, right? Um, because like, like I said, I, I thought he came off as if, you know, he was really intelligent and to a point where people would start to think that this guy knows everything. Right. Um, so it's give them what they want so that they'll learn to want, like they'll think you have everything. If you give them what they want, they'll want everything and accept everything from you. So I, I, I kind of lo looked at it as this kind of way of, of getting people to kind of like be sheep. Um, give them what they want and and they'll follow you and want everything that you know what I mean they'll learn to want what you're having to give um well yeah but see it's... that 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 wasn't the original see that didn't that wasn't a statement that was made at the at the start like I said it was it was it was used as as a way to explain away the transitions you know and and but you're right uh York was claimed to have 76 trillion years of knowledge. That was the claim. 76 trillion years of knowledge. And so if you if you if you think about it 76 trillion years, you you'd be like, "All right, well, shoot. Somebody going to take that to say that okay, this this person knows everything." Cuz you can't even quantify 76 trillion years of knowledge. Like how do you, you know, how do you qualify quantify that? The universe not even that old. Sure. So that's just a fancy way of saying, okay, know everything, or we'll have access to right. to know everything. Absolutely. And, and that and that was a real claim. That was a real claim that that was said, probably still said, to this very day. Sure. One like him, one like him comes every twenty five thousand nine hundred twenty years. So, you know. You gotta wait a whole another after him. You gotta wait a whole another twenty five thousand years. That was also claimed. So yes, so you know these are all types of things that people look for and would label as as you know behavior that's likened unto um, you know cultish type stuff. Extraordinary claims require extraordinary uh, <laughs> evidence or whatever that however that saying goes, and when you never get it, then hey better address it as such so yeah but now let me ask you mm -hmm. a question um let me ask you a question uh um if we were living in according to the stories according to the scenario and the stories as they're written would jesus be considered a cult leader yes okay cool all right i agree with that yep i agree with that yeah, absolutely I wonder, yeah, I don't know if Mika's still listening. That, that I was going to ask her that before she left. If Jesus would it would be considered a co-leader, would you consider uh, Moses a co-leader? 
Yes. Okay. So the Bible is full of cult leaders because. Oh, yeah. I can, Absolutely. I can, name, I can name a few yeah. of them. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Would you, would you consider God a cult leader? <laughs> you're like, would y'all, would y'all you going too far now? <laughs> yeah, I don't. I mean, cult leaders for me are are real people. Well, uh, human beings, if you will. I think, I think God is more a tool of a cult leader than being the cult leader himself. I think God is the ultimate cult leader, though, especially the Christian, the Abrahamic God. I think, I think that's the ultimate cult leader. But, but like you said, it's not, it's not a, like I'm not saying in a human into a human sense but ultimately sure in sure the, in absolutely the, he behaves like concept. a cult leader yeah 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 there you go in a, in, a, in in all the other sense of a cult leader i think god will be the ultimate 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 uh cult leader so that's interesting sure that's interesting. sure yep which yeah, man. ties into what uh, she asked but listen i'm i'm, I'm definitely got to get off here i've been on i've been on entirely indeed uh, indeed long. absolutely Yes, so sir. I hope, um, hope your again. family uh, 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 forgive me for for keeping you from uh, um, uh, greeting them and eating your dinner. I don't, I don't know what you have for dinner. You probably yeah, man, yeah, man. The boys are tucked stuff. in. The boys are tucked in. Um, they're good to go. Um, I hope you. I hope your uh, your chat can forgive me for you know what I mean um, for not staying longer. Um, but I too have to go. <laughs> Oh, all right, all right, cool, cool. <laughs> Telling you, Wujawu, the question, chat loves me. Question before, before you go, before you go, I'm <laughs> sure, oh, Especially Emma Cat, she can't get enough of me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, yeah, so this is the question, yeah. So um, I don't know if we asked you this last time, but um, um, have you ever thought about taking any class for the special nature since you kind of have a little interest in, in, you know, ancient Egyptian culture and things of that nature? Um, yeah, I have considered it because I did download the app, um, and and I and I had considered um, you know joining those those classes, but it was never something that I I, I you know after I downloaded the app, you know things life kind of got in the way, and you know it never really happened. Um, but you know you're not trying to get me into a cult, are you, Emma Cat? I didn't say cult. I said classes, education. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm saying because, um, because literally, like what what we have and what they have anywhere else, you don't have to deal with us anyway. I'm just saying because clearly you have an interest in in, in this kind of stuff because nobody's gonna spend one hour, two hours, um, you know, on a regular just having a discussion of something that is not of their interest, you know, for the most part. So I'm only saying this because whether you take it with us or you take it somewhere else. Uh, it still takes the same amount of time, literally, because like, and you you know, the same amount of time we spend on, on YouTube, um, you know, that's two, one hour, two hours of uh, whatever, if, even if it's once a week or whatever it is. Uh, I know with our classes, it was once a week and it was um, two hours. And uh, after three months, I believe, 12 weeks, you're, you're done with it. You know, if you take yeah, that well, two hours a week. And I'm only considering this because we definitely do spend time online you know one hour two hours which literally can actually uh get you rolling you know on any on any of those beginner classes um you know with us with what the procurator man with other other places whether it's um Kosovo or whatever it is and then you get the basics so that you know so that you don't have to you know struggle so much because because i'm listening to you talk and you have an interest and then and maybe whatever is blocking you is just one little, uh, it's just a step away from, you know, where it could actually be solved by, by just understanding some of the things. That way you don't have to be like, um, you know, are you sure maybe Ujau is lying to you or somebody else on the other channel is lying to you? So you don't even have to worry about who's lying or who's not. You know, you, you can actually listen to discussions here. You can listen to discussions there. And, and you're able to analyze in your own head with the, you know, with all the, the knowledge that you've already gained and be like, okay, I know this doesn't make sense, but this makes sense. So, you know, yeah, that's my only thing. I wanted to, to make sure that you know, maybe you are aware of that option because definitely you have an interest in it. Um, yeah, I think, I think, you know, the, the extent that my interest goes in it is just the extent to which it's been talked about in this community. Like, you know, if, if the community wasn't as obsessed with it, I think as they are, I don't necessarily see myself having, especially now at, at this point in my life, maybe when I was younger, but at this point in my life, you know, studying Egypt and the language, it's not necessarily something that I would 
be personally pursuing. Um, you know, my interest in it is because I, I listen to, 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 to these guys talk and most of what they talk about is that stuff. So it, you know, it may conjure up certain questions about it, but outside of that, I don't necessarily have this inner thing where I'm like, I want to learn about that stuff. Um, that's not necessarily where I am. I'm more interested in, I guess, um, I don't know. I think, I think, um, I'm more interested in what, in what, um, just what black folks and, and the quote unquote black community is doing and, and thinking about. And, you know, I'm asking questions about this because that seems to be what's, what's important to them. If okay, that makes so, any sense. Um, yeah, I guess. So you're saying, um, you know, you, you're just listening for the sake of listening and, um, and whoever says something, you know, you kind of just, you know, we, yeah, because we like, to be honest, right. to be to be honest, I don't disagree with with anything that Wujawu is saying in terms of his understanding of what um of of what was going you know with with the race situation in in Egypt. I may not you know agree or with his you know with what he says Nahesu means or those little things, but I'm not really that caught up with it. Um, but for the most part, I don't think race is an important thing. I think it's, you know what I mean? I think that as a community, we should be doing more than just thinking about, you know, race. And I think we kind of have our, our minds wrapped around race way too much. And I think that's a part of what our problem is. Um, and I think we should start thinking about other things. Um, but that's, that's, um, beyond what we're talking about i guess okay so at this point you just rely on us um to uh, you know to let you know like whatever we will say is that you know we probably will lean more on that side right um well you know I, like i said i i agree with when wujawu speaks about you know them not having an idea about race and i i agree with all of that and you know, I don't, I don't necessarily see the importance of, of making them black. I don't think that adds anything to us here now. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm at a place where I'm just going along with, with the ride. I have my own views on, on it. And I think I'm pretty firm on what I believe about it. So I'm not trying to look for what I believe. I'm, I'm pretty strong on, on what I think about the whole, the whole thing. And, and sometimes I just come on chats to, to have conversations to, um, you know what I mean? To spark thoughts and to have, you know, and most times I'm just listening to see what people are saying, to see if there's anything interesting, um, you know, but like bouncing ideas around and see what people think about those ideas. Um, see whether or not they accept them. But, but the chat, the chat, I can't, keep, I can't keep saying it enough. The chat loves my ideas. Emiket, you see it, right? Yeah, we're definitely entertained. You know, but uh, <laughs> I, I think I get what, what you're saying. <laughs> Try to get you in a coat. Don't fall for <laughs> it. Now nah, let me stop. No, but um, listen. Um, if it were if it were early, I was I would stay on. But I I started earlier so I can end early, and I really didn't anticipate being on this long. Um, but I'm gonna keep doing this because I really want to kind of get. See, I want I want a really good session where people are focused on the language. Uh, for those who are not in the class, because because I think that that is a very um, I think that hurts us because we have like you said, American Dream. You said your interest in Egypt is a result of it being like a hot topic around you. So it's like okay, you you know you're, you're you're tuning in, you're listening, and then based on what you're hearing, you you chime in. So you you chime in. You may have questions and stuff like that because. Of, of it being like a hot topic and so i'm like well since egypt is a hot topic why aren't people approaching egypt the the, the pro proper way which would be learn at least the basic of the language so they can so they can be a little bit more intimate with the un their understanding of the culture and stuff like that and i don't expect people to get a phd or or any degrees in it but people are not even respecting it enough to do that like for example if if the table was turned and i was talking to a muslim and and something about islam just kept coming up all the time around me or or like the hot topics of muhammad and islam the Allah, the quran and and blah 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 at some point somebody's going to say well wait a minute you you all should be diving into arabic because arabic is the is the language of that of that 
discussion, you know, of, of Islam. Everything about Islam is is conveyed in Arabic. Now, obviously, we can get by not knowing Arabic, but we're, we're at a handicap. And that's what's happening with Egypt. All these people that talk about Egypt, not everybody, but I'm saying a lot of people that talk about Egypt, they're not competent in the language. It's just not. And I see it from my vantage point. I I notice it. And it's frustrating to me. It bothers me. But I, I get it. A lot of people don't don't see it the same way I see it. But that's only because I'm on the other side of it. Like I, I deal with the language. I've been teaching the language. And I see the benefits of the of having the language as a tool to engage the culture. You know, so is that, like that. <clears throat> is that the language that they speak today? No, no, no. E ancient Egyptian is, is a dead language. There's no speech community for right. it. Right. So, so, you know, for that reason, I think to, to like compare it with Arabic, for example, because, you know, Islam is one of the, if, is probably now, probably the fastest growing religion in the world. If not, if it's not the second, it's the fastest growing. And so, you know, if Islam is growing, then the number of people speaking Arabic is also going to be growing. Yeah, so Arabic yeah. is a, is a, is a very, um, is a living language and it, keeps growing the number of people that are speaking arabic keeps growing so you know someone's interest in learning arabic i don't i don't i think it, it would come from a different place than someone's interest in wanting to learn egyptian mainly no, ancient no, no, absolutely. egyptian yeah yeah no you're, you're absolutely right I, and i wasn't comparing it in in that sense i was i was saying that okay let me put it a different way if i want to be the best muslim i can be then it's it's up to me to learn Arabic because Islam and everything about being a Muslim permeates in that language. So Arabic is the language of of that particular belief system that I'm so are interested you, in. So are you trying to teach people about Egypt or are you trying to get people to be Egyptian? No, no, no. I'm I teach people the language, which is a tool to allow them to engage the culture. I am not trying to teach people to be e, e, be ancient Egyptians. I do not believe that people can be ancient Egyptians. So let me get that sh straight, knock that out the box right now. That people today are not ancient Egyptians. We, we don't have a river culture. We don't have a monarchy, uh, kingship and stuff. N none of that stuff is, is, is existing today uh, in terms of at least us over here um, in America. That's well, you know, the African, idea of African Americans and, and this down the third. So no, no, no. I'm not teaching people to be Egypt, ancient Egyptians at all. That, right, because you just said, you know, a part of the a part of the 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 um, attraction of, of speaking um, Arabic is because when you speak Arabic, it makes you a better Muslim, right? So, um, yeah. what would be the point of learning? ancient egypt if not to be a better egyptian okay so go back to my original statement um islam is the name of a religion because that's what has been termed but it's also a culture so you have an islamic culture an arabic culture or an arab culture so although we know a religion by the name of islam El Islam is a way of life. Deen Allah is a way of life, a culture. People do things a certain way, all the way from the legal side of everyday life, all the way down to quote unquote the spiritual side, from secular to spiritual. Okay? That culture from top to bottom permeates in the language of Arabic. So if I want to engage that culture, I should learn Arabic if I want. Oh, and uh, he, he bumped off. And this goes true, and, I, and this is my opportunity to, to close off. If if I want to engage um, the Hebrew culture or the Jewish culture, I need to learn Hebrew. If I want to engage the Japanese culture, I need to learn Japanese. If I want to engage um, French culture, I need to learn French, etc. Every single culture that I want to engage, whether I want to become part and parcel of it or to study it, 
I need these to are living cultures, but these are living cultures, though. Like you would learn a yeah. living culture to engage with a living language. What's the point of learning a living? A, a, what's the point of learning a dead language? Are you trying to engage with a with the dead culture that goes with that? Like what yes. culture are you trying to engage with? No, it just depends. <laughs> so we could we could I, I I named I named I named a few. I named living ones and dead ones. So for example, and if the culture is wait, dead, wait, why wait. are you? And if the culture is dead, why are you trying to engage with it if not to revive it? Okay, my use of the word engage is to actually is for what the actual word means. I don't mean live it. So I don't want you to confuse engage by living it. By my my definition of engage is actually what the word engage mean. If I want to engage a culture by way of studying it or whatever the case is, to have a better understanding, a more intimate understanding of it, I need to do so by way of its language. So so at, so if I wanted to study Babylonian culture or Akkadian culture or some some Mesopotamian culture, it is best that I learn the language of whatever culture that I am pursuing to engage. And again, I don't mean live it. I'm talking about study it. So if I want to study Islam, don't you think it's best that I learn Arabic? Yes. So if I wanted to study uh, Hebrewism or Hebrew Israelite or I agree Jew with you. Judaism, I, I, no, I, I agree with you. I'm not disagreeing with you. I I, I do agree. If you wanna if you wanna engage with a culture, it's it's best to do to learn the language. Absolutely. There you go. My there, my there only you go. question is, go. but my question is, what is? I guess my question is, what is the point of trying to engage with a dead culture? if not to revive it like what would be the point like i understand engaging with a living language and a living culture i understand that because i can engage i can learn french because i can go to france and you know use the language and be a part of that culture because i i know the language simply because i know the language the people are going to accept me more just just because of that so i understand engaging with a living lang with a living culture through the language but I can't wrap my head around what is the point of engaging, of trying to engage with a dead culture through a dead, through the dead language. The only thing that simple. makes sense to me is you're trying to revive it. No, well, let me let me add another sense to it then. If that's your only sense. I'm going I'm to give you another one. The other sense is to actually get to know about the culture regardless. So, for example, um, without trying to revive it, like okay, let me let me let me let me give you an, an analogy, and and this should this should suffice, right? Um, when and I don't know what these people are called. I know they're not called paleontologists or whatever, but the people that study dinosaur bones, they're not engaging these dinosaur bones to 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 reproduce them. They want to just study these things, like, like extinct animals and things like that. They're they're studying them. They're not studying them only or they or they don't feel like the only reason or justification for them studying it is to revive them. No, but I don't have to. So, but I don't so, have to. So. But I don't have to. I don't have to learn the language, the French language to study French culture. Yes, you right? do. No, I don't. It's, no, 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 no. I don't. No, wait, 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 wait. I don't. Not, I can learn wait, about wait, wait, the, wait. the I can learn about Spanish culture without speaking Spanish. I, I yes. just got to go okay. through a history. I just, I don't have to speak the language to know about the culture. Someone okay, go from, back to my someone first Spanish wait, wait, wait. can say That's it to this. me. Wait, wait, but see, this, this is where you got to really pay attention to what I say. I said it is best. Okay. And I use, sure. I, I use the word, I use the word handicap and I use the word best. So, so let's, let's, let's take your last statement. So American dream knows nothing about Spanish or French. But yet American Dream wants to study Spanish and French culture. But then Wujau has the same interest as American Dream. I also want to study Spanish and French culture. But yet I also take the time out to learn actual Spanish and French language. Who do you think is, is more advantageous or in a more advantaged position to engage the culture better than the other? American Dream or Wujau? Wujau, I can see there you go. That's it. That's all I'm saying. So, sure, so, so, so I said that people are, are, are barely getting by talking about Egypt. And this is what I'm saying. 
Egypt is a hot topic. It's been a hot topic for a long time, especially in the so-called conscious community. But a lot of people who do the most talking about Egypt are not well studied in Egypt or its language. And that's frustrating to me. And so my advocacy is to change that by by pushing the language and giving people the tools that if they want to learn about Egypt, they can do a better job. That's it, because it's best to engage a culture by way of its language. That's sure. It. Like it sounds as if when you say engage, like when I say I would learn French to engage with the French culture, what I mean by that is when I say I, I want to engage it, I mean, I actually want to visit France, speak to the people, eat their food, do what they're doing. Right. And it sounds as if when you say you're learning ancient Egyptian to engage with the it sounds as if by engage, you don't you mean something different from what I mean when I say engage with the French culture. When you say you want to engage with the ancient Egyptian culture, you can't mean you want to go there and talk to the people and speak the language. You simply mean you just want to study the language. Yeah. Right? And, so, and, hope, so and hopefully a, and, and, ho and hopefully. Hopefully when I say that, I don't I don't have to explain that because it should be in everybody's default head by default that Egypt is dead is gone. Like that's why I, that's why I say ancient Egypt. Like, I mean, I, I wouldn't expect to be that dumbed down to where I have to um, explain and, and 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 unpack the word engage like that. Ancient well, Egypt well, is ancient for a reason. You know what I'm saying? It's it's dead. It's gone. It's ancient. It's it's over with. It's done. People take tours over there. They're looking at relics. They're looking at old relics that lasted and and have been um, pretty much preserved very well for for their age, but they're old nonetheless. And 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 it's a totally different culture over there now. People speak Arabic. It's predominantly Muslim and Islamic. Period. You get off the plane, it's assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Aki. <laughs> Rahmatullahi. Right, I guess I guess I can only <laughs> Sure. I guess I can only speak for myself. Um, you know, if if I I would absolutely see the value of learning a language if I wanted to engage with the culture in terms of visit there, talk with them, do what they do. I would see the value of learning and I and I would feel like learning the language is one of the first things I would want to do. But if all I wanted to yep, do was to study a culture, I don't necessarily see learning the language as one of the first first things I would do. I wouldn't even probably think of, of learning the language as one of the things that I would need to do because there are textbooks written about all cultures that are written in in my language. And I don't. So, you know, what I mean, it's just two but different the things. To but, me. but but the people that are documenting it for you, they took the time out to learn the language. Like think of okay, think about Egypt. We we can like I said, I'm, I can only speak for myself. I'm only speaking no, no, about no, me know, and I, my own I, interest. No, no, I I know I understand, but but you you actually represent what what your sentiment is that you just described actually represents a lot of people in the conscious community same sentiment, and that's the reason why we don't see people diving into the language is because they share your sentiment. They 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 don't they don't see it as okay. Well. I should study the language to study it because Egyptian information is available in English. But guess what? The people that are providing you that information in English studied the language, though, to be able to do that. So you got Budge, you got Bruce, you got um, name all the different scholars, James P. Allen, um, Raymond Faulkner. These people are giving you Egyptian information in English, but guess what? They studied the language enough to do that. They're translating the the um, Book of the Dead of Annie, the Book of the Dead of Hunefer. Uh, Sir Alan Gardner translated the, uh, some miscellaneous texts of, of the late kingdom and this down the third. They're providing it in English, but they had to learn the language. <laughs> so you're, 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 I mean, you know, that just supports what I'm saying. They're engaging the, 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 the culture to be able to hand it to you on a platter. But now 
we're at right because now. that that was their the reason they had to learn the reason they needed to learn the language is because of what they wanted to do they didn't just want to study it they didn't just want to study it they wanted to teach it right and so because they wanted to teach it they had their their motive was to share it with someone else then then i would see why they they may want to learn the language because a lot of about the culture is written and so you may want to learn the language in order to be able to read it and you know what i mean and write it translate it into english so i can see well, we all know too well if you're a teacher and you're planning on teaching it it behooves you to learn the language but if i'm yeah. just someone who's just curious about egypt and want to study about the culture i still don't necessarily see where i feel like i and need therein to learn lies the language. problem right and i and i and i don't have a, i don't have a problem with that per se and 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 i'm cool with that but you because that's your sentiment i also would not expect you to fire up a YouTube videos and go live streams trying to teach it. You see the difference? So, so, Absolutely so not. You, ah, okay. okay. <laughs> so there you go. Are you so saying exactly. that people that have the sentiment that I do are going on YouTube trying to teach Egyptian? Yes. Oh, no yeah. way. We, we, uh, no way. <laughs> I don't act brand new. <laughs> yes. Yes. There, there, there are people who do not are not proficient enough or competent enough but they are trying to teach about ancient egypt yes this this has been happening in the so-called conscious community for years yes definitely you got you got i mean i mean just just go just go to youtube and look at these various different channels you got people uh commission adept uh uh the moorish commission adept the 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 um uh, Tahuti, Amun Ra, Sobek, Hatep, Hotep, Unk, Unk, Bunk, Bunk. I mean, you got all these different people trying to teach Egypt. <laughs> we know Seti too. You know, we've been, we, I mean, we could go way back and we could go recent, as recent as yesterday, you know, today. Yeah, look at look at young Pharaoh. Look at Sarah Soon Seti. Sarah Soon Seti is a very popular example. He never learned the language. But yet he spent 15 years, and this is according to him. He has he has he had a 15 year tenure of teaching ancient Egyptian information, and and he has powerpoints after powerpoints after powerpoints. I will give him that. He he is a powerpoint master. Like he he knows how to put powerpoints uh, uh, together in terms of show photos and 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 talk. But he does not know the language. He never learned it. So everything he's saying, and then he had the nerve to say a couple of years ago that the language was never deciphered. I'm like, well, dude, if the language has never been deciphered and the only way we get to know Egypt is through what was left behind, which is written in the language, then what were you teaching for the past 15 years then? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's crazy. <laughs> so, so there, yeah, but yeah, I definitely had to, I had to go on. So let me close up, but I appreciate you coming through and you come through any time, man. I, you know, I, I enjoy these conversations. Yeah, um, man. Respect. It's no, it's no problem. Yeah. All yes, right. sir. Okay. All right, peace. It. y'all. be good. All right. All all right. right. Hold tip. All righty y'all. So, um, shout out to the chat, man. Y'all, y'all have lasted this long. If y'all, if y'all been, you know, hanging out, listening in, coming in and out, uh y'all deserve an uh, an award matter of fact we should we should have some um giveaways that's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna have some giveaways i'm gonna start with some pdf giveaways because that's that's convenient for me right um yeah i'm gonna start doing that i'm gonna, I'm gonna start giving y'all homework i'm gonna start quizzing the, the chat and people who answer questions correctly i'm gonna is there's gonna be like you know some kind of giveaways and stuff that's what we're gonna do that's what we're gonna do, cause Emmy kept mentioned that to me before. Um, but that's, I'm gonna do that. Yep. So I'm, I'm gonna do that. Yep. That's a, that's indeed. So again, let me wrap it up by saying that um, don't forget to to enroll in the beginners classes on Sable University if you're interested in the language. Um, it's um, a 12 week course at the most, but you can go at your own pace. You can learn in a in a 24 hour period if you want to. I wouldn't recommend that, but you could. It's possible. <laughs> if you stayed up, get your Red Bull drinks, energy drinks, and you could stay up and, 
and learn everything in 24 hours. But no, at the most, it's a 12 a 12 week stretch. You can learn at your own pace. There's two hour live sessions um, where you have the camaraderie of, of other students, of, of a teacher, um, mainly myself, and other students who may have taken the class and stuff like that. Everybody just build. It's a, it's a really good vibe. Um, and you'll learn. So, you know, it's a procedure. It's not some random where we're going to, you know, uh, get together and be like, hey, what we're going to talk about. No, this is a very um, structured curriculum and you and you learn step by step. You know, it's, it's, it's made a certain way to guarantee you to learn. OK, so don't forget that. And I was hoping I can go live today to, to you know, have a whole build about various aspects of the language. But in Seshu style of this channel, we don't, I don't get what I uh, want. So maybe next time I can push people to really kind of just focus on the language and things like that. I didn't really get any language questions today. You know what I'm saying? I, I, you know, nothing about the feminine T, portmanteau, more, more themes and stuff like that. Dictionaries, um, what kind of um, verbal system the ancient Egyptian language has. Is there such thing as... Um, as you know, the same thing we have in English is, are there really definite articles or indefinite articles in Middle Egyptian versus Late Egyptian? You know, what about Coptic? Is Coptic useful for this, that, and third? Like, nobody asks any of those kind of questions and stuff like that. You know? I know I put through a lot today. <laughs> you know, first they got told they can't talk about <laughs> the revenge because they ain't no revenge. So people got scared into asking those questions. <laughs> And then they came, and then we went into incense and whatever and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, but I was I'm I'm gonna quick. I know you gotta go. You know, shout off. So I'm just gonna answer um Donny Nelson Donny Williams um question. So he asked me, did you choose to go to Britain before America or vice versa? If so, why did you um did you have a choice? A little personal. If you don't want to answer, I understand. No, it's not personal, so I'll just answer. No, so um. I went to, to the UK actually because I had to, you know, go and study. So that's where I got my degree. And as then after staying there, um I, you know, doing that, I ended up staying for a bit. So I think I stayed for about five years. Uh yeah, in, you know, in the UK. Um so that was just for um education and then I ended up staying and obviously it wasn't far from where I was. It's like a two hour flight from Copenhagen. So that was not an issue. <laughs> so that was just me, um, you know. Uh, traveling on my own and nothing really personal, educational. And then I guess after it became personal, then I moved out and I went back to Copenhagen. And then um, now I'm in the States and that's just it. I hope that answers it. All righty. So with that, man, hopefully you all had fun. Hopefully I didn't torture you all or, or the guests. Hopefully everybody, you know, people are accusing me of, of punishing the chat with these conversations but um yeah so my phone alarm is going off telling me i need to go so i'm gonna take my phone for its uh on its word and i'm gonna say shimmer hotel appreciate it and shout out to everybody make sure you thumb up the video we had we had 23 people still watching right now i don't know how many we had but find something you like on the on on the screen and just like the video all right. Even if you don't like me, like the video, like the glyphs on the video, like Emmy Cat's picture, like the book, like the word, like the letter N in the word new, you know, like the YouTube logo or something. Just click like, <laughs> thumb it up. All right. But I'm going to say um, peace. As a matter of fact, we're going to close out with um, the esteemed elder Dr. John Henry Clark one more time. One more again, one more again, because I want I gotta drive this point home. Okay, I gotta drive this point home. All right, I know this is not really the topic we were talking about today, but this is the topic. So peace, y'all. Listen. saying in in essence uh 
that there's no such thing as a race. Oh, I, I maintain that race is the phoniest issue ever invented by the mind of man. The European invented, developed the concept of race. There's really no such thing as a, as a race because nature created no races. The whole race is a man-made thing. You know, well, how did people get to be French and English? Well, uh, uh, different uh, climatic conditions and migrations and, my, and, and amalgams of, of different people and migrations of people into your country, migrations of people out. All right. Now, this is, this is an ethnic grouping as against uh, what we call race. If you go back and you look in old dictionary, you won't even find a definition for a race. Race grew out of the pseudo-scientific development of Europe, and this is what Rogers was uh, addressing himself to and, and saying that according to your rule, which is ridiculous, a lot of you belong to us. Well, in mm. another context, mm. if race is arbitrary, mm. then could we say that being called black was a political term? It's a political term and a term which indicates our self-awareness at this juncture in history, and I think we really need, uh, we really need it. We need to really bathe in blackness for a while, but I wish we'd get the bath over with and go on to something a little more important, because black, black in itself is not an ethnic term. Black tells you why you look, but it don't tell you who you are. We are essentially an African people. Wherever we live on this earth, we're essentially an African people. And we relate to the millions of African people throughout the world, including the uncounted millions of Africans in, in Asia. Uh, the word Afro-American or African-American would probably be more appropriate and more honest and more in keeping with what we actually are. Because all of us are not positively, physically, you know, real jet black. And so the argument now sometimes is between the supernationalists and the mild nationalists and blacker than thou, when blackness is a state of mind, a state of attitude, a state of approach to things uh, that can exist in almost any of us, uh, including from the blonde black person to the, to the jet black. And the jet black can be traitors and they can be patriarchs, they can be a whole lot of... See, we, we, we've been everything in history from saint to baffoons. We are complete people, and we need to start looking at ourselves as a, um, as a complete people. And I think that once we are uh, convinced ourselves that we're black and beautiful, we'll stop saying it and just go ahead and be black and beautiful and release a whole lot of energy for more important things. All right, so